What's up, guys? Happy Sunday. Oh, I apologize. I know the EU crowd gets kind of gets kind of cheated on uh, the time that we have. Um, but I I do stream. Um, so based on your time zone, hold on a second. I do stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday this time. Same time I start, we go all the way to the end. Um, I do stream at a EU friendlier hour tomorrow. Well, tomorrow for me, be later for you. But I do variety. So, um, I don't typically do 14 on, on the, on a Monday night for you. But I do stream on the Monday night, so. Um, actually we've been focusing on Honkai and we're probably gonna stay on Honkai for a bit. Um, at least, a, at least this week. Um, We'll see about next week, but at least this week we should, certainly will be on Honkai because I saw some things to do. Actually, uh, as of yesterday, I hit like the literal content cap where I just straight up couldn't do anything. Uh, unless I spent money or did other things, so I just stopped playing the game. <laughs> like, I, just, I just didn't do anything in the game anymore. Hi Angelus, do you know where I can get some amazing tips on how best to manage my pomanders and time in deep dungeons? I wonder. Maybe, maybe today, but I could also die at the very beginning and then that doesn't really matter, so. Achievement hunt? I was kind of doing that, Impy. And then... I started trying to look for the trash can one and I couldn't find information that I gave up. <laughs> I got- that, that's enough of that. I did some things though, I cleaned some things up. I can't do the damage I will do the damage one eventually, but I, I don't have the units for it quite yet, but... Anyway, hello guys, how y'all doing? Willow, thank you for that 10 month resub. MP, good to see you. Luna, I got you, dude. I'm here for you, man. Dan J, hello. Terrell, Hunter, uh, Samara, hello. Bivtech, Zevrin, Kitsu. And Kitsu getting into the Honkai train, which actually works out very well in terms of what I literally just said. And Wallen, what's up, guys? It is a literal train. You got the trash. Really? I couldn't find info on it. <clears throat> well, I think there's achievements that, like, that are hidden. Because, I think, because I th I think there's a category that just has like, you know, like you can cap it out and all of a sudden you just get another one. It's like, oh, okay. I think there's like hidden achievements all over the place. So I stopped trying, like I'm just gonna get naturally. I'm mean, a couple of them, like I finished the, um, there was a crane one. We have to find the cranes that are the, the, the cranes that are like, um, that are sentient. Um, and I just finished that one because that, that I knew I was in the middle of the quest and I had to help find a whole bunch of them. But, um, but yeah, and then, you know what kind of sucked, MP? I, um, I found out that, uh, Simulated Universe had a hard cap, a hard weekly cap, so I, that just kind of stopped me from, like, playing the game last night, because I'm like, why am I not getting any extra drops anymore? And then I was looking it up, I'm like, oh, there's a cap. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, I yeah, guess I can't play this game anymore. <laughs> I'll just wait till tomorrow. Um... Which is fine. I'll just, you know, manage my time. But yeah, I was just straight up only logging. Yeah, there's a cap to the extra drops. It's it's a it's a it's a big cap. Like I think it's um assuming you win every single world, every single run, it's thirty-three runs. It's a hundred elites and bosses and thirty-three runs, generally speaking. And then you just don't get extra drops anymore. I hit that last night. And that and, that, and I, I was going pretty hard on that the whole week, you know? So um yeah, and then I was looking it up in the Discord, and there and a lot of people were mentioning that. Like a lot of people were asking that question, and there are a couple people that straight up said like it's thirty three runs, it's a hundred, hundred bosses, and you just hit a cap, and you, and and that was nice because you were getting like like even though they were the cheapy relic upgrades, it was like the green level relic upgrades. You were getting those and like a little bit of currency. So like even though it was like very minimal, I mean after I mean it 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 was useful because <laughs> like there's no other way to get it. Um, but yeah, extra jobs like chess, I am so you get to win. Yeah, so in the simulated universe, when you kill elites, you get, um, what you get is like the cheapo relic upgrade ones, which are green tier. You get a little bit of currency, the credits, and then you get, um, the synthable stuff for like traces, ascensions, I think ascensions, traces and light cones and stuff. Um... To get those, which are which are great, because like because you can also farm them from the trash enemies around the maps when they reset every day, um. So that that would be theoretically a daily cap. You just find an enemy, they don't respawn for the day, um. 
Yeah, you get those from the boss. So, like, I wasn't really running around maps to kill things. I was going through Simulated Universe to do it. Um, because I got so much of it. So I'm, I'm essentially never have to really hard farm that. Well, like, yeah, I never had to have farm, hard farm it because I just get an infinite amount, but then it's not infinite, it's just like a limit, so. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's Honkai. We're gonna do Honkai tomorrow. Uh, in about, um, in about 18 hours. Uh, Mo Ping said, I recently, I recently barely got to floor 71 heaven on high, and now I'm too scared to continue. Use a bunch of my poem to even get there, and now it seemed very intimidating. I wouldn't care that much if I didn't get that magic site that can one-shot boss, but it seemed quite rare, and now I feel like I gotta somehow make it my first shot of that luck. You know what? That's, that's what we kind of call the Odin curse, like, to some extent. Um, a lot of people joke about how Odin is a curse, but that's kind of what it is. It kind of gets in your head a little bit. Um... What I can tell you is the following. When you kind of get more used to it, Mo, and you get more into, like, experience and all that stuff, Odin honestly just becomes a regular Magislite. In fact, the best utilization of Odin is on 91+, plus, not even on 90. It's nice on 90, but it's not the best application, except it's, be it's better to use on the floors. So, so something to think about. But for your first time climb up, if you're shaky on the 90 boss, like you've, you've watched some videos or like you've done it a handful of times and it's got in your head that like that's a scary boss, Odin is going to be good because you could just bypass the boss and continue the run. And I think for progging, it's very nice because you would want to step into 91 plus even if your palms are shot. You want to at least get there for experience, right? Um, but at the end of the day, your best application is to not use Odin on 90 and to use it in 91 plus because you actually get more out of it there. Um... But you're learning, I mean, you're, and, and, and getting fearful of 71+, plus. that's fair too. Uh, a lot of people say that, that's such a common thing for people to say, that they're actually scared to continue. But, you know, you don't, you don't learn unless you go in, and, and don't feel bad if you die to the first thing. And if anything, just drill in your head, just don't forget the raising. So at least you, if you die to the first thing, you can keep going. It, it might actually settle the nerves by getting the death out of the way. So, um, yeah, just just go in there. Don't feel bad about dying. Look, lots of people do it, Mo. Um, it's really not a not an uncommon thing. Also, Mo, just in case, because um, I always want to introduce this to anyone who's hopping in for the first time, because I don't advertise it on YouTube very much. Um, if you want to join the Discord, we have the Discord. So if you want to talk with people on the hours that I'm not streaming, lots of people there to help. I believe there to help if you just want to DM me. So just to open that door. But yeah, that's kind of the approach you want to go for. <clears throat> I got to 151 plus my first try. I was so in my head about it. It's fair because it's a combination of, you know, my luck's good. This is my prog point. And then you also look backwards. Oh man, it took me like two days, three days, six days to get up here. And you got to do it all over again. You get it. Um, but look, some people have been on this journey for months, years. So definitely don't feel like there's some time constraint that you need to get it done in a certain time. You know, just... Learn and keep learning, keep going in, keep learning. You'll get there eventually, and it'll feel real good. Willow, thanks for gifting us up to Samara. Oh, it's good to see you, Samara. For the first time as well, it can be nice because if you do a boss, if you try to do boss and die with raising up, you still have no time left. Eat this. Yeah, that's a good one too. Emergency play, just to just to use the Odin to keep going. I might just do what I did my first few video and might just kill myself on purpose. So I can <laughs> hey, you know what? There is multitude of ways to do it, Mo Pink. There is no correct answer to there's no correct answer to winning everyone will have their own way so if that's the way you're going to do it then that's the way you're going to do it if it helps you it helps you right um okay so today we're going to be focusing in on explain uh, ex explaining how to climb with time management in mind and the protomanders in mind um when we did the first tutorial guide it was all about what enemies do and what bosses do, but it doesn't. It didn't. Leave, it didn't really leave room for explaining like how am I using my stuff. So today we'll be focusing on that, and um, on top of that, we'll not explain a lot of the enemies. Like we are going to basically, um, basically just assume that you know what enemies do. So now it's just actually getting to the to the to the bottom. So that's how the plan will go for uh, for today. So. You got questions, ask them. Um, I'll talk about like why I'm basically the discussions will happen probably like each beginning of the floor, what my plan is. 
why I use certain protomanders and, and the and kind of explaining there and then just going through the run as, as naturally as possible. I think my protomanders are not fantastic, which is actually better. Um, that wasn't on purpose, but it, they are in fantastic, so we'll see how we do as we start up. So good to see you. Memory time is always bad. Well, for me, like, I, I, I know a lot of people kind of talk about the whole, like, do do uh like five six minutes per floor kind of thing i kind of done away with that because that's so much to remember i only look at the halfway mark and the and this is the one i've always said and we'll definitely be looking at that throughout the entire run when you step into the sixth floor are you over under 30 minutes and that'll just determine what you do for the rest of the run um so all right i also have to make sure i don't die which is always a good thing ada cheers so i sent you a message uh as we started, but, you know, things. Uh, I will use fruit when I get in there. I do recommend using your raid fruit. Eh, look, any little bit helps. If you're going for a clear, any little bit helps. You don't have to, but you're probably sitting on raid fruit, so may as well use it. Cool. And this will be with the, with the first clear in mind. Like, we're going to go for the first clear, okay? So, I'm going to open with a strength, which I like to open with a strength. The reason is, if you're checking chests, which we will be doing today, the likelihood of you picking up a strength is very likely. Um, so don't, like, just sit on three the entire time. I think what you might see me do this entire run is we'll just start with a strength and then we'll go from there. And, point proven, we just pick one up right there. Um, now, again, I'm not really worried about... Uh, I'm not going to be worried about how long we're taking on this floor. All I need to care about is if I pull quickly and I move quickly. And we're also going to be checking all the rooms, that's important. Now, for scoring runs, people will do that because they need the higher score. Basically, you reveal all the tiles to get a higher score, that's just how that works. But we're doing it for the sake of trying to check our power-ups so we can keep them in order. Um, and as you can see, I'm missing a Demiclone and two Dreads, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of a- that might be more of a typical run for people. Uh, also, big point is... We just saw another strength there. A lot of- I've seen people on streams, once they see it, they just pop it open. If you're trying to be efficient, what I want to do is I want to pick up that strength as we're leaving, as we finish out the last- the last kill on the floor. Um, otherwise, you kind of get a little less strength overall, and you don't know how many kills you're going to be on here for. Points go up, smells go bigger. <laughs> yeah, so does going back to floor one goes bigger. <clears throat> There are a couple, there are, already, there are already multiple mods explaining videos anyway, so good idea. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, you're gonna have, you know what I'm excited for? And this is a plug, but I'm really excited for this hustle poof. Um, our buddy June Clancy's gonna have a guy coming out. Uh, along the lines, I think, of explaining it as well. And probably have me, I mean, dude, I'm, I'd be excited to see his boss though. So you'll definitely have a multitude of versions of people explaining how to, how to do the mechanics. Um, but theoretically, that is the easy part. Um, the, why this- why we're doing a video like this is because, um, is because lots of people have been asking for this. I think one- one of the things that stood out for me was on YouTube, I had a comment, someone saying like, Hey, so, you know, when you post your runs, all the- all your pro- your protomanders are so good. It seems like you get really lucky in your runs. Um, and kind of like kind of going over that part so i'm like okay you know what good idea you found two strength already yeah i'm overkilling not a good thing to overkill however we want to check the other things because i am looking for things so even though this seems like it's wasting time it seems like okay we, we can just go now because the, the exit's open well picking something up from here could actually be way more beneficial Bing. I'm gonna pick this up. I'm also gonna go get that strength now, because if I don't get the strength now, I have to go all the way to the top, the north side, and come all the way down. And that's a lot of that's a lot of movement. You wanna keep your movement as minimal as possible. Now this was also a low kill floor. I think we were out by four, so that's um pretty low average. We'll also do time checks just for the sake of information, uh, in case anyone is doing kind of a floor-by-floor -floor, uh, check on your time. Again, I don't typically do it. I don't really care that much because usually we're just fine. But for the person learning 
and trying to do it for the first time, it's probably a decent idea. It's just the weirdity, the the weird, the the weird logic behind going per like like five minutes per floor. It's just that um, because of the way your proto manders will happen, because depending on what you use can can speed you up or slow you down. That's why it gets really weird to just do an average, um, because you can take ten minutes on a single floor, but then at the end of the day you take two minutes on the next one, it levels out. Like, that's that's still, you know, six minutes per floor, and you're going in on, on average. Um, and sometimes, I think most people won't see that. They'll just see the worst of it, and then be like, okay, we're in trouble with time, but not understand the fact that, okay, we're actually ahead on time at some point, or, like, we're doing really good. I'm gonna pick up that other strength that just... Who the hell was it? Oh, it's over here. I lost track of it. So we're going to be out of here by about five and a half minutes, which is good. I think when you're when you're as experienced as, as as myself, it's a lot easier for you to judge what you need to use the time that I've left, plus play faster. That's true. I mean, there is a little bit on, and that's probably what we're also going to get into, is what the, pro, what the pro demanders will do for you, you know? And I think I'll try to explain that. Um, you know, what does a storm do for you? What does a what does a dread do for you? So on and so forth. Um, because yeah, like a, a lot of us will like use a flight and we're like, okay, this will do this. This will save me. This we use an altar. Okay, this is what this is gonna do. Um, but that's where the discussion will get into. And actually, looking at my proto manders, I'm down storms, I'm down dreads, and we're down a flight. So we're actually down a lot of things that can potentially speed us up. Again, that's a good thing because I can. I'm very confident we'll pull it back. Um, that silver chest, if you notice there, I paused for a second because there could be a trap that could be very dangerous. You don't want to hit a exploding chest on top of a landmine, so I delayed my approach on that chest there. And we will check those chests. One thing that is going to be important is anything that can spawn a mimic. So right now, those silver chests can spawn a mimic. You want to try to get to them as sooner rather than later. Because if they are mimics, at least they contribute to the exit. That's probably the biggest thing that hurts people, is getting mimics after the exit's open. So I want that chest. That is the exit. I'm actually going to backtrack here, because... Um, wait, actually, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to pull something before we backtrack. I'm going to pull this first. We're going to backtrack because I want to check the back room. But while we're doing it, we're going to be pulling something with me. So we're making ourselves a little time efficient here. Will kept trying to blow chests up in your face today. He's mean. I thought the PvP already happened with demons. Did you try oh wait, was there another PvP run? This guy really wants you to use strength. Yeah, apparently. All right, we're gonna we're gonna fight him. We're gonna fight him the hallway. Um, one thing you'll notice a little small detail is I will typically run through a room with an enemy if I already walked the path, or I'm pretty confident there won't be a trap. Because I haven't gone through the right side, and that's the donut room, I don't know if I'm going to be stepping on a trap. So I was okay getting here, but I'm not okay going to the right side. Okay, now we're okay. So if I step on a trap, we're fine, because because I already got rid of the aggro. Checking this chest before I kill anything else, in case it's a mimic. It is not. Orange key. We're going to be probably out in about one or two more kills. So I don't want to kill anything here, considering the exit. Um, you may want to rewind the video for this, but I saw the thing we pulled, which was the which is the stone thingy. I saw a Vin third, or rather the Berg third, and then a, and this one. So this one would be the most dangerous because it could be blocking the exit, and I wanted to focus him. Otherwise, we're going to overkill, and we don't want to overkill. Sight. We use that. That should help. Two more rooms. All right. Excuse me. So, okay, exit's there, so I don't have to kill anything right now. We're just gonna check these chests. Alteration, which I will probably use. Alterations do the Mimics and the Corrigans. No matter what it is, it's probably gonna be helpful either way. We pull the Berk third because it's blocking the chests approximately. Anytime something explodes, she thinks it- you think it's, uh, she thinks it's on purpose. Well, maybe it is. Hey, Kiambi, how you doing? I've been watching and playing too much Pure 3D. I was thinking of why check the silver <laughs> points. Wait. Wait, why are you asking that? You know how to do that. Uh, Lethargy, I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah, we're gonna be focusing on the clear more than anything. So there's a little bit more detail to um, 
something that isn't a clear. But we'll just be focusing on the clear. I believe I have the strength in the other room, so I'm gonna go get it now. So we can refresh that strength. Put it back to 7 minutes, and that's going to be very good for our kill time. We are now at 51 minutes. We've now spent 9 minutes roughly on the first two floors. So again, the first floor seemed like it was going slow, but we were maintaining a pretty fast kill speed, and we killed extra. That is BS. <laughs> he was not facing the exit. He probably just moved though. It's fine, I got full burst. Okay, we're good. I saw a video aimed at mainly tanks, but it seemed like it was useful any job. They were talking about when to pull and when to just explore. In a nutshell, when you got your buffs and big dog cooldowns up, always pull. Explore. Yep. Yeah. With tanks, that's what it is. Now, with a DPS, it's a little different. Um, now, we got the Corrigans. This will speed us up big time. With DPS, it's a little different. First of all, you have a lot, you have a lot of cooldowns. Um, it's still good to pull when your cooldowns are up, but you're not necessarily too worried about time as a DPS versus a tank. But you do want to maximize your damage if it is a tank. And something like a video like this might actually be more... Uh, we'll probably do like a tank version of this. But we are taking Machinist in because this is the most popular job for clearing. Um, that's the main reason it's Machinist and not any other job right now. But I think a lot of the things that we'll talk about will be... Oh, we're out. Okay. We'll, we'll transfer over to other jobs. I think that's that's where EO is kind of different. I'm gonna use the Lethargy. Okay. Watching my angle here so I don't get into that elbow drop issue. Again, I am checking the rest of the floors if I can. Now, there will be a situation where I don't, and if that comes into play, I will explain. But more times than not, we are checking every room, every chest. I will pull this, so we will continue doing that. I'm gonna pop a potion here, because I'm running through this room. If I hit a trap, it could be a little bit treacherous. The potion will at least help me even if it's an otter, or I'm sorry, a uh, an owl. I think big dog cooldowns still work in contacts. It does. I mean, Machinist is a little tricky for me personally, because it's like you always have something up. Maybe like Reassemble is the one that you probably have to pay the most attention to, but like... Yeah, it gets a little crazy if you just have to keep those cooldowns off cooldown. Because there's just so much going on. But at least the next pull will have like a big pull. Okay, so here I can probably get away... Nope. I'll go, I'll go screen. I don't want to go further than this. Because we don't want to spend too, too much time. Although we are going at a pretty speedy pace. Okay, the Huazi moved. I'm gonna move right now because the Scorpion may not move and I get access to the chest. Checking the chest. Security. Nothing good. Uh, and that's a bronze, so I'm just gonna get out of here. We can check that bronze, but uh, I guess we will. Um, might have to pull. I'm gonna pull the Huazi. I'd rather pull the Huazi than the than the Scorpion because the Scorpion slows me, and that's really annoying. Let me tell you. I know you said you weren't going to particularly talk about mob mechanics to run, but is it worth noting that you probably removing proximity enemies uh, from doorways or from the area over the game? Yes. I think when, if that situation happens, I mean, I did touch upon it on the previous floor. I think if the situation happens, we'll, we'll do it. And we'll kind of do it like a, uh, almost like an on the call type of thing. You think that affluence, also avoiding the archer on here. But we gotta be careful because we might aggro the scorpion. I'm actually just gonna move my character quite a bit because I can't see past her. So this looks really weird, but right. avoiding him because he's sight. Yeah, I think a lot of the mom mechanics are going. Like, I'm gonna assume that you guys kind of know mom mechanics, right? That I'll have to re-explain them. If you want to just do that, then check the other guys. Um, I didn't check the time here, but we'll check it when we get back to the next board. Alright, so we're at 46. That's 14 minutes into the first four. Check the chest. Sight, that's going to be useful. That's a big ass room. Alright, let's work our way through the room all the way to the chests. 
We gotta be efficient about it. So our best, our best case scenario here is that we return back to the exit and we just have enough to kill. Or we're moving through the room with with uh, with kills. I'm avoiding this because it's sight. Wasn't sure if you're gonna include the type knowledge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like we like I would say the other video would probably cover that. Um, I'm gonna use a safety. But certain situations will definitely come into play. So that needs to get pulled because he's blocking me from continuing. So we have to pull him right away. I'm also gonna go back because we have the uh, the pony coming in. Ah, it's only two. It's not that bad. Oh. oh. <laughs> I tried to be a little... But he was going my direction, apparently, so... I'm gonna pull back after the... Okay, you didn't jump? Okay. Wait. Oh, I line-of-sighted it? Okay, well... That works, too. That chest is blocked. I can check this chest on the run. Safety. Moving landmines. Ah, I'm not gonna get fancy in Machinist. If I was tank or healer, we would. But we won't go too fancy. Uh, I'll go through here. There's no traps. Watch my ricochet, because we're running through enemies. Okay. Alright, so the kill count was really low. So I'll try to see what I can get to here. I will use that lethargy. Uh, you're fortunate. I might aggro the Bergthor, but I can drag him with me, not a problem. Security. Okay, we'll fight him as we're going to the exit. This is kind of one big thing machinists can do. Is that we're gonna fight uh, while moving. Now, I have to also be careful because it is um, lethargy. So I'm gonna let this thing finish. Let him come to me. Even though I probably could have gotten through. And then continue so I don't get that fancy elbow drop. Just full respect on that enemy. So we got uh, intuition purity. I can ignore these. I got the lethargy which I need to pick up. Yeah, that's fine. Not a big deal. Watch this Spriggan. Make sure I don't aggro him. Good. I'm gonna start moving. If by the time they get- I mean, my- my Machina Queen will do stuff. What's this? Safety. So we're moving along. I know there's ponies around here. At least one of them. So let's see if we can get to the room here. Spriggan. Scorpion. Spriggan. Checking. Lethargy. I'm out of here. So now we're 17 minutes to the first spot. Nope! Just kidding. Add some time to that. Be baiting elbow drop on... <laughs> like, I mean, I think it's a little faster than like the Ryujin elbow drop. I think. I think it is a little bit faster, so it's a little spicy to try to do it, but... I mean, it's your game. Hey, Rothor, how you doing? So, so, I was talking at the top of the stream, the halfway mark. If you're under 30 minutes by the 6th floor, you're in trouble with time. If you're over 30 minutes by the 6th floor, you're really good on time. So we are now 42 into the 5th floor. So what we're going to be looking for is how our time looks once we get off this floor. Oops. I can't hit one to do, apparently. Pony. Bang. Scorpion on Caster. Hee hee hee. With a Ross. I just hate the Scorpion. I will never pull the Scorpion. I don't advise you pull the Scorpion because of that slow. But... Things have to be done. It pulled me. I'm probably gonna pull the Kelpie. Well, that works too. Watch this gallop. Make sure there's nothing behind me so I don't get surprised. Alright, cool. Yo, thanks for shouting out our boy Ross. We have a potential project working together in a couple months, so uh, stay tuned. That's all I'm gonna tell you. But I, um... I was talking with him about something. It, oh yeah, I didn't see that other Kelpie. But there is another one, apparently. I'm gonna pull it. So we can get rid of the patrol. I don't know where the exit is, so we're just gonna kinda get rid of the ones that are gonna give me more trouble. There is a yet another one. So what I think I might do is I might go north instead of going that way. 
Because what I'm thinking now is that I go in this direction, check all the chests. By the time I get back, maybe he will return to his original position and I don't even have to deal with him. So we'll go opposite of it. Safety. How's Black Mage in this deep dungeon? I liked it a lot. I mean, I'm biased, super biased, so I may not be the right person to ask. I liked Black Mage in here because the mobility was insane. Like, you had sick mobility and really good damage. I do like Black Mage in the other two, but I know and recognize its difficulty, so so that's fair. Um, but the mobility in Black Mage here is insane. Yeah, your defense, your defense is uh, a little spicy on, on especially bosses. Okay, you barely moved, so that's fun. Um... Oh, this is the exit. Okay. This is the exit. Thing. Um... So I will pull this with me. So we will now work the exit room. Because we are now at the exit, I don't need to check chests anymore since we can't open them. And basically, we'll just make sure the exit is clear. And the pulls are going to be very specific. Well, kind of specific. Uh, for instance... I don't pull this Gubu, because he's not really going to be in my way. At least he shouldn't be in my way. So what I'm going to pull is the the Spriggan, but I'd like a full burst on the Spriggan because of his output. So I'm going to wait for the Gubu to move. Spriggan needs to die because he's right on top of it. The Scorpion will probably not give me an issue because of his current position. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna put a heavy on him so I can give him a little bit of damage there. Tactician, slow. Okay. Gonna get rid of this as fast as possible. If I need another pull, it's the Gubu. Okay, I'm gonna hold damage a little bit. Alright, we're gonna pull the Gubu. Gonna get the pull in. Gonna run away. There's no more patrols. We've killed all the patrols, so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to get through the exit. Now, I don't want to pull the Scorpion because, one, he's an annoying fight, but two, I don't have to pull him. And we are out. Alright, hug these walls, get to the exit. We're looking at 38 going into the 6th floor, so that means our time is exceptionally well. Uh, he's a little close. I'm gonna wait a second till I have the time to wait. Again, I'd rather not pull this. Oh, yeah, well. Have you discussed using patrols to guess at how many rooms there are in certain directions? Kinda... advanced. Um, not in exactly what you said, Rothro, but you can use patrols to see... Yeah, you can kind of see how many rooms there are in terms- Yeah, no, exactly what you said. No, exactly what you said. Um, so what Rotho is explaining... Basically, if you see a patrol run past you, and you're going the opposite direction... Uh, one, and you go the opposite direction... Depending on how long it comes back, it kind of gives you an indication of how many floors there will be. So if it comes out really fast, that means it hit a dead end and ran backwards. At least, likely. Um... And that's a really good indicator there to, to know kind of potentially how many rooms are left over in that direction. Now, if he takes forever to get to you, that means there's probably a lot of rooms. Oh, he's stuck in a, in a cycle. Um, he's stuck in a cycle of like two rooms or something like that. Silver just drops, so we will check it right away. Damage in here is lower than the others, but 81. Plus mimics, we're still checking black, make sure you have no instant cast to kite. Uh, Kelpie goes. And I will not understate the fact that our kill speed is part of how we'll have success. I think what happens to a lot of people, especially in the higher floors, is they, they deliberate too much. They think about what they want to do, then they're standing around. You want to do the thinking as you're fighting. Why well, spawn rooms are good, hallways are good. It gives you some time. And, and honestly, I mean, unless the mechanics are tough to dodge, which is fair, you should have a decent amount of, like, Leftover brain power to at least think about what you may or may not want to do, you know, a couple steps ahead. Um, I'm gonna go check these. Okay, I'm pretty nice. Just stay the one, maybe get to 100. Yo, let's do it. Alright, we're good. I'm gonna check the room over here first. I don't want to pull anything with me for now. Checking the chest. I'm gonna pull the bird because the bird will block me from the chest. I want that chest. Watching the line area here.
Now, if I think for a lot of people trying this out, you definitely want to use this floor as a very good floor to, to kind of recover your protomanders. If, if for some reason your protomanders are shot right now, like they're low on things like mine were, uh, this is a great spot to try to get to get them back. Because your kill speed should be pretty fast, as you're seeing what we are doing right now. Um, hold on. I will pull the Gubu. Now I want the Gubu because I want a chance for that Scorpion to let me through the room. The Pony moved away from me and he has to travel four rooms to get back. So more than likely I don't have to deal with him. The Scorpion did move but not in a great direction. Because I can't go left. But I can go around, and I'm gonna go around. I might aggro this one, but I'm gonna go long way here. End sprint. There's a high possibility I aggro. Ugh. Yep, okay. Alright, we're just gonna deal with this. I do have steel on, so that's not, that's not the issue. But yeah, because your kill speed will be fast, definitely a good chance to make sure you check chests. Especially those power-ups will, will really help you out. Now, we have Mudman that, that are all proximity. I want to pull the one that seems closest or blocking me to the exit, so I'm pulling this one. I was so guilty of spending too long deliberating on higher floors. I was happy in my time management player in Paladin. Yeah, I mean, at least the times I've watched you, Willow, you do t take a little bit of time, but you were getting better even on that first clear. So. Alright, we're not using anything, we'll go to the next floor. We have 34 minutes now, really ahead of pace. And I've done nothing special. I've checked all the chests, we've used a lot of strengths, but we've gotten them all back. We checked all the rooms, except I think for one that I skipped, because... Uh, no, I, I checked all the rooms, so we checked all the rooms up till now. Okay, oh, that's a doggo. I'm gonna fight the doggo right here, because I'll have space to, to go around the big wall. One thing that's good about the line of sight, if you see that error message, you see target not in line of sight. That is your guarantee that you are in fact not in line of sight. Um, just in case you're kind of OCD like myself. Alright, I do not want to check the silver chest on top of the bird. Um, because if it's a mimic, I fight the two of them. So I'm gonna kill this first, and then we'll deal with the we'll deal with the silver chest later if it's a mimic. Too bad this track wasn't in the- yeah, it is too bad that this wasn't in the EO- the EO in-game. Yeah. Now, I guess one thing to mention, just as a side, but we'll talk about it when we step into 51. Uh, I'm not upset at the fact that we haven't seen a Demi-Clone up till now. For some reason, the Demi-Clone drop rate will go up next set, and it'll be a little hilarious how that happens. Alright, we got a treasure room. Um, now, my priority here is to create a path. And right now, what I'm looking at is the right side. But however, I do need to pull this Appa, and I may, I, may, I may need to pull the Gelato. So it actually might look on the left side. We want to get through the room with the minimal kills possible. There is also a dog coming. So let's pull the Appa. The Appa is proximity, so that needs to go. It's priority kill. If I don't kill this, I, I have to fight it anyway, um, because it's on the exit. Responsible chest room navigator, yeah. You want to make your kills efficient. I mean, you're not going to dive through the middle of the room. So, um, you know, <laughs> there's no point doing that. So you just clear one side. Especially when the enemies are all very much slight enemies. Um, you don't need to go crazy with the pulls. I mean, you could technically not even get past the group if you don't want to. And just get to the exit, and the exit was right in the corner. So there is that. Um, Doggo. I don't believe I'm gonna pull you right here. This way I don't have to deal with this dog. I do have a, a, a line of sight here. Okay, I'm gonna use the line of sight here. And check, 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 check. Target 9 line of sight. Ah, uh, woo! Now, we have a Witching. And just for the sake of doing it, because we have this thing that enrages, I can do the Witching so that I don't have to deal with the Enrage. Which I will do in a second. Right about... not yet. Right about now, because I also want to get the Scuba at the same time. So I'm sure I'm going to kill this plus the Scuba. 
We're pulling the goo goo now. We are out. Now if you really want to keep your time in order, you can leave now, but we do want to check chests. Um, because we, again, we are missing things. But think of it this way, again, we're talking about time management, talking about proto management. We want to fill out our proto manders, and even though this theoretically would be a time loss, we have saved a lot of time on the previous floors to allow us this play. Didn't hit anything? Okay, set up. Sight, I uh, will help a lot. Okay, we can get through the goo boo. Uh, let me do this first. Hello? Okay, check this one. These are all sight lethargy. We good? Pull the up. Okay, I have to pull the mud man to get that chest. That's okay. But we are going extra kills here for the chests. Should I be 99 before you solo? You can be as low as 75. And 75 should be fun. I like the, I like starting at 75, but did it myself. 75 will be fun. Watching my chainsaw here. Yeah. Got another sight. Got a got a gelato. I need to make sure I have a burst with the gelato. Well, not really. We'll be fine. So these extra kills are okay. Because again. We're way ahead in time. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I got you, dude. A lot of enemies blocking these chests, though. Kind of annoying, but it's okay. Ooh, the app I just moved so I can get this chest clean. Very good. Another affluence, we're out of here. And this was, I don't... I think this was an in... What is this? I don't know what this was. This was. Oh, sight. Okay. All the Gubus are facing away right now. Uh, I'm gonna go left. Yeah, it's all sight. No hesitation, we're out of here. 29 minutes into 48. Dan J, I start I started I st I tried at 60. I hated it. 60 was bad. 75 a lot better though. You impatient ass would have done storm witching. Yeah, they'd be down, then you'd be down to one storm. That's not good. Pulling the app up because it is blocking the chest. I can leave that mud man alone. Because he is not gonna bother me. There's a doggo. Who I will get rid of. It looks. Oh, there's two doggos. I need to be a little bit careful. Let me see where they're going first. That one's going left. And I do have an LOS here. I'm gonna pull this one. Right here. Okay, so that will be a nice line of sight on that end. Plan out those line of sights if you need to. You don't want to pull one and then be in a panic. That that would be very bad. Considering that thing one shots. Gonna handle the other doggo. We'll use this wall to save us. So I would I like taking care of a lot of the patrols, so they don't sneak up on you. I think. This is one solution for people who are very scared about patrols or who have, you know, their awareness is not as great. You know, that's not that, and, and I'm not saying that to kind of call out, you know, an inability or, or, or something about, you know, your player skill. But look, if it's a weakness, you, you patch up the weakness. So that's one way to patch up the weakness. Alteration. Put a potion here and use the alteration. Yeah. Bloodman plus wolf. <laughs> We have for a death sentence. You know, these Mudman, I, I believe, are the most underrated, underrated enemies in all of Eureka Orthos right here. You know how brutal this is? Having to deal with him and something else? Like, this is, this is, this can kill you. Even though it seems like he doesn't do much. You avoid doggos? Man, they killed me a little bit too much. Fortune, I'll use it. Steal. I mean, true, but I mean, if, yeah, if you don't have witch eggs anymore. I'm gonna be up my food, by the way, once I start moving. Okay. Alright, so the other one is a alteration, which I did not pick up. I'm gonna fight right here. There's another doggo, I see it in my left corner.
Okay, I'm gonna let this doggo go. Because, um, it might- I might be one or two kills away from getting out of here. We just need to make sure we keep an eye and a, and a mental remembrance on it. Because we don't want it to catch us off, uh, off guard. But this is where what Rotho had mentioned earlier about the timing of enemies. They're not gonna teleport. Like, they're moving at a very consistent pace. So you can kind of give a little bit of a judgment on how long it'll take for you to get there if it doesn't make another turn, like, to the opposite direction. Okay, we're checking those chests. Um, I can leave those two alone for now. Mimic, that's fine. I'm gonna take it with me, since I don't have to step on the traps anymore. And we are gonna get to the chest, we're also gonna make sure I get that infatuation coming in. Uh... <laughs> I didn't remember what my button was. And we just did tank and my, my interrupt was on 5. On, on Machinist, that's on Alt-0. It looks like I have to pull something. Fortune. If I want that chest, I'm to pull that mud man. Jaws with very high damage. Like Samurai can pull the whole floor here and AoE and down with the Witching. If you have balls of steel. Or a cyborg, one of them. This is a fortune. This is a witching. Okay, this one. I'm gonna use the witching here. Just get some kind of free kills here. Pull you. Okay, I pulled the apple by accident, but it's okay. Or Zyron, yeah, or Zyron. Okay, I got this. Extra kill, but it's fine. Checking the chest, we got the lethargy back. Oh, did I not pick it up last time? Not a big deal. Doggo is here. So we're gonna observe which direction he's going. And of course he goes to the right, the his left. But the the this bird is facing the opposite direction so I can get around. What is this? Alteration. Which I used. Okay. That's good. Uh we're we're entering 40 well, not yet. This thing might move after he does that thing, which he did. So I'm gonna sneak behind these two and get to the exit. We're now entering 49 with 23 minutes left. Good time. Okay. Now, something special here. I want. I want to make a note, which is which is what I do a lot. Um, if we see shanks or steel, we do not open them immediately, like we have been up till now. We are going to wait till the exit opens, and then we'll pop them because we want a fresh one for the exit for the for the boss. Now. Technically speaking, if you want to really get more specific, if you know your boss timers, then you can pop it at a certain point, like maybe when the when the uh, uh, the exit is orange, and then go for it. Um, I mean that also gets adjusted if you're using a demi clone, so on and so forth. Uh, but basically, you want to have the strength seal more for the boss rather than for the floor if you can help it. Um, but on top of that, we do want we don't want to overlap the the steel that we have currently because otherwise it's just wasted time because we still have to get through this floor. Except we get another steal, so I can re-up that. We have two. We're going to leave the one closest to the exit alone. So we pop this one, and we, we we take the furthest one away from the exit. So that's also like little bit little bit management in terms of your movement. I mean, when you're getting to the higher floors and you're trying to buy like you know another extra minute, extra thirty seconds, stuff like that will matter. And practicing them now will help you later. I'm a little worried to continue my prog because my game started randomly. Oh no! Terry Quest? There's a maintenance tomorrow. No, there's a maintenance Tuesday morning. Maybe wait for the maintenance? Get like a fresh install? Maybe that might help. Unless the computer's having an issue, then that's a completely different problem. But since you do have the maintenance coming in, sometimes that can fix it. I remember one time, Terry. I kid you not, there was one patch or something, well actually two instances. I had one patch where my game was lagging bad, like it was like a bad connection, but I know it wasn't my connection for like the first time in my life. And it was because of a very specific patch, I remember it was 5.3. I had to use a VPN to play the game, and then when it went to 5.4, I was perfectly fine again. Sometimes patch cycles do that, or something installed does that. 
um, pulling the Mudman because again that's proximity. Um, I also had another situation where, <laughs> believe it or not, I could not enter uh, the the Weeping City of whatever it's called. That alliance raid. Every time I entered that zone, my game crashed. Full crash. I could never enter that zone. I could go to any other instance except that one area. And then I went I went from my eighth of my main my main character into my primal alt. Happened the same way. Crashed into that thing. And the only way I was able to fix that was uh full reinstall. And then it was fine. That was the weirdest thing that ever happened. I don't know. Like and it's funny because I don't know like when the last time I queued up into that dungeon or something. Um I don't know if that's been present for like years or something, but it was just that one specific dungeon. So odd. Lethargy. Okay. Now I might step on a trap here, so I'm gonna get myself ready. I'm gonna pop a potion just in case. Got the fresh strength here and an intuition. Now we are almost out of this floor, so I can strength right now and I gotta move like all the way to the end anyway. So let's avoid the gelato and just see if we can get another better pull, like like the, the bird. Um, or just basically any other, anything else other than gelato. That is what is happening to me, but fixed for me uh, was to log into a different world. Oh, interesting. Yeah, see, my first troubleshooting was to... Um, my first troubleshooting... I'm gonna have to pull the gelato. My first troubleshooting was... Oh, I don't like a gelato, though. Okay, I got it. No, we'll pull the gelato. My first troubleshooting was trying my alt character in a completely different area. And even on the different data center and everything, it was still giving me a problem. I pulled the gelato because, uh, well, well, first of all, I forgot it's lethargy, but also we did have the LOS back here, so it's a little bit of a safer pull. I do have the other bird to fight, so we'll fight him next if I need to. Oh, we're good. And I'm gonna pick up that steel. I'm gonna wait for this bird to do his crap, and then we'll move out. Oh, he's gonna take forever. I'm gonna set up my music here before we continue. We'll go with one of the my uh, my curated boss themes. Taking the steel here, and we are stepping into the boss with 19, 18 and a half minutes. So there we go. We're good on time. But this this floor shouldn't really give you a problem. But take the notes away. We checked all the floors. We checked all the chests, and we still had a lot of time. Something that would seem like it would take you time still saved you time. And we came away with a little bit more protomanders than I started with. They moved back to the home world. At least he got the fix. My nose is so itchy, I hate it. Uh, my left. So when I do this fight, I like to call out. If it says left, I go left. If it says right, I go left. I go right. So you'll hear me say my left, my right. Whatever helps you through this this left right mechanic is fine. Moving away from the tethered, and it will be having to go out then in because it's it's uh, Ram's voice into Dragon voice. Good. My left. I always forget there's a breath coming in there. And take a note of the duration of our strength and steel at the end of this. That ball that's gonna come out is gonna come out on the right side of the Chimera. This is consistent. Now, you're not gonna have a problem if you are on the spot it spawns, because there'll be some time before it really activates, but... If you want to avoid a jump scare, then you can just stand on his left side. My right. More of a band-aid since it's okay to have any handling. Yeah, maybe a full reinstall will help, or just wait for the maintenance to come in. Going away, we're gonna have to go out and in here. Out. In. Watching the thing, I'm on the left side. Yo, what up, Chila? I'm shaming at 7pm. Yeah, I moved to Japan. How's that feel? Yeah, I got the, I got the NA prime time. How's that feel? I'm going in and then out. That was America, Chila. That was the land in which you were presumably born in. Doing after X amount of years. Standing on the left side here. Weird vibes. 
presumably. Look, you know, I'm not an expert on you. Oh my god, I have ads coming in soon. Oh my god, I gotta push out these ads. I gotta weave in clicking ads, hold on. I do not want an ad coming into this boss. Going to the right? Okay. Alright. We're good. I bought you guys five minutes on the ads. Going in, then out. Staying in, then out. Watching the breath, I'm going to his my right. Going out and in. Our strength is at three minutes here. Our steel's at four minutes. The strength was more of an important one to take a look at because we had used it on our way back. So if you use it right when you enter the floor, you may have ran- you may run out of the strength by the time you kill this boss. So that's why the timing of that was a little bit important. Bingo. Alright, that is the thing with 15 minutes left on the clock. Our protomanders look more or less the same. We barely didn't really pick up too much extra. We picked up like one storm. Um, we didn't see any dreads, we didn't see any demi-clones, we didn't see any flights additional. We will see more demi clones moving into 51. That will happen. And you'll be kind of amazed at why that happens. Uh, let me catch up in chat a little bit before I have to do this mandatory ad break. Moping says, I wish you wouldn't just get kicked out and get your wipe when disconnecting. I wish you can just reconnect as long as your instance had time. Moping, I wish that was the case too. That, I think, is fair, but it's coded into the game where if there's no one in the instance, it just cuts. Um, so that's a foundation fundamental thing in the game so they'd have to fix that and i don't know how they're gonna fix that but that's what they'd have to fix to make that work out um because as long as someone's alive in the instance it's, it's fine but they close the instance down like maybe it's because they don't want instances randomly opening up you know which is i guess fair um but i don't know maybe they can make a special exception for content like this i don't know um Samara says, I got a rage on the floor that only had one Corrigan and one grill on it. That's good. Is there a lot of reverse culture shock? Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's true. Living in Japan for so long, you've been accustomed to a very specific culture. And now you're in America. Yeah. And it's probably very different. I mean at least at least in your in your part of the world. You're in a you're in an area that's just a little bit more laid back, you know. I mean, I imagine it would be super culture shock if you had to do something in like say New York, you know, because that's like hustle bustle, low patience, kind of thing. Um, it's over there. Maybe it's a little bit more. I mean, not to say the same, but at least it's a little bit. I don't know, better maybe. You can tell everyone's a real. It's a real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think because of your job, you're probably mingling with those type of people. But they could abuse it, though, if you decent on purpose. Exactly, Terry. That's that's always been the controversy there. Um, is if you do have something like that, it could be abused. So I don't know what the balance could be. I mean, I never thought of any type of real solution, and I guess Square Next never did, so... Okay, I gotta hit ads. Um, it'll be three minutes, so we'll be back. And then we'll continue this playthrough... Uh, into 51 plus. So hopefully, so far, so good. Again, you are welcome to ask questions as we go along. I'll try to get them, but chat is also very much well knowledge, so they can also answer if for some reason I miss a thing. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the game plan when we step inside. How about that? So BRB three minutes. I'll play some background music. Pretty good. BRB. All the food portions are so big and coffee's horrible. Like I got Starbucks early and I was like, what what the fuck? This is genuinely awful. <laughs> well, also the problem, Chila. The problem, Chila, is Starbucks is very inconsistent depending on where you go to. That's more the issue. If you get a good barista, you get good coffee. If you get a bad one, it's gonna be bad coffee. I think that's the biggest problem with Starbucks. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the roast is the same, but like... You know, I think... I mean, if you're getting a basic coffee, it's probably gonna taste the same, but I'd like if you're getting any modification on it... 
Um, then yeah. Yeah, and the food portions? <laughs> yeah. I wish I had your food potions, Sheila. Not the ones we have in, in America. But... You don't like diner coffee? I mean, you know. Okay, let me take the restroom break, BRB. Okay, I'm back, but I need to check something on my Twitch settings. I have a little sneaky suspicion something is up. Should be fine. Okay. Have a Krispy Kreme coffee. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts is a little sparse in uh, California. My ad should be okay now. I had noticed some of my fellow creators were complaining that the ad density seemed a little big. So I was a little surprised by when those ads were coming in earlier. Because it seemed to come in a little bit fast. It seemed like my settings were okay though. But um... Yeah, we should be good for an hour right now. You get pizza? California. She had wine. That's what you need to get. Oh, you need to get wine, Sheila. That's what you need to get. Like, I'm not much of a drinker, but I mean, you're there. <laughs> I'm sick. Oh. Oh. Oh, so you did get sick, Rip. Raven! Maybe you can burn off the things, dude. The way you left them. Good evening and good luck. Hey, thanks, Raven. I appreciate it. 20 months. Uh. Alright, 51. So let's talk the game plan, shall we? I am playing like someone is. Uh, someone is trying to go for the first clear. That's how we're playing it. I will raise in here, and we'll open with a strike. That's our opening play here. Um, I like raising here because there's a couple enemies that are a little bit tricky. Uh, especially with the Ymirs that I would prefer not to pull, but there's a lot of them, so we might have to pull them. And that can one-shot you if you hit their spikes. Um, we're playing safety here. But again, time management, proto-manager management. We'll explain every single proto manner we use, so you can have an understanding of why I use it. And what it's going to do for me, so on and so forth. Uh, Preval seems to cap 63. Yeah, no, I have 63 on, on, on minutes on the thing. It's just, um... It seemed a little weird that a couple of my mutuals were complaining about the density. Like, they were coming in a little faster than normal. I just reconfirmed my thingy, so we should be fine. But yeah, it was just a little bit weird. Uh, that that first ad came in just a little fast, and I don't I do not like ads coming in. During gameplay, as, as much as I can help it, I'll give you guys a warning. But we don't. Oh, I saw. I saw. I saw Midori. Uh, I saw. I saw him post. So very cool. Congratulations. Six and a half minutes. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Phasing. Uh, let me check. Oh, hi. Let me check what's going on first. Lethargy. Now, Lethargy can open the door for Ymir's, but I still would deal with, with its spikes no matter what we do. Gonna open with its strength the moment we start our pull. Alright, we'll pull him. On the beat drop, let's go. Now, the ice spikes that explode, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to get behind it so that we can move away from it because it explodes on death. Watch my left side with this attack bar, it'll go explodey. But to maintain kind of like our movement pace, we don't want to run through it. We want to run away from it. So it's going to go with, through its thing. Also, it's it's going to do it much longer because it is um, lethargy. So all the more. While that's happening, we're going to check chests. Okay, Mimic. Now the silver chest will have a much higher chance of spawning a demi clone from this point forward. And it'll get even higher by 81. So we do not want to pass on Silver Chest, especially because we're missing one Demi Clone. But I will not be surprised if we pick a Demi Clone up on this set. Now we can do something else. We got we got the sub 220. You can play Honkai. You gonna join us and play play Honkai? Ross can't confirm higher drop rates. There you go. 
Wait, I needed Ross to confirm that for me. Where is the chest? Look at there it is. Honkai is gacha. Honkai is Genshin, except turn based, so. Oh, look! <laughs> Man! I think I've done this a handful of times, I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna bypass the, uh. Oh, wait, where did you go? Did you just do a 360, sir? Uh, where's your face? I don't even know where your face is, so it's over there. What is Demi Clone? Haven't go through EO yet. Demi Clone is like a Magislite, or rather, it's the replacement for a Magislite. It summons a, a buddy, like an NPC buddy. Um. And the buddy helps you. There's three different kinds. There's a healer, there's a DPS, and then there's a there's a there's an OP on your knight. Because <laughs> he does a lot of damage, uh, and he can heal you. But that's basically what it is. It's like a helper NPC. I I'm skipping the Ymirs as much as I can. Again, I would rather not fight them. I'm gonna do another oh, but I'm gonna have to pull one because there's only Ymirs left on the floor. Okay. So here. I want to position myself again, so that I can deal with that room that's in the bottom while this thing is trying to explode. He's the only one that won't let you down. You know what? That's not wrong. No can do. Oh yeah, I think we had this discussion, Raven. I think gotchas are not good for your end. Okay, okay, that's fair. Well, you have, uh, 16 soon, you know? I'm gonna wait for it to die, but there's a very high chance I'm not off this floor. Gonna deal with the chest first. It is a raising. Got the raising back. Gonna hang here for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the exit because the Ymir by the exit was the one that was kind of in my way. We have to watch its ice spikes, even though um, things are lethargy. It's still gonna probably get it off at least one time. Okay, I'm dropping damage here. I'm gonna be looking for it for that icon to drop from its body. I would rather not target it, so we'll wait. It's off, so we're good. Also, in case you're unsure, Wildfire did not kill me, so we're good. I need to pull another one. Well, this for me. Palmina Queen will not do it as well. Oh, there's another thing here. Oh, whatever. Disengaging. Waiting for the icon to drop. Yeah, good. Hey, okay, well. Uh, about five minutes on the first floor. Good time. We're not going to use anything into the next floor. We're just going to go as is. Also, this floor will have... A higher chance of debuffs, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Onion Knight. Literal Onion Knight. We had one Red Mates 3 Machinist, we blasted EO. It almost made speedrunning it fun. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, what's uh, what what's the decision on Red Mage? That's interesting. Is it just a heal support? Uh, pulling the Shark here. I'm gonna see where I can line of sight. Alright, I have my line of sight here. Another reason why I'm raising here because of this, uh, because of a lot of the things that can kill you. Is it play because of the buff too, like in Bolden and all that? The Ymir is far enough from that silver. I will check it first in case it's a Demi, which it is. It is a Doga. I'm pulling out a Une. So we went through 41, and then we didn't see a single Demi-Clone. We've gone through two floors, and we've seen two. Believe me when I say the Demi-Clones are much higher here. Not really. Mobility and support. Okay, gotcha. Very cool. Uh, gonna check the chest. I will pull... And I will use that safety so we can uh, not have traps and we can move along the floors a lot smoother. We're gonna be moving this thing with me and we're gonna go into the next room going to the east, the southeast. And I have sprint so it's kind of nice. Navigating killing at the same time here. Pulling this because he's the closest to the exit. I'm gonna go this opposite direction to avoid the other banshee. Checking the chest on top of that.
That is a treasure room. Delicious treasure room. However, we don't need to go that way. I'm gonna pull this right now. Because I need to access this room. Now, with the treasure room in this situation where it's out of the way, what I'd like to do is if we need any more kills to contribute to the floor, we will clear up the exit room to see if I can get anything out of there. If I can't, then I'm not gonna force my way in. I'm just gonna try to clear up what I can have access to. So, looking at it right now, I can check this chest first, even if I might aggro this sprite, which we do not. I'm gonna open the affluence. If I want access to the chest on the left, I'd have to pull at least this one first, and the Ymir's also blocked him, so we'll see about that. I need to see at least three Onion Knights. Oh, you got it. I have one. Already. Okay, I'm gonna pull the Banshee, because that is, uh, proximity. Okay, I'm leaving, because, uh, it's gonna be more work for me to work that treasure room than not. And it's okay that we might be dumping some power-ups here. We are 52 minutes right now into the first two. You'll never trust Fortune? I don't blame you. <laughs> oh look, another Demi-Clone. We're, we're averaging one per floor. Shocking revelation here. My t I have 10 seconds on my strength. I'm gonna pull something right now while I have a strength running. It's gonna be this thing. I have burst on. Let's go. Alright, we're good. I'm gonna check the room to the west to see what's over there. I did I did prioritize uh, using Une so I can have more Doga. Um, because it'll be more helpful to me. Une's alright, but I don't really need her heals per se. The Dread Beast stocks this floor. Got it. Thank you. We'll see what happens when you run into it. Onion Knight. Okay. I'm not pulling anything in that room unless I wanted that bronze chest because it's a kill that's unnecessary. Um, I'm gonna pull the, the the shark. I can get a line of sight on this way, I believe, right around here. Yeah. That should be good on line of sight here. At least this doesn't give me a problem. So that other room, there's nothing. There's no exit there. There's nothing I can work for. So getting a kill from that room will be inefficient. Let me check this. Safety, that's gonna be good. I don't know where you're facing. There's the Dread Beasts. And a Leech. So a lot of times I just ignore Dread Beasts. Uh, unless I just so happen to have a Storm on me. Why do Three Houses have such good music in the following game? Tales have such good music the following game. Really? I, I mean, I liked... I liked... Um, I did like the music in... Uh, Engage. Is it as good as Three Houses? That's still pretty good. That's the exit. We want to check the other rooms first. I also want to keep an eye on the Dread Beast to see where he moves. I'm gonna pull this right now. And since it's safety, I can check this chest on the run. It is another raising. That's good, in case I die. That thing has still not moved, and I want to wait for it to move in order I check before I check the chest. I'll fight this first. I'm using Engage is I, but three houses. It's just raise the bar in the series. Also, just can't unhear. We we didn't start the fire. <laughs> you know what? That's true. All right, he's he's blocking that chest. I don't know what he's protecting, but we're gonna give him a chance. One more chance to move, and then we're out of here. He's like right on top of it. I'm checking this room here. With Une, if we get another pull, it's not a big deal. Except I can't get access to the chest though. Okay, you're facing that way. This way. Tight movement. Okay, we got the aggro, it's fine. I'm gonna use the altar here. Picking it up. And again, we want to have our back to the sprite, so when it dies, I will move away from it, not through it. I'm also gonna move with it, uh, except that's there. I don't want to switch targets. Oh wait, we're not in a good spot here. I'm gonna reposition. Alright, here. I'm gonna kill it here. Gives me space to uh, avoid the explosion. Alright, now where are you facing? You are facing out. I 
Okay. I'm gonna eye the chest here. He just moved, so if he's in a position that I can check the chest, I will, and I can. I will get the leech though, but it's fine, I'll check the chest. It is an intuition, that was totally worth it. Of course he'd be blocking an intuition, why wouldn't he? Alright, now, one thing that will be good to do is we want to get to the exit. We're here at the exit. We're going to be observing the enemies in terms of their movement to see when I could get to the exit. Um, now I can't get that chest clean, so I'm probably going to have to deal with the leech. the leech. I'll pull it right now. And it's another safety, so we'll pull back. Now I want to observe the ice spike. Because of his position, he should be not in my way even if he moves, although there's a good chance. Yeah, we'll see. More than likely, he is moving before this leech is dead. I will observe and I'm watching. My eyes, you can't see where my eyes are looking, but I'm staring at the ice spike because this thing doesn't do telegraphs. We wait a second. Is it faster for me to kill it? Eh, probably. It moved. It's facing away from it. We're good to go. On to the next floor. Altered, 47 minutes. 13 minutes the first three. Okay, Blasty, 10 minutes ago. Thanks for that follow. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Gloom! We will fight through Gloom. No real reason not to. And I am down to two Serenity, so I don't want to be uh, bringing that down to one. That's a bad That's a bad play, in my opinion. I do have Corrigans. I see Corrigans. Checking chest. Fortune. Using a Fortune. Since it's free. And we'll deal with this. Gonna wait to kill this first. There is a Yabi coming in, so I'm actually gonna reposition here. To this side, so I can avoid the Yabi. Don't wanna fight the two of these at the same time, that's gonna be a bad play. I'm gonna pick up the fortune on my way back. So the altar has helped us get Corrigan, so if this was Mimics, it didn't really matter. I would have used I would have killed them anyway if they were in my way. But we got the free kills here, so that will be a big time save. I am not afraid to use altars at all. Especially on a machinist, and especially on a job that can stop the infatuation. That's probably the more important reason, is that you can kill them. They're probably going to be some of the least threatening enemies in Eureka Orthos. Except the higher floors, they do hit kind of hard, but I would still say they're some of the least threatening ones. Yet another raising, just in case I died 20 times apparently. Uh, I will try to sneak around this Banshee. Now if I aggro this Banshee, it's not a big deal. I still need another kill. So this is like a risk, risk, risk uh, worth it. In a way. You know, it's like, okay, maybe if I go fast enough, I can get around, not get the pull, and then exit this room clean. But if I get the aggro, not a big deal. Just get Gorgons. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those streams. Yeah, just pick everything up. And then, and then, and then someone's gonna be like, man, you just, you just keep getting lucky, dude. Well, what if, what happens if I don't get that luck? It's like, well, you know what? Just, just try your best. <laughs> But, but I think to that point, um, to that point, um, I would say literally every single run that I've taken in, in Eureka Orthos, my protomanders and my, my, specifically my protomanders have not been a problem at all. Like, never has that ever been a problem climbing. Um, I've only died to, like, mechanics, uh, in here, so... Okay, Yabi's coming in this way, so this gets a little complicated. A little complicated. I'm gonna be a little bit careful here with the movement. Okay. Safe. I think I did safety, right? No, I didn't. Okay, we didn't safety. I'm gonna pull the Yabi then. Moving and moving while this thing did, does the stuff. So I can get out of this AoE. Watching some machines when I was frogging, I had a similar feeling, but when I think about it more and more, other than not, it's not like you have or had better luck than me, you're just better utilizing resources to create those lucky advantage opportunities. Exactly. I think EO is more. I think you see it more in this content, also. But I mean, I'll still be consistent in Palace and Heaven on High as well. 
mean, that's where that's where it's become very interesting doing run after run after run. And it isn't just me. Like, I'm not the only one doing it now, you know? You see multiple other creators and buddies accomplishing the same feat. I'm gonna pull the Banshee because I want this chest. And I don't want to fight the Ymir. Okay. Like, okay, the one time, right? So that was one thing that was a good point that someone made. Like, hey, can you upload your 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 runs where you don't win? Because if I only uploaded runs that I win, well, that can get that can get that can give a little, you know, not the best perspective for someone trying to learn. And even though not a lot of people watch the runs that don't go through and are not successful, I think it still puts into perspective that we aren't clearing every single run. That I'm not just posting the wins, you know, especially if someone's unable to watch the live stream. Especially like the EU guys and some of the Oceanic guys, or some of the early the early sleepers for NA. You know, they're not watching the streams to see every single run. But if you are seeing a multitude of runs, I think you will start to see a type of consistency, or you'll see how the runs transpire to have the result that it does. And sometimes getting that perspective is important. Sometimes. Uh, I'm skipping that room because there's nothing useful there, so I'm gonna go to another room. If I see a gold chest, I'm gonna fight for it. Nothing here. So I'm actually not dealing with these two rooms. So I could pull things from those rooms, but they're not leading me and, and helping me in a direction. Yabby. Like, it's not going to the exit, it's not going to a chest. So those pulls would be a little bit, like, less valuable than something else. Like, this patrol even would be more valuable. The Blue Lock manga had a wonderful monologue and how luck only matters if you're in the position yourself to receive it. Yeah, controlling, it's like controlling destiny if you will, you know? Um, controlling your luck. <laughs> controlling your destiny, controlling your luck. You know, it's like the one I always talk about, the quote I talk about from, from the Pokemon GDQ run that I watched. About how... It isn't you're not you're not hoping for good luck, but you're looking to mitigate the bad luck. That that was always such a good quote. You know, and it, it applies to this content so well. Because there are things you can do to make sure that you don't have bad luck. Like the easiest example is is if I use a safety on this floor, I'm mitigating bad luck from stepping on traps. Like right away. So we're we're not gonna run into the bad luck of traps. Of course, you can, you can play differently. You hug the walls. That's why we hug the walls a lot. So try to avoid those traps to give us a better chance. Again, mitigating bad luck. But if you're someone who's like, YOLO, I'll just run through the room, whatever. In that case, you're hoping that you don't step on a trap. You're hoping that things fall your way. You're leaving it to possible chance if you don't know where the traps are, etc. So there's definitely ways to play where you can actually give yourself a higher chance of victory by making better decisions or making this making good decisions at the very least. I pulled the Banshee because I want access to the North Room. Also, I'm not proceeding past Donut Room because I don't know if there's a trap leading into the room that's in front of me or if you're looking at the map to the North. And I'd rather not step on a trap while fighting this. That's why I was okay pulling it here, but not okay pulling it the other direction. Because I already walked this path and I already know there's no trap here. Now there could be a trap here, but I don't know yet. That leech is gonna aggro, but that's okay. Checking this room. Alright. Banshee's blocking that, so that's my priority next kill right now. And also, that, that what I just said there is, is kind of important too. Sometimes, if you're someone who will decide your pull after you've killed something, if you add that up through the run and you're killing, what, I don't know, 50 plus enemies? And you're adding in 5 seconds to think about what you're going to pull? That can add up to a lot of time lost. If you've already made your decision about where you're gonna go and or what you're going to pull, you can save time every single pull. Immediate pull now. My decision's already made. So what's my what's my next steps right here? I'm gonna try to get get that chest cleanly. If the exit's not open yet, I'm gonna kill the exit. If it's already open, then I'm gonna avoid kills. I'm also going to make my way through here, because typically I don't step on a trap through here by hugging this wall. Usually. Alright. I'm popping that strength right now, and we will work the exit. Because we want to clear up the exit so we can kill minimum. Goal is to try to get off the floor 
right as the exit opens. Any kills after the exit opens is a time loss, no matter how you look at it, no matter what justification it is. It's a time loss. Of course, you can pick up a power-up that makes it up, but it's really that simple. You're losing time by killing past the exit, the exit opening. So being efficient with those kills will definitely help you. Time check. We were talking about this on the previous set. We want to be over 30 minutes when we step into the 6th floor. Currently, we are at 38 minutes, so we are a little bit ahead on time. That's a good thing. Okay. Pulling up the exit, pulling the next crab. If I need another pull, I have a crab in the north room. So I'm already thinking about, okay, what happens if I need another kill? That's all part of it. Now, I could cheat to the exit, I could stand on the exit hoping this opens opens it, or I can play a little safe and thinking I need another kill. So we played it a little safe, because I'll have a more shorter distance than my next pull. Hey Sparty, thanks for the follow. Oh, my follow alert's broken again? No wonder I'm missing follow alerts again. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can fix that. It breaks like every other week or something, it's dumb. Hey Darabon, is that, is that the Omni Darabon from Pals of the Dead? Oh my god, he had an epic Astro. He cleared Astro Palace the Dead earlier today. Congratulations, my friend. It was a joy to watch that. I'm glad I was able to watch that. Alright, we're out. Just enough kills. Alright, we're walking into 56 with 36 minutes remaining, so that's good. Good time. Damage down, doesn't matter, we're gonna continue, we have a strength on. Storms, okay, so... What do we want to do with the storms? We can pull a handful of things, but we have to be careful what we want to pull. Safety does make this a little cleaner. The one I don't want to pull is a Yabby. We don't want to hide a Yabby that puts some weight on me. Now I could, I could bait the weight and then do it, but also I could just not deal with him. So we are safety here. I want to go at least 3 or 4 kills. That'll be a pretty safe amount of... Uh, things to fight. Okay. Pulling you. Gonna pop a potion here, gonna watch the Mimic, just in case he gets an infatuation off. Pulling you. And he will soon. Good. That's there. Here. Here. Gonna Tactician here. Gonna get a little closer to this Yabby. Gonna wait for things to gather, gonna storms. Okay, I'm gonna pull the Yabby just to clear him out. Good. Alright, so we got a good a kill a good amount of kills there. I will check the other room though. Sight will help to see what's there. Okay, actually, never mind. There's no gold chest there. We are out of this floor. I could get the bronze chest, but we'll take the time. This is like a nice opportunity to kind of save yourself time here. Make the most out of the storms. Honestly, you don't have to go that crazy with storms. If you're comfortable with three, three should be okay with the pool. And especially with what we had. Leeches are easy, crack clothes are easy, and even the mimics are easy. So we had fortunate pulls. Again, we have a strength here, but I already have four minutes on the clock with strength. So I don't want to pull it. I don't want to open it now. Very important. Watch that. Strength optimization. We want to open that when we're either getting close to the floor or I'm not coming back over here. So for instance, if the exit is like, let's say, four rooms to the north, then I will probably kill a couple enemies here, pop the strength, and start making my way to the north side. If the exit is to the east, then my decision making is that I will instead get the full clear, open up the exit everything, and then get the strength at the very end. Because that's kind of the least amount of area that I need to walk. Um, but that'll, again, kind of fall upon where the exit is. Now, if the exit is only two rooms away, I can come back here. That's okay. We do want to make the most of this strength right now. Ice fight's over there. Let's see what's over in this room. Okay, it is a silver. I'm gonna pop this one, but I'm not gonna open it until this thing's dead, because it could be a mimic. Hope the trail's going well. So far, yeah, I would say. Um, my biggest, you know, honesty... 
I don't know about how some of you feel. I don't know if Ross is still here, Willow, and some of the other guys. Even though this deep dungeon does feel a lot more of a sure shot of victory versus the others, I get I get like a little anxiety prior to the run that like I'm gonna screw up something more than I did at the other ones. Which is interesting. Maybe it's just because I'm still kind of inexperienced or not as experienced as the other two. But like when the day arrives, I'm like, man, I hope I don't screw up today, you know? Um, it's just because things are like a lot more dangerous overall. That like you just make one hiccup and you're kind of dead where in the other ones I could make a little bit of a mistake and kind of kind of patch it up a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. E exactly. Um, Exactly, and I think that's what it is a little bit to me, and that I know that's something that has gotten a lot of people in this content. It's it's the focus that gets them. Okay, first and foremost. One, I don't know what this... What the hell is this chest? Is it this one? Oh, it's a steel. Okay, so now I'm not coming back here, because the, the, the key is orange. And the exit isn't to the, to the right of me. So I'll just now get these buffs, and then move my way up. Plus I have Dogo, so he's gonna shred things. Dying on 99? I mean... <laughs> I mean, it happens. It's a learning lesson, of course. You know, it, it, it... Especially if you're trying to do it, you know, first couple times, so on and so forth. Alright, I'm gonna keep the kills to minimal here. If I aggro something, I'm taking it with me, otherwise we will move. Zeraton. Ice Spike. Ice Spike goes because he's right on top of the exit. I can skip the Zeraton because the Zeraton is sound. Uh, I need a bit of a better position here. I don't like this bow. Okay, Doga's just gonna kill it, so I'm gonna- I need to be careful. Stop, stop, stop! Oh, damn it. I, um, I confirmed my target by accident there. That's why I accidentally pulled it. Okay, I, if this thing dies and petrify, it won't explode, so let's go. Focus is definitely my problem with EO. I cleared very consistently early, but now I'm getting very inconsistent because I'm multitasking and stuff, keep getting bored. I was doing that one time on Twintania, when I was trying to set up a file off stream, and I straight up almost died to Twister for the first time because exactly that. I was getting way too complacent on the run. One thing I stress about is doing Behemoth Bard. <laughs> That's fair. And EO, and EO runs? I see, I see. Like, when I'm doing the run now, I get comfortable. Like, I guess I'm in my zone. But like, before, leading up into the run. It's like this anxiety that's there, you know? Alright, time is good. We're stepping into into 58, we have about 30 minutes, so it's very good on time. Probably even better than the previous four. Alright, ability down is gonna be a time loss. But because we are so ahead on time, it's okay. Rin! Hey, Rin! Hi Rin, thanks for the raid. How was your stream? Tutorial run, let's go. We're talking time, we're talking proto, uh, proto mana management. We got today. How was your stream? What are you up to? Okay. A little bit of issues here. Oh no, just kidding. Because it's no knockback, we're not getting pulled in. Plus it's a longer cat, so we're okay now. Um, tying down to 191. No! That's close though. Let's go. Alright. I love to hear it. Good job. Good hustle, Rin. Guys, check out Rin. Clearly doing deep dungeon, getting to the highest floors. You need another streamer who does deep dungeon. You gotta check out Rin then. Welcome in, I'm Angel's Demon. As we are doing a tutorial run today, talking about time management, talking about proto mana management. If you have any questions? I'll try to get to them. I might be going on like very long monologues, but I'll try to get to them. If you could imagine streaming this. I'd 100% die before every before 30 every run. <laughs> Um, let me tell you, Sparty, it took a while for me to adjust to specifically Eureka Orthos. I mean, I had all the years in Palace in Heaven on High, so I knew when to look away and everything. EO took a little bit. Um, I mean, Darabon's in chat, he can definitely talk to that about the balance of chat and playing the game. It's tough. You gotta find your balance, you gotta find what works for you. Um, that's honestly the other layer of the challenge when you're streaming. Um, I'll always say 
And I think I think other one other guys who are streamers or who can who can you know who has streamed a little bit or something like that. I'll always say I'm always I'm always playing at 80% no matter what I'm doing. Uh if I'm going live. 80% is my maximum capacity because I have I am distributing time to looking at you guys and talking and and everything, creating conversation if I need to and everything. Even if I talk through this content, you know, kind of like, like almost like how we did the GDQ run, where I, I completely had chat off. I did not look at chat, and it was just a stream of just a monologue with Frosty helping me out, right? Um, trying to think of things to talk about and then apply to the gameplay, there's no way you're going at 100%. That's impossible. So I'm always playing at 90%. Um, I'm sorry, 80%. So you just kind of like try your best to see what you can, you know, control and what you can balance and everything. And that that is part of the challenge overall. It's a fun challenge, you know. But as I also always say, never in my channel will I ever directly blame chat. We'll joke about it, but in reality, if chat was the reason for me to lose a run, then I shouldn't have streamed to begin with. Like, what's the point of me streaming? You know, if I'm just gonna go blame you guys. It's it's almost like... It's almost like the whole PvP thing. Like, at least I came from PvP. I mean, Raid is kind of the same thing, but... I came from more PvP-ish, and how you run into teammates where... You know, they're, they're the... They're the best player on the field. And there's no way that they're the problem, so it has to be your problem. It's kind of like that. It's almost like you're just projecting that to, to someone else, but not here. I always see what I could have fixed better, you know? Paladin incidents? Yeah. That was me looking at chat. I died because I looked at chat, totally. And that's not chat's fault, that's my fault. Um, I don't remember what was in that first chest. I was talking so much, I don't remember. Strength, steel, safety... Uh, I used none of it? I didn't use any of it. What? Okay, let me go over there. Oh yeah, I think there is a strength here. I'm gonna go pick that up now and then work the exit. Yeah, because this was blocking one of these one of these buffs here. Oh, you moved really far away. Okay, fresh strength. Let's work the exit. Maybe I'll learn to love EO here. <laughs> well, at least I'll help you clear. I mean, there's there's like other ways people are trying to challenge this content, which is I think more of a strain on like the community trying to go for it, you know what I'm saying? Instead of it just being like the package already, but eh, you know, it is what it is. I'm oh, pulling this out of the way. Again, you'll probably never, you'll probably watch me never pull a Zeraton. Because the Zeraton, they're not bad on Machinists, but they are sound, and I can just get past them at any point. And if there's an enemy I would, I would prefer not to fight, I would, I would just not fight it, just for the sake of that. So if I can get around that one, then I prefer not to fight it. Okay, we are out, and I believe this is a steal. Yep. All right, twenty-five walking into the into the fifty-nine floor. Hey, Velvet! Thanks for the four months, by the way. I missed that because I was talking about Rin coming in here. So, Velvet, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for the continued support. It's been a lot of fun seeing you kind of move your way through the, the the clears and everything and mingling with the community, so thank you for that. Alright, we have a Doga, because we picked one up. We've seen, I think, four or five Demi-Clones on this set compared to 41, where we saw zero. So again, kind of further confirmation that the Demi-Clones are much higher here than they are in the previous sets. Good to know, you know. Yeah! Appreciate it. And Rin, thanks for that follow too, by the way. My follow alerts are broken. I'm gonna see if I can fix it um, in between floors. I, I have something that can potentially fix it, but they I don't know why they break every other week. It's so dumb. Oh, this is what happened to Sig last time, wasn't it? Like he got petrified mid-air or something? <laughs> Alright, skipping the Zeraton. I love Yo. After getting my title and mount, and decided to try Heaven on High for reclear, I'm convinced I cleared on a fluke. Heaven on High feels harder than all of EO. Oh yeah, no, I I think a lot of people will agree with you on that one. I have a Witching. I'm gonna pull this one. I'm gonna pull it 
And then we're gonna Witching Delayed, because I can probably get away without it exploding. And also I'll peel up, I'll get the Stingray at the same time. I'm gonna Witching right now. Gonna pull the Stingray. And then we'll deal with this in the trade with the Stingray so we have uh, uptime. Kind of. Making the most of that Witching since it's free. And I get to handle two enemies that are a little bit annoying in a much easier fashion. Again, I'm going to try to re reiterate this as much as possible. We are checking all the rooms as much as we can, and checking all the chests. So, we're talking about trying to go fast, we're talking about trying to keep your time in check. It's... it, it always... I always feel like it is counterproductive to be running around everywhere, but in reality it is kind of one of the better ways to do it. Um, and it keeps consistency going, especially for your first time. But um, but it's that in combination of kill speed too. Like we're we're moving pretty quickly with our kill speed and pulls, and not having to stand around and make decisions. That's that's also very important. Which negates yes it does yeah because it dies in the thing so it's not a sprite. It's not a sprite when it dies so that's why it negates it. Um, what Hustle who said also Doga petrified does work if. You were able to stun a sprite, which you're not, but if you're able to stun it, it would also cancel it. So like in the next set, we'll find Cobras. Cobras explode and they give you a Vuln down. If you stun them before they explode, they will not do that because they don't have a chance to use the ability. It's like a it's like a cast on death, so if you, if you stop the cast before it's even cast when they're dying, then it never goes off. Going this way. I'm gonna sprint here. I should avoid the Zeraton. I'm gonna go to the right side and check the furthest room and then swing back to check that chest if I can. Nope, I'm gonna pull the Stingray, no hesitation. I'm gonna watch my angle because of the knockback here. Just kidding. So it's just like wood knock hook. There was a bronze chest, I don't have to check it right now, so I'll kinda go back here. But I'm gonna gonna RP walk here. To avoid the aggro from the Zeraton. Pop the fortune. Hey, okay, how you doing? Always enjoying- oh, I appreciate that. I'm glad you are enjoying it. I enjoy- I enjoy doing it, so I'm glad you enjoy watching it. There's a lot of Zeraton. <laughs> I think, I think the Zeraton are a pretty high rate here. Gonna sneak this chest before we do another pull. And then we'll clean up the exit. Witching? Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna Witching here. I'm surprised I got this one, not the other one. Okay, we're out. Let's go. So we're walking to the boss with... Time check. Hold on, there's a bunch of stingrays here. I'm gonna try to sneak around one, even if I get a trap, it's okay. Time check 20 minutes into the boss. A little bit faster than the previous war. You think we go slower, but we actually went a little bit faster, so... We're gonna fight this straight up. We do have a little bit less of a strength. But we can check the time. 20 minutes here, and then we'll go through with this one. I will always look at the fourth hit here, and look if it's alternating, or if it's the same, it is the same. That's how I kind of keep this fight, this fight a little bit simple. So it's gonna come in with the same one twice. Back. Looking for a swing or a pushback, it is a swing. Now if you're kind of feeling a little tight on time, or you're feeling a little uncomfortable with this boss, doing a Demi-Clone is not a terrible idea. Again, we were talking about how the Demi-Clone drop rate is way higher from here on. And that doesn't change. So using one here is not as bad. I can't believe Amazon is trying to make it even harder to use Prime now by desyncing the resubscribe time. Yeesh. Damn. Damn, Twitch. <laughs> hey, Biftype, thanks for the 
39 months of support! Thanks for the long time support, my friend. It's been a pleasure having you hang around us, be in the community. It's been awesome. We are alternating. Once this fourth one goes off, I'm stepping into it. Stepping back out. He's a core, how you doing? I'm out. Swing. Strength is now down, so this will take a little bit longer, but it's okay. You get to see this rotation like a million times. I noticed a couple... I noticed... I just noticed Octa Swipe always alternates between repeat. But no repeat. Yeah, it, it's an alternating thing. No, you don't have to feel silly. I mean... All these fights are a puzzle. Once you solve the puzzle, then it becomes easy. So it's... It's, it's not silly. I mean, when I was first doing it, I was very confused. I was trying to count all eight. <laughs> Uh, and then it kind of got, you know, I kind of got helped a little bit from chat, and got simplified in my head. Alright, it's gonna be the same twice. Second. Yo, know what Biftek said. He sacrificed his social security to help you out, so I hope, I hope you thank him for that. I should have done air anchor. This will be the same. Oh, I think this is alternating. I can't remember. It is alternating. Okay. Yeah, this well, I mean, the swipe comes in the direction that you're in. You can you can bait the you can bait the octo swipe a little bit. So you'll see I'm trying to reposition to the open spot. Like I try to aim him in a way that his right side is open because that's where I'm standing. It's a little bit tougher. The the balls, the thunder call are static positions though. So theoretically, you could memorize that, and know it, but you know, there, I kind of manipulated just a little bit there. I can get a free spot. The same twice. Second. Okay, that's a pushback finally. Song works really well with this fight. I mean, I think all the Octopath boss themes work really well, but this definitely gets me a lot more excited about this fight than I did with the other with the other song. Not gonna lie. Uh, okay, I think it's gonna alternate. I believe. Yep. I I know it alternates. It's just sometimes I just forget. That's all it is. That's why I say I think it is. You know. I don't remember. Push back. You still get nervous on 80 odd. 80 to me is the more terrifying boss of the whole thing for me as well. Um, because there's a lot of weird angles for that, so I completely get it. It's going to be the same. So yeah, I kind of that one I kind of will handle a lot more with care. 
Same, 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 same. Okay. I made a mistake with my heat blast. Swing. Oh god, I wasn't looking. The longer I do this fight, the less focus I get, not gonna lie. Sometimes I do like using a Demi-Clone here to make this fight shorter. But, um... I mean, look, man managing your resources to have them stay out longer is a lot more- is a little bit more efficient, too. Okay, this is going to, I believe, alternate. Pushback. And a swipe. We spend about 8 minutes on this fight. Roughly about 7-8 minutes. Uh, with a little bit of strength. It's a long fight. But we gave ourselves a ton of time to make this work, so it's not a big deal. Didn't have to use any resources to make it faster. Or dreads are in a bad position, but usually dreads are kind of uncommon anyway. I believe this is the same, not that it matters. Alright, cool, 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 cool. That's a dead boss. Here you go. So we filled out. I still haven't seen a flight from this entire run up till today. So we still have two. We got a Storm's back. And everything else is kind of okay. We have not seen the Serenity either. I haven't seen a Serenity and we've checked every single chest. So this one is actually kind of looking good in terms of like the RNG. Making it a little bit more difficult, which is what you hope for. Um, 12 minutes of TMI clone, I also feel that. <laughs> yeah. We're now entering a uh, set where mob HP is significantly higher of the game plan. So here, I do get a tiny bit more aggressive with the with my strengths and stuff. And a little bit on demi clones. Now, uh, in 61, and we'll kind of talk about this a little bit more right before I answer, but since you asked right now. 61 tends to have a lot less debuffs. So a lot of times, um, a good play, especially if you're taking tanks and healers, a good play is to counter a bad debuff with a power-up, not a Serenity. Especially because I'm down to two Serenities. You don't just want to wipe it off with a Serenity. You can use the Demi-Clone, which is a higher percentage chance of showing up. You can use a Storm, which is still not that bad. Um, honestly, if you had full Dread, you could t technically use a Dread, but I would hold a Dread till later. And we don't probably we're probably not going to get to that strategy only because I'm down dread. So, but that's that's actually better. Like strategies that it, that 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 are going to help you. If I can't get to them, sometimes that might be a good thing because we're we're trying to find other ways to do it. But a flight, I would say, in sixty one is a little less likely for me to use. I'd rather use that in the seventy set as opposed to this one. Um, one of the bigger issues I have here is the patrols, and sometimes they're a little bit hard to track because they're they kind of camouflage the background. But you still want to maintain the game plan of keeping the kills low, kill minimum, open the exit, get the chest. It's still it's still kind of that same ideal. All the rooms, all the chests, minimal kills. Um, so it just becomes about what you're using. And I think you get a little bit more aggressive with how you use things and why you use things here. So that's kind of what we're going to be aiming for on this set. Also, I will open with the raising because we have ninjas that can, that can assassinate you literally. We have the bites that have the spikes later on, and a couple other things that can get a tiny bit tricky. Um, no telegraph enemies, so on and so forth. So let me catch up and chat a tiny bit, and then we will hit the uh, ad break here. Speaking of dreads, my last group run, I did see my last group run. I did. We went all the way to 100 without a single dead dropping. Also, I don't know if you wanted to take the time to check your follow alerts now. Oh yes, I did. Uh, there's one thing I've been doing with this to see if it works, but I don't know if it does. Um, it's just really irritating that it breaks all the time. I know, I know my buddy Alchemy had that issue, but she actually got it fixed. I don't know what she did. For me, it was just like testing it and it works. So I'm going to see if it works now. Uh, I just test the widget. You're going to hear the follow it right now. Like that seemed to work. So we'll see if that works. We'll see if it works. 
Thank you for that, Biftek. I appreciate that. I finished 470 with around 30 seconds left on my clear run because I tried to be as greedy with Proto Manders as possible. That's fair. I think 61, you can still be a little aggressive, Velvet. I mean, look, look on your, you said your clear run, so I mean, whatever gets you there, right? You want to be as full Proto Manders as possible getting off this floor, but this will challenge you. Um, this is also a floor that I will tend to Demi Clone. I actually usually Demi Clone the boss that we just did, but just for the sake of doing it full and showing you how much time you had to do it, uh, it's still a boss that's not too bad to do without the Demi Clone. But this boss in particular, I do like the Demi Clone because it is a much more beefier boss in terms of its HP. So we will be planning a Demi Clone for the boss to help us out, and it does cut the time. It'll cut the time from like a 12 minute fight, from like a 10 to like 13 minute fight with or without strength, down to possibly a 5 or 6 minute fight without strength. It's kind of a big difference here. Um, but. Two onion bows and third. Yeah, oh no, that's absolutely. Hey, look, you know, the way the way I look at it too, Velvet, and I'll step away from this as uh after I answer this, but another way to look at it, yeah, okay, time was tight, you know, it was it was it was a nail biter, but then you could also tell yourself and convince yourself, well, you know what, you use every second of the clock to make it efficient. You know, like what would be really bad is if you used so much and you still almost timed out. But because you got to 30 seconds and you retained all the stuff you did, you just utilized your time the best of your ability, right? You just made the most of your time. That's how you look at it, so... 30 seconds is spicy, but, like, when we did Paladin on, uh, on, what is it, Thursday? We had, I, on this set, I think I cleared with, like, 30 seconds left, and then the next set we cleared with, like, 45 seconds left. My proto manders were, were tip-top shape, so I can't complain. It was tight, but we made it, we, we conserved as much as possible. Is worth considering the mob HP from 71 until the end does not increase that much. It's mostly the debuffs that are worse in the last two sets. Yeah. I think the tricky, I think, again, the thing that was tricky with tanks is that I'm looking for a reason to use a protomander here on this set, but the debuffs don't show up, like, they barely, you'll see, like, a blind or, like, once in a while. Uh, but the enemies are a little bit beefy here. Uh, you'll feel it. You, like, I think you'll feel the difference from the previous floor into this one, and then more so into 71 about how long they take to kill. So that is going to eat up some time, and then compounded upon the debuffs, like Hustle Hoop said, it's a little bit worse on 71 than this one, but you'll feel the, the enemies dying a lot slower. Okay, let me take the ad break. Let's play some background music. Good song. And I'll catch you in three minutes, guys. BRB, thanks for watching. We'll continue to twirl when we come back. Okay, give me a minute. I'm here. You're gonna hear window sound. That is me. I'm gonna make a window sound. Ready? Three, two, one. Window sound. I'm gonna get my hand camera on while we're waiting here. Do I like this app? Uh, oh, I know, dude. I've watched streams where the the window sound goes off. I think it's me all the time. It's it's no it's it's like the same thing when some some guys have the Discord thingy. Now for me, it doesn't affect me because I don't have Discord sound on. But I know that 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 it purposely ticks people off, right? Because you have the Discord sound, it's like oh my god, I got a message. Oh, just kidding, it's not a message. Um, but I mean, if I'm in control of it, then, you know, may as well, may as well provide the heads up. I know what that does mentally. <laughs> I think the only one I don't have control on is if the virus thing shows, and then that's, I, I have no control when it's like, Oh, hey, we just checked your system. It's all good. It's like, great. I didn't ask you to check it, but whatever. But I'm glad everything's fine. But I asked you. USB disconnects. Oh yeah. Do do do. Yeah, like then you're like you're checking your mouse and everything. You're checking the keyboards to make sure like your stuff is okay. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. My least favorite set, the land of Diplos and Ninja. <laughs> oh, you like the Diplos and the. Let me pause the music. Let's get the hand camera going. Uh. Bop. You can also delete the actual keyboard. Is it live? 
I swear this is live. I, I swear this is not pre-recorded. Um, just in case you're wondering, it's not pre-recorded. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, guys, I appreciate it. Damn, I've been going like right on the hour. I need to snooze these on and off. To land in your entire big pool is a pain. Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, shall we? Step into 61. So we did the game plan a little, uh, earlier, right before we went to the break. We'll try to make our best time and do time checks and, and talk about the proto manners, etc. I think on this floor, this is where it becomes even more important. I would say amongst anything else, it's probably starting at this floor that people start to have issues. Maybe not as bad. Uh, I would say not as bad as like Heaven on High. I think I think people will generally get off the 61 to 70 Heaven on High okay. This one will catch more people, uh, newer gamers this set as opposed to heaven on high so we'll definitely try to guide you through with our with our efficiency here carson thanks for the tier one hey thanks for that uh thanks for that tier one support i really appreciate that it's huge opening strength all right we're gonna use that right away there are two cobras that are linked together Pull on them now so we do want to keep the pulls oh i just ricocheted okay we're clear we do want to keep the pulls again as efficient as possible both our movement and our pulls need to be efficient here to make the most of everything. So I'm going to be moving through this room so I can check what's in here already. Now, mimics are going to come from gold chests, so I do want to be careful opening said chests in combat. We don't want to get too, uh, too crazy with that. Okay. Yeah. Got one of my dreads back, good. I put a weight on the Cobra so that it can die a little bit further away from me. It was also caught in, a, in an AoE, so it didn't die and give me the bone. Do that extra damage. HP pulls on this mob really is a drain here. It is, and you'll feel it. Even with strength on, you see uh, things feel like such a drag to kill. Absolutely. I probably become a little bit more kill efficient here than I did on the previous floors, where even if I was getting extra kills, it was whatever. But definitely from here on. Wait, did I not pick up the strength? I didn't pick up the strength. I'm gonna go pick it up before I forget. Otherwise, I will uh, not come back here. It was some 200k to 300k in this set compared to the last set. There you go. Whoa. Okay, I will aggro if I check that chest, so I'm gonna ignore for now. We have a Diplo, which I'm gonna pull because that has proximity and it's blocking my path. This is a straightaway floor. So. Looks like it's just a, it's just one one path. You'll also start to take more damage here, um, so I will do more potions here to kind of keep my HP a little bit more in order. So the Diplos, Omniwas was talking about it earlier. They're the, they're the ones that he doesn't like, and I don't like them either because of the fact that they're proximity. You have to take care of them if you're going to proceed through rooms, etc. Everything else is sight, so it's not it's not that bad. It's just these in particular. So, I'm gonna try to get this chest right now, see if we're clean. clean. Got the flight back, that's good. That exit is clear, I don't need to pull anything from the exit. I just have to check these chests and keep these going. Now, if I can get through this room and back without a, without aggro, then I will work the exit. Which looks like we can. So, we do have this strength here, that actually changes my game plan a little bit. Tasmanian, thanks for the 11 months of support, I appreciate it dude, I hope you're doing well. So. I had just ga I just I just laid out a game plan. I'm gonna go back to the exit. I'm gonna kill what's in the exit. But the strength came here. So my change in strategy now is I want to kill and open the exit around this area because once the exit opens, I pick up the fresh strength and we go into the next floor with the fresh strength. That is a little bit more important to me than the previous strat because because that was going to get into the exit as fast as possible, but it changes now. We do have enemies that are not quite ideal, which is the poison dudes, but we can at least deal with one of them. Also, the poison doesn't last that long, it's only 12 seconds, so I can at least, um... <laughs> Actually, it's not going to stack because of lethargy, so lethargy is going to help here. I just forgot that. If lethargy wasn't on, this would be a stacking poison, but it's only 12 seconds, I can wait for it to drop. But he will basically not have enough time to stack back in. You'll get it up, but he's not going to be able to stack it. Okay, killing this one. Now, if, no matter what happens, if the exit opens or the exit doesn't open, I am popping that strength because I don't want to run- I don't want to go back here since I'm away from the exit. 
So if it doesn't open, then I just pull another. I pull something else with a new strength on. This whole thing is about strength up time. That's what it is about giving you the most time because I think it is still a bit of a mistake for people that they see the strength, they pop the strength immediately. But you gotta think it. You gotta think through it. Like what? How do you get the most out of it? You know. Strength coming in now. We are keeping in mind that I have a Cobra that's floating around, back and forth. So I need to keep an eye if it's close. If it's, I, I probably just dodge it, which I can't easily do. Okay, so the only Mata Mata that I need to worry about is this one. He has a potential chance of going to the exit. He's the most riskiest one, although it's a low risk to be honest. Versus the other one, who's stuck in the left side of the room. And the possibility is Fib walking all the way to the exit is extremely low. This one could walk back and forth, and then and then kind of be looking at the exit. Um, and, in, and in reality, both of them are a moot point. Like, it doesn't really actually matter which one you pull, but you do want to pull the one that, that would give you the highest risk of giving you a problem. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of throughout the whole thing. Like, you want to pull the thing that's going to give the most value for your movement and your free time. I'm doing good, just got back from a two week work trip. Wow, two weeks and it's now time to finish chasing my first deep dungeon clear! Set up a green screen! Awesome, awesome, awesome. I hope the green screen goes well. Yeah. If I need yet another pull, it will be the Cobra. And I'm not joking, I think that's like the only thing alive anyway. So, um, I'm out of range. Okay, oh yeah, we gotta pull it. I had to pull everything here. So this is a tough one because this is a this is a full clear. A full kill floor. Well li literally everything had to die. But this is what happens. This is fine. Actually for the for you guys, this is a better watch than if I just had low kills all the time, because this is what should happen on your run. You kinda do want to see worst case scenario. And this is worst case scenario. Now we did get the strength to come back. So that does help. We also did pick up a flight, so our protomanders are kind of more normalized. We got a dread, we got a flight, we got strengths. Oh. Wait, you're not dead yet. Now you are. Okay. Does it make you cry on stage? You be double pulling on stage though. Oh, do you double pull on stage? I think Sage is coming in, by the way, Biv Tech. <coughs> I think I'm gonna do Sage this week. Okay, Mimic. You have them right now. I know you can, but did you do it? Oh, did I just... Oh, I looked at chat. Oops. That's on me. Really? That's on me. I made a mistake. Hey guys, check out the merch store. We got a merch store. Uh, I'm not gonna deal with that room, because it's a bronze chest. It's not really a high priority thing right now. So I will pass that room and move my way towards the east, uh, the west. I know my directions, I swear. Okay. I'm gonna deal with the Cobra, so he doesn't become a problem. I kinda feel... I kinda feel immortal in this place on Sage, which is dangerous, but the damage is so predictable. Hmm. Especially with your mobility on Sage, it's probably a big help to you, Biff Tech. I, th and that's why it's gonna be my first healer in... I'm pretty excited about. I'm gonna wait this guy. I'm gonna put a leg raise on him when he's kind of at 10%. So I can kind of see if I can avoid the the vulnerability. So right about here, I'm gonna wait. So as he's moving slow. I might get enough distance here. Good. I didn't get the vuln. Tools and machinist has. You can stun it um, if you're a tank or something else. <laughs> you can totally stun it to avoid that. Thing. Oh god. Alright, this is not gonna be fun, but we will try our best. I'm gonna deal with the Dibble first. I'm gonna move really far away so that the Cobra doesn't have a chance to get the buff, hopefully. He did not, so we're good. Okay, we bind to the Cobra to buy some time here. You have strength on, so it's not that big of a deal. As long as we don't get the buff. You know, I didn't even see where Regorge was coming. Yeah. Okay. 
Alright, so I'm gonna move this cobra with me to the next room. It's a bit of a navigation thing to, to kind of save me a little bit of time. So I can already make my, my way to the next room and to possibly the exit. Gonna wait here. Get behind the Matamata. Okay, avoided the bone down. I'm gonna proceed towards the exit. I'm not gonna pull the Matamata because I could get more mimics. Or the exit could be blocked by a Diplo. And it, the, the Diplo is already blocking a chest. So we wanna check this room. It would be a priority pull. It is. So we're gonna pull it now so I can get access to that chest. If the exit does not open, my first my first action is to check the chest because we want to see if it's a mimic. Even if the exit opens, I check the chest, but it would be a little bit higher risk because of the chance of a mimic. But basically, you don't want to pull something prior to that chest. No matter what scenario there is. You want to get to the chest, see what it is first, and then do your pull or get to the exit. Fearing mimics is just not a good it's not a good habit to get into if you fear mimics. There are gonna be times when we will skip because of the fear of mimics, but it's a lot less frequent than like the entire run, if that makes sense. Checking this chest. It is a flight that is going to help tremendously with time. Free buff. Cuts the room in half in terms of how many we need to kill on the next floor. We are 11 minutes through the first two, stepping into 63 with 49 minutes left. Okay, ability down is gonna hurt with time, but it is flighted. Gonna fortune here. A teammate! It's my long lost moderator. Hey, what's up, dude? Angelus Mimic Vongo Animate. Hope school isn't kicking your butt as much. Thank you for the continued support. And the fact that you've continued the sub. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot, so thank you so much, man. You gotta do bun bun. Gotcha, man. So there is a gold chest here, however, I will check it once this thing is closer to death. Now here, because it is flighted, um, as much as you want to keep uptime with your kills, because the kills are cut in half, and the priority is checking chests, you want to get the chests more importantly than killing getting kills, because let's say the next three chests you open are all mimics. Well, that sounds terrible. But if it's contributing to the exit, then it's not as bad as you might think, right? I sprinted a little too soon. So the thing has to be completely dead for me to get the full sprint. So now we're going to check chest priority. And then once we know where the exit is, or see how many chests there are, then we'll start doing the kills again. Finals week, next week. Projects to finish up, but almost done. Nice. Also, who? I never pick up any flights in my chest or all intuitions. Many try harder, dude. Did you like yell it out loud? You know, will it to will it to happen with your brain power and the force? I'm gonna pull the uh, the the Gao Ro because he's in my way. The go the Gao Ro, whatever. I'm gonna go be. I'm gonna run away from it so I can avoid the the thingy. I've been fitting in Star Rail and Age of Wonders 4. Age of Wonders 4, nice. All those games. Well, Star Rail, I personally am now in like the total daily maintenance of Star Rail, except for tomorrow, when I can kind of get back into grinding simulated universe. But I like as of yesterday, I got into 100% grind like daily maintenance because uh, I had literally nothing to do. Come on. I know I aggroed, but it's not a big deal. I'm gonna keep the potion rolling. I have steel going. I actually might strongly consider getting a strength up right now. I'm gonna kill this enemy, this patrol. And then I'm gonna check the chests with the mat Mata Mata on me, because I have a steel on. I wanna see what we got to see if anything can help me right now. Half wounds doesn't help me. Yeah. Bad timing. Yeah, bad timing. Alright. I'm popping the strength here to keep the damage rolling. What you might see me do from this run is we might keep the strength at 2 the entire time. I do recommend that. You don't have to. But it is definitely a good thing to start with to kind of keep your time a little bit more in check as long as you keep the pulls quickly. Uh, as long as you keep the pulls uh, quick. 
Go roll your butt. <laughs> this is a great mix of the song. This is a good mix of the song. See? Engage has good music. Um, I capped the SCU for this week. <clears throat> I haven't finished the dailies due to unlocking 35. So to pop in, I'm not dead. Yeah, not yet. Eventually. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, man. It would be nice when you kind of can get back, relax, and see you more often. So, uh, I hear the patrol! Damn, I heard the patrol late! Alright, so this is gonna be a time loss. We are losing time because of this. So what I will do is I will check that other chest that I did not look at yet and see if it's gonna help me right now. If it ends up becoming a Mimic, uh, it's a bit of a problem. Let me actually delete this Mata Mata first, and then we'll check the chest. Keeping an eye on the, the patrol right here. So this is a mistake. We made a big mistake here, but we'll see if we can pull it back. We should be able to pull it back. And honestly, that's where the strength is now going to be a big asset, because it'll keep the kill time, what, 40, 30% uh, higher? Okay, Witching... I'll use it right now. It's not really going to do much other than kind of keep the damage a little bit lower. But we'll take it to be able to move around. So what I will do with my movement right now is I will kind of park myself closer to the exit so that we can kind of step into the exit right now. Also, it serves two purposes. We're going to watch the Mata Mata that's here right now. And I'm going to observe him and see where his movement patterns are. I think one of the, one of the more uh, nicer things you can do in terms of saving time is already knowing when you're safe to move. So imagine this scenario, okay? You walk into a room, you go to the exit, enemy turns right into you. So that's another kill. We already have it, had it happen a couple times in this run. But if you already know that enemy had just moved, like it is moving right now, it gives you a little bit more of a safety net to understand that you can get to that exit sooner rather than later. So based on the current timing of our kill here, the Mata Mata will probably move at least one more time before I get to that exit. Now I'm gonna kind of risk it here to kind of get there, because I might be able to get past him before that happens. Which we will. Stepping in with 43 minutes, that's seven, that's 16 and a half minutes right now. Alright, good luck. Good luck, a teammate. So we lost some time, but it's okay. You gotta just keep playing. Keep making it up. Affluence. I'm gonna pull the monitor because it is completely blocking me. That is a Diplo that may not be in my way, we'll see. He is in a spot that is blocking the left side of that room, but I might be able to go the long way to get to get to it. With this monitor, I am going to check this room, because this is the spawn room, to see if this will be a forking room or not. It is a forking room. Um, And it looks like this might lead into a dead end, so I want to check this one first. There are vices here, which I do want to avoid. Checking. Alteration. I'm gonna use the alteration because even if it's Mimics or Corrigans, it's fine. Or rather, if it's Mimics, it's fine. Checking this room. We will observe this room to see if I can sneak this chest in before we go out of here. Me and my group of friends says R&D on 71 to 80. Ran into like seven to six to seven luring traps in our run, and it burned through most of our good proto banders on the upcoming floors. Oh no! <clears throat> you gotta you gotta lick those walls, man. Tell your team. To have the tongue on the wall. Don't get off the wall, and you'll avoid at least some of those traps. Some of them are like one step off the wall, not gonna lie. They're they're a little bit right off the wall. But you if you see my movement, um, if you're kind of observing how I'm going through the rooms, you'll see that I will at least mitigate the, the amount of traps we will step on, which is the good thing. You, you definitely don't want to hit traps, especially solo. It happens, but that's one way to get through them is going through the middle. Now, I didn't go through the middle here because this is the spawn room. But that's one way to avoid. Now these rooms in particular, these donut rooms, are very tricky because sometimes even if you're hugging the wall, there are stuff like either one step off the wall or literally right along the wall. So these can get you, but you want to definitely, you know, I, I, I'm okay doing this simply due to the fact that I don't have an enemy on me. So it's not that bad of a thing to try. Uh, Diplo's first. Alright, Dibble first because it is blocking a silver chest, which I will try to get to priority. Because it could be a demi clone. If it's a demi clone, I speed up. Fighting this tight hallway here. Yo, you got a biff tech. I'll start with the Alligan tomorrow. Actually, I was the Alligan all day last time. I'll start with the regular one. I can't see anything. Okay, I'm gonna check that chest top priority before we pull anything else. 
If there's an Une, I'm gonna pull the Doga out. That is a time save, and I'd rather have the time save. I'm gonna pull the monitor, and I'm gonna pop the chest. It is a sight, I'm gonna pop the sight. Okay. Alright, so now we're gonna be making up some time here, which is good. Other monitor aggro, but it's okay, it's not a big deal. I need to uphold the Dipple behind me. But this ended up being a nice floor to get us back on time. And this Shanks are still capped. We've been keeping our Shanks at 2, we picked up yet another one, we got the full duration of it. And that's one reason. If you're checking all the chests, there is a really good likelihood you're picking up more Shanks. Like, the Shanks are, are a much higher rate uh, of obtaining them. So you may as well keep them at a, at a, you know, at a decent number. You don't want to go into a room where you have two strengths and one of them just gets purely wasted when you could have used the strength on the previous floor and then re restocked on the next floor. And that will happen, I wouldn't say very commonly, but it can happen. Alright, we need more kills, so we need to go to the other room. That is a landmine. So... I'm not gonna pull the Drake, but I will pull the Monitor. We could do a landmine with the Monitor. Kind of. Well, not really. So I was gonna kinda hope that he, that Doga was going to get the Petrify and then I could step on the landmine, but it wasn't as clean as I was hoping for. I only have Drake's left though. Okay, we're out. I'm not gonna pull anything else, and we are going to the exit. So we are now 38 into 64. Now, Previous two sets, I was saying, check your check your 66th floor, the 6th floor. For over 30 minutes, decent on time. For under 30 minutes, we need to go a little bit faster. Now, we might get under 30 minutes, but we're all gonna, we also gotta take into consideration we are planning to demi-clone the boss. So the boss will probably take about 6 to 7 minutes. So we can kind of tighten up the time <clears throat> before we start getting a little crazy with our protomanders. So we're walking into 65 with about 38 right now. HP up, intuition. Moving now, going quick. I'm gonna pull the ninja priority because it is proximity and they get a little sneaky sometimes. And just take care of him immediately. Okay, I'm gonna now position myself a little bit closer to where we need to go. I think one thing that I have not mentioned up till now, it's kind of the way you kill things and your positioning. So if I kill that ninja all the way at the back side of the spawn room, then I'd have to go all the way from the back side and then walk through the hallway to get over to here. So if I'm already getting the kill shot when I need to go to the next room, I mean, that's a time save. But also, if you're doing that constantly, one way or the other, you either you lose a lot of time or you gain a lot of time. Whichever the kind of the way you want to look at it. Wait. Not doing the cult. We gotta wait for our HP for that one. Because that could explode and kill me, so I'm gonna wait for my HP here. 80%. I need to uh, I need to be above 70%. So I'm gonna wait till about 80. One more tick. Good. Yep. Yep. They wanted to kill me, that's for sure. That's why we wait. We're gonna wait. He might hit the wall. If enemies are in this type of room, they hit the wall, there's a good chance they will turn around. Something to keep in note if they're walking into a wall. You know, it, it allows you to kind of have a little bit more predictable movement with what the enemies are doing, so they're not kind of catching you off guard. My nose is itchy all from there. Moving through this room, even, even if I hit a trap, it's fine. I'm gonna use that safety right away. This is a Machinist. It's a Gunner class, it's a ranged physical class, um, Zakor. Okay, so, I'm gonna prioritize the chests, which it looks like it's clear to get to without a problem here. It is an Une, I'm gonna pop the Une now for the extra DPS. But I'm going to try to get myself to the exit because the key is like a brighter orange. We could be out of here in one or two kills, maybe more. But I don't want to work my way through here. And then all of a sudden my eggs is blocked. Yeah, no problem.
Leaving that witching there just in case of emergency. I will check this chest, which I don't remember what it is. Looks like the basilisk will give me problems, so I'm just gonna pull it now. No matter how I look at it, in the direction I'm facing, um, I would aggro that thing. Or I can wait for him, but it's a waste of time to do that. Okay, we are out. I will just gander at this room to see if I can get anything. The silver chest does me absolutely no good. I can't overwrite my demi clone. So to go for that silver chest is a complete waste of time. So we'll just go to the next floor as is. We are now stepping into 66 with 35 minutes. Miss Alchemy! Thanks for the 20 months! Oh, I guess our subs are up. Mine wasn't up earlier. Yeah, thanks for the resub. I appreciate it. How did, uh, how did the rest of Uwu go? Did you guys do good? I was able to watch up until you raided out to, to Zamoka. So I don't know how the rest of it went. So, oh, okay, okay, I gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Hope it was at least a good night, more or less. So, hey, Ponto. Good up, Ponto. <laughs> Sag indeed. Uh, you guys will get it, no problem. One of those days. It'll come when it's time. Also, Alchemy was on uh, Gamer <coughs> Gamer Escape, the Aetherite Radio dudes. We were on there for Deep Dungeon, and she was on there talking, uh, talking Endwalker vibes and how the Endwalker expansion has been over the time up till now. Did a good job on that one, on that podcast. Got it. Think of think a ton of us are trying to do Ubu tonight. Oh, nice. Okay, well, bless. Hope you guys will have fun. Uh, okay, that's a treasure room, so it's a little bit riskier there, so what I would want to do actually, we're gonna probably skip the treasure room and examine what's in the opposite direction. I may deal with the patrol first, but we shall see. Also staying a little bit away from this basilisk right now. Yeah, I'm gonna deal with the patrol. Okay. Taking him out because it'll just be a little bit logistically better than something walking around having to dodge it all the time. I'm gonna watch his uh, swipe here, but I'm moving away from it. I'm gonna keep an eye on the... Oh, I can go this way. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna fight with him on me. I'm gonna leave... Well, you know, he's not gonna do too much even if I hit a trap. It's okay. So we're navigating here to check the room while we're killing to save ourselves some time. There's a chest there I could get to, and I will probably fight through here. Arm is up. Watch the tail swipe after. Okay, keeping an eye on this area to see if these guys will move or not. All the perfected are facing away from the chest, that's good, but they're more than likely going to turn around by the time I kill this thing. Ow, stop killing me. Okay, let me look. Uh, okay, I'm safe. I can get this clean. Sight. Using it. Okay, so priority now is to check the silver. If it's a match site, a match site. If it's a demi clone, I'll probably work the treasure room. But I can't get to it right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, we're clean. It is. Okay, this is gonna be awkward. I'm gonna get kicked back. Mid animation. Yeah. We'll take care of these two. I guess we'll take care of these three. Ow! Oh boy, that hurts! I'm gonna trust an Une healing me right now. I don't think the treasure room's gonna happen. Is <laughs> any this is three kills right now? I don't think the treasure room's happening, but it's alright. We'll take care of these. No panic. Alright, one dead. <clears throat> if this was, like, if I didn't have Une here, honestly, if I had the Doga, this would be a witching immediately. But I was trusting in Une's heals to keep me up. Uh, so that's why that decision was made. 
any other situation would have been an instant, instant witching, probably a steal. I haven't really been using steel that much, and my value on steel, it's only really for certain situations. Like if we get a gloom floor and we're in trouble, if I get a double aggro and the enemies are much hot, I like you know on the higher floor, when you'll probably see me pop a steel. I'm probably not even gonna pop a steel on the boss, really. Um, you know that that's not really much of a priority for me either. So I'm using steel more to kind of help me through situations. It's like, it's like the way you look at it, it's almost it's kind of like your oh shit button kind of. Um, where in like the previous deep dungeons, people would do rage, people would do magicide, petrify, or oh shit. But you would hold on to that steel. That steel needs to be like, you know, you need to hold on to the steel for dear life, otherwise you can't fight anything. But in, in EO, the mentality is a little different. Steels are a lot less valuable to me than some of the other things. So I'll probably use it a lot more likely if things are going kind of bad or sell. And it'll definitely keep me up from the auto attacks. Alright, I don't want the Drake because of his spikes. Now, ninjas are here. Let's see if I can sneak a chest here. I could sneak this one. That's about it. Ooh, storms! Uh, I'm not gonna go crazy with the storms here. I'm gonna pull you. I'm gonna pull you. And I'm gonna pull you. Because I did survive the same exact pull. Now we're gonna storms here. Oh. Okay. Okay, a neat interaction right now is while enemies are below 80%, they will not aggro. So I can actually sneak a chest or two before things get a little bit weird. I'm gonna do this real fast before he picks up a couple more times. And we're good. So we're clear. Something to the real real niche situation type thing. We had we had a community member do that strictly because they wanted to get to the exit, so they popped the storms and then walked to the exit because they wouldn't aggro. So that's totally a strat. We kind of used it there just a little bit. These got me a free steal, so we're taking it. I didn't check the time, we'll check the time when we step into this board. Oh, the other mix of this song. Uh, 67, 28 minutes, we're good on time. We're actually pretty good, with the Demicone coming in for the boss. So we just gotta manage uh, the rest of this and move and check these chests. Strength, I'm using that right now. I will pull the Perfected, not the Phallic. The Phallic, I, it's like anti-kite, I, I can't run around with him. Because he will do a do a donut AoE when I get away from him, so I will I will deal with him later. Now what was that? Oh, it's a ninja. Okay, I saw the body of something. I didn't I didn't register what it actually was. The ninja will die next. Pulling quickly here, checking these rooms to see what we got. Uh, we have that. We have another ninja coming in. We're gonna move around this way. So this movement here, this is all with a purpose. This is this is on top of kiting. It's allowing me to see the rooms that are around me and to see what enemies we have moving towards my direction. Okay, that's the exit. So I'm gonna check this chest first to see if we can eliminate the mimic if there is one. And then start dealing with the room that we didn't check to. Okay, lethargy's gonna be good. I'll use it now. Ninja coming in this way, so I'll probably pull that right away as a priority. Here. He's gonna take forever to catch that because he's lethargy lethargic. Okay. Uh, I can't get past this room because the two enemies are in weird angles, so I'll have to wait and respect this first. And then we will pull one of them. Um I think what I'll pull is the chameleon toad. We'll deal with him. He's gonna do a pullback into the close range point blank. Oh, wait, except he's lethargy. Oh. Okay. Uh, moving through the room now. Tight around the walls. Good. Checking chests. The Thorgy came back, so that's another one. I would like to get that chest, so I'm gonna move around here. Let's check the last room first, and then probably pull the Basilisk. Check this first. That is a Doga. We're taking the Une out. And the, ba the Basilisk just moved away from it, so I'm gonna check the chest first. Oh no, he did. He turned back into it. Okay, Basilisk right now. Uh, 
best case scenario is the chest is something. The exit opens and the chest is something something we can use. Uh, alternative solution is that we need one more kill, but the chest is actually a mimic, and that's actually perfectly fine. We have a we've also logged in our memory that we had an enemy in the exit, which is the Anala. So we have another kill if we need another kill. Ah yes, we had the lovely uh, learning trap there. Now I am witching here because this is going to be a sick combination. They are also not lethargy, so I will lethargy them now because we do have one. Um, what could happen there is uh, I, I could get death blossom by the ninja because the toad will pull me into AoEs. So this was an immediate witching because of the combo that happened. And again, they were not lethargy because they are fresh spawns. Now, could I have lethargy? I probably could have lethargy to save the witching, but I kind of didn't remember I had the lethargy until after I witched. Getting rid of the toad was the higher priority there. We didn't need more than one kill though. Oh, we need a more than two kills, so that, you know, technically speaking this worked out, although it cost me a witching to make it happen. Also, if you notice, I once I hit the, uh, I think once I hit the trap, I didn't check that chest. Because if it compounded a mimic on top of all the enemies, it would have been very, very complicated, even with Rune. I can check it now. Oh, I did check it. It is a flight. Okay, I did actually check it. So, don't check the chest next time. <laughs> don't do what I just did. Because you could compound the issue with uh, four enemies instead of three. Alright. So, I did not safety or sight here. So, we need to make it through. Ideally, I want to walk through the, the paths that I did earlier. So, I walk through the left side of the room because that's where I walk through. Here, I don't really check this one, but I did check up to the chest. So, at least I know the chest is clear. And that was the lethargy. So I'm gonna pick it up. Alright. Retrace your steps, what they say. Six, uh, 23 to 68. Still good time. A little bit close to what we did in the last set. I've been going strong with the engage music. I love it. Another demi clone. And demi clones are high. That's why using a demi clone for the bosses, from, from even from the previous floor, up until all the way up is really not a bad idea because the frequency in which you use them is pretty high. And this is a typical average, I would say. Like this is like this I would say it's a little bit above average in terms of the amount I'm getting, but it's about expected. Like it's an expected result doing these doing these runs. But also keep in mind that, you know, we're taking advantage of getting to all the rooms. We're checking all the chests available. We're not skipping things. And that's where a lot of people gets caught up a little bit is that they'll open like half the room, half the floor, and they're gonna start dumping chests that they didn't get to or they didn't know existed. And you could be missing these 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 demi clones which are going to be speed ups, no matter how you look at it, you know, as long as it's free it's a speed up, no matter which one you pull. Uh we will not be strength. So here's what I'm gonna do. Because our strength is at two minutes, I'm gonna do like we did a little bit earlier. We will kill around the strength. So I'm gonna kill this one, I'm gonna kill the chameleon and then I'm going to kill the thing behind me as well. And then we pop the strength and start moving towards the exit. So kind of keep the movement efficient and the kill efficient a little bit. And this next. And the pill is fast. Like, we're not really, you know, deliberating on it. We want to pull right away. Especially because I had a lot of my stuff up and my, my automatic queen was up. Okay, I already have my pull, which is going to be the phallic over here. Pulling him now. Oh, the exit's open. Oh, I didn't realize the exit's open. This was flighted. Okay, that's fine. I had extra kills, okay. Got a little excited there. So I over- I over planned for that one. But it's okay, our time is still very solid. Okay, picking up the fresh strength and then moving to the exit. Now from here, we do want to make sure we, we try to get to the exit without aggro or traps. So we're gonna hug the walls tight and we're gonna try to avoid things. Now this ninja should not come this way because there's no reason to. So he should go to his right, which he does. In his proximity so I gotta wait for him to get out of here. Yep. Perfected his sight, we can get around him so that's fine. Moving to the west side. Alright, checking what we got. I, there's no purpose, I'm gonna check it anyway but there's no real purpose in doing that. I can't do anything with that unless I die. Okay, 
Still more rooms. Another silver I can't check. I will check the last room in case it is something. I'm still missing the dread, I could use another raisin. That is a silver. Get the reveal and off we go. I might aggro the chameleon, but it's okay, I can kill him real fast if I need to. Oh god! Whoops. <laughs> Forgot about that. It's delayed. It's okay. Oops. I mean, no harm, no foul, nothing happened. Alright, this is a nasty floor. However, we have the time to kill. It's 19 minutes. So even- oh, well, also get a Serenity. That also works. That- do that. Just pick up a Serenity, forehead. Um... Perfected is is blocking me. Might need to pop the phallic. So we have two enemies on the left and right side, and then we have an enemy in the pathing straight ahead. It would be inefficient to pull both of them. Find me back from the Philippines. We hey. are animate animate. Oh, welcome back to the house of Philippines. Like technically home to me. We had a good time, Piagas. Oh, hi, Ninja. Holy moly! I thought that was the uh, Automata Queen. I didn't know the Automata Queen did a Sakuchi. Wait a minute. Thanks for the eight. Thanks for the sixteen months of support. I appreciate that. Yeah, just pick up certainly. Put it down on the notebook. So yeah, like that room had a left, had a had an enemy on the left, enemy on the right, and an enemy in the center. Completely inefficient to to pull the things on the side. You only need to go down one path. You don't need to go down both paths. And typically, they're going to be staying on their respective side. So it'll cost you two kills to get through to the next room. No problem. Now the phallic is actually facing backwards. Now what we'll do here is we will go past them. If I aggro, no problem. Like a good risk to take. It's like aggro, fine, I'll kill it. No aggro, even better solution. So we pulled it. I will fight it. Keeping an eye on its AoE, I don't want to go too far. Alright, that's as best as we're gonna go. I'm gonna fight him right here. Keeping an eye on my back as well. We cannot move away from this thing, otherwise it will do the donut. And I, if I'm way too far, I actually don't even get back in time. I got that. Enjoy it, I got that. Give me a second. This thing does hit, like, pretty hard without the kiting. Okay, so I have nothing to do with the south room, so I'm gonna move to the east. The west. Ten times hotter than Hawaii. Lots of flies, really good views. Um, and what about the food? How's the food? Is the food still good? <laughs> Is the food still good? Of course it's good. Uh, okay, there's a ninja. I'm gonna lethargy here. There's the exit. We found the exit. So I'm gonna check the other rooms first. There's a handful of ninjas here. Alright, so I'm gonna pull the ninja right now. Because I cannot get this chest right now. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait for him to move and then we'll check the chest. Okay, moved away. I'm checking the chest right now. Security. Nothing. Okay. Oh, hello. Um, perfected it is. I'm gonna gander at the chat, the the room here, since I'm just fighting this thing. I'm gonna get damage boosted there. What do we got? Okay, clean exit. If the exit opens, no, we still have time. I have a lot of time. I'm going to Doga the boss. So we only need about six, seven, eight minutes on the boss anyway. So I have some time to check more chests. Alright, the phallic moves. Moving through with this guy with me. Boggers. Food is all is in fact still good. Yum. Good to hear it. Ah, uh, the phallic. Uh so okay, priority here is the ninja. Because the ninja's proximity I can't get past anyway. So we're gonna pull the ninja. I still wanna make my way to that final room. So even if the exit opens, we will try to do it. Uh, but what do I pull? Is the question. I think, um, we do deal with the phallic. I can pull either. Honestly, this is a personal preference. If you want to deal with the frog more than the phallic, be my guest. 
It doesn't seem like the frog will be a problem coming back. He is kind of close to the exit. Mm, you know, I might actually pull him instead. Because the, the phallic here, he's on the wall. He's on the side wall. He won't be getting to either paths anytime soon. Also chest. Check the chest first. Got the raising back, Pog. So we'll do the, uh, we'll do the frog. And then I don't have to deal with the phallic here. Checking the last room. Nothing. Time check, 14 minutes. So if I were not to use a Demi-Clone, I would still have time on this boss. We didn't really use too much. I think I had one storage, which I used a minimal amount of. We used a lot of strengths here. We used a handful of flights. We did get quite a bit of flights here. No dreads, a lot of Demi-Clones. So those were the ones that helped me get through this floor pretty cleanly. Um, but, again, also I would say kill speed is probably the bigger the bigger reasoning as to why we're able to get through here pretty pretty well. So. Alright, so this will be a Doga. Go. Gonna keep the potion rolling. Addition. Gonna watch for the gap closer. It's a lot less obvious than the one from the Chimera. Looking for his animation, it's in. Yeah. Shank is about to drop, but that's okay, we have Doga. I think we entered here with about 14, so I'd be doing a time check on the boss amount of kills. Or rather, the kill time. And that's what you want to look for. I'll check that in a second. <clears throat> we are in. Do we two minutes left? Oh, thank you. I think I will weave it in. I will do that. I actually forgot I was supposed to weave it in early, but I forgot. Food is- I would say food is not, like, a tremendously essential thing to have on. You can definitely get away without food. That's not the button I want. Um... I mean, I mean, I think most of you, if you do raiding, you're probably sitting on food. Um, especially if you're taking in your main job, so you may as well just use it. Looking for the animation here. <clears throat> that is out. Even for the extra HP, it's really good. Alright. My rotation's not really good, but it's okay. When I hear about rotation. Okay, last one's over here. I am in again. Looks like the sacred piece I'm still trying to get rid of. Yeah, I was I, I had that for a while. I just decided to do I mean yeah, I mean any food you have, it's not a bad idea. You don't have to go tip top BIS food here. You know, just a little bit will help. Need a good angle. We are in. Hey, my follow alerts work. Okay, what we got this time, Mr. Cat? 
We are out. Gonna get a in between the two and away. Right here, be good. Thanks for that follow, I appreciate that. Salt, I appreciate that. Alright, 27%. We started this fight at 14, so we're probably looking at a 5 or 6 minute fight right now. Which is perfectly fine. Going away. I'm away here. Going here. It is in again. Yeah, it's about a. Um, this is about a five minute fight with Doga. A little bit shy. There you go. So that is 70 with nine about about it was like nine and a half minutes left on the clock, nine minutes on the clock. Palms are still fully intact, no issues there. Down the demi clone, but that's on purpose. Down the witching, but that was a mistake. So that was one mistake. We did make a bit of a mistake on the early bits of the floor because we over pulled. But what's it? It's a lot of it's a lot of strengths that we used to get through. So palms are fully intact, no stress on that set at all. When the hard way the bar takes like over 10 plus minutes on yeah <laughs> yeah that's why i do i like to demi clone from typically 70 up um i i usually will demi clone from 60 up and i probably will do that on a normal run just because that boss doing it more doing it constantly sometimes i'll lose focus like the moment i lose track if it's alternating or if it's like the same pattern i might get into big trouble, so the faster I get rid of that fight. But not to mention, the drop rate of demi clones are so high, there's just a big likelihood you're picking it back up, assuming you're checking all the chests and everything, so it's not really that big of a deal, unlike compared to Heaven on High, where using a Magicite is like a big deal, you know? Like, you want to make sure you use that to the, to the most efficient, time efficient, chest efficient, whatever it is, but here it's a lot different. Um, so that's why you just see me using it a lot more often. Um, hey Atka, how you doing? Happy Sunday, welcome in. Um, so I'll take a rest- I'll take a restroom break here, an ad break here, so that we can keep the ads, uh, off the stream. So I appreciate you guys watching, we're gonna step right into 71 in a bit, and that, I- I think I would say this is probably the most crucial floor, when we're talking about managing time and managing the protomanders. Um, this can get a little spicy, but typically I'm- I'm pretty good here. It's really this floor and the next floor that will dictate to 91, and- we were just talking about Heaven on High. Heaven on High, a lot of the veterans currently have the strategy of Heaven on High down to like Master 71, get really good through 81, and then you step into 91 with like full protomanders. Um, so then 91 kind of becomes a victory lap. And I would say most of my runs, if not all of them, have kind of ended up that way, where I'm not really struggling through 91 at all, and we're just breezing through it because our protomanders are so good. Now, the reason why we're doing a video like this is because that is not the case for lots of other people. They might, you might, you guys might be checking like the videos that I have and understanding how to deal with enemies, understanding how to deal with bosses, but they may not be necessarily understanding how to manage your actual power ups because I really don't talk about that on the video. I just talk about making sure you survive, which, which of course is one of the more important things because I mean, you can have all of the strategies in the world, but if you don't know what things are doing, they're going to kill you. And that's why that video exists. So this hopefully will turn into just another run for me where we just get the same result. In like how many how many videos have I posted now? We've cleared 12 times, so I think we've posted close to maybe about 15 different videos. No, no, it would be 12. No, we've posted about 11 videos. Well, a little bit more because I've had a couple fails. We DC'd on Paladin, we 
died on 90 and Paladin, and um, but all the other ones have been clear. So we have about 11, 12 ish, 13 ish videos, and they all result the same where the the proto manders are just tip top shape by the time you get the last 10. So hopefully, we'll be able to repeat that process and we'll definitely go over why I'm making decisions, especially on this set and especially on 81, where that one tends to challenge me on time. Now, before I go, I have two Onion Knights and one, I think, oh, we just have two Onion Knights. I do try to keep those Onion Knights for the last two bosses. So the first Onion Knight I get, already planned for 99. If I get a second one, that's planned for 90. And that third slot is the one that always interchanges. Now, Onion Knights are not, some people have gone through and not seen one. I, maybe I'm lucky, I don't know, but every time I've run through this content, I always have at least one Onion Knight. So keep in mind, we are checking all the chests, all the rooms. That can be a reason why I'm seeing an Onion Knight, and maybe some of you guys are not, so keep that in mind. Okay, now we'll take the break. So guys, thank you for watching. I'll get some background music in too, and also we've been doing this announcement all week, and I'll probably be making this announcement until um, the, the patch comes in, because once the patch comes in, I will close this off. But we have our merchandise store, which I just released this week, which is Deep Dungeon related, Pals of the Dead, Heaven on High, shirts related to that if you've cleared, but even if you haven't cleared and you like the design, it comes, it goes and supports the stream, so definitely check it out. And also, if you haven't filled it out, uh, we have the survey of what you think about Yubika Orthos. Our buddy, uh, when I was listening in on the Gamer Escape Aetheride radio, when they were talking about Endwalker and stuff, uh, our buddy Alchemy did a lot of discussion on Deep Dungeon and kind of like did, did like a partial representation of the community. That was, that was a really cool discussion and pretty spot on with uh, what we what everyone was thinking about. But if you want to put it down on paper and uh, have your responses and you haven't filled that out, that's it. I also posted this on Reddit, but I actually did a different form. It's the same exact questions, but on a separate version of it. And I kind of want to compare it. I hope there's a lot of responses on the Reddit version. But so far on this one, let me just check right now before I take the break. We are at 442 responses for that one. Oh, you did a, you did a great job, Alc. <laughs> it was fun to watch. What's the club? So whenever anyone clears John Wick, I always say, welcome to the club. That's that's my kind of phrase to the people. You know, I, I think I, I kind of consider the, the Necromancer, Lone Hero, even now the Once and Future Queen or King, as like a club. It's like a nice club, you know? Uh, so I always say, welcome to the club. So that's what it's related to. So the shirts are like, the club. That's the club. Um, and that's what it, that's what it references, uh, if that makes sense. I promise not to wear it until I get my clear. Hey, you know, Shadow, you do your thing, man. Uh, you know, I don't have to see you when I wake up, so... <laughs> hey, you did you get your clear yet? Yeah, that'll be me. But I also say on the shirt, you don't have to clear. I mean, you know, I, 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 made, that, I made that very specific. You don't have to clear. Anyway. Music. Good song. Three minutes, I'll be back. Hit the restroom. Stand up and stretch. BRB. Yeah, I saw the... Actually, as I was standing up, I saw the people log in. Did they go? Did they go in or did they leave? I heard um, stage casting. All right, let's leave food up. Get the food going. Feel the music. All right, seventy-one. So, as I can, I think an intro to this floor. We will do exactly what we've been doing on the previous floors. We'll move quickly. We'll check the rooms. We'll check all the chests. Uh, you're gonna see me probably open with a strength and 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 uh, raising here. Um, you'll probably see me use a lot more flights and probably a lot more demi clones just to keep the demi clones sitting at two because of the higher frequency. Um, so if we get a bad debuff, I probably use a demi clone over a serenity. That's probably what you might see on this floor. We're gonna definitely hold on to our dreads and our storms as much as possible. <clears throat> I'll probably use a dread as an emergency on the last floor if time is getting very spicy. But we will not really use it as like a floor wipe or anything uh, in in this set, like in between, like before sixty nine essentially. So, or seventy nine, seventy nine. The the food, that's the food I sell. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this one, the melon pie. I like it. Direct hit that. Okay, let's see how we manage this one, shall we, guys? Let's go. Opening raising immediately. We are in a dead rend. Okay, game said use the raising. Cool. Pulling the elephant today. 
We're gonna keep everything as quick as possible. Every second counts, man. Every second counts. I will have to pull the uh, pony because the pony looks to be in my way to get to the exit. To get to well, he's facing the wall though, so maybe I can get around him. But I think I'll just pull it, make my life a little bit easier. Okay, pull it in now. I'm gonna get the knockbacks here, so I'll probably go up against the wall. Ow. Ow. I guess I'll go ahead and spawn in. Now I do not want to move through the donut room. Oh god. Uh, more so now because I have a cat here. I don't want to move through the donut room because of the higher possibility of stepping on the trap. So I'm waiting to kill this off and then go through the room without anything on me. That is the ideal situation I would put myself in. I might pull the cat next because it is a patrol. And I just got my Tom the Queen on. Okay. I'm gonna focus the cat. I can't really kite this away too much because he just spams Wide Blaster. So I just have to make sure I watch my back in case another patrol comes in. <clears throat> Moving a little bit, I have a little bit of time before he does the next one. Okay, now we move through the room, and if we step on a trap, it's not bad. The exit is also here. Where is it? Okay, I see it. It's back there. All right. Checking chest. Got the Onion Knight. Shocker. We got a Demiclone. And that's why they're freak, and that's why we'll probably use it a lot more than the other the other protomanders that we have. Got the Witching back. I'm gonna pull something right now, which is the Tokutoku. We're still at a light blue key, so more than likely I'll need at least two more. Potentially. But I can drag this around really well, and I can see if I can navigate to the next floor, or next room rather. The Unicorn just blocked me, so I can't go to that room. So I will kind of kill this first, and then we'll probably pull the Unicorn if it doesn't move by the time I kill this thing. <clears throat> oh, he just also moved that way. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the Unicorn. I'm gonna go through first, pull him delayed. There's a cat coming. So I'm actually gonna go this way. Nope, negative. Going this way. Gonna arm's length here to avoid the knockback. I'm gonna reposition myself so the cat can go past me. I'm gonna watch the AoE as well, which is going to be the Innocence thing. That one. Waiting for that cat to go past me. Where is it? There it is. Alright, now we can go. Alright, checking the room again. That was the original plan, but we got distracted. Checking this chest to see if it's a demi. It is not. Alright, uh, let's pull the Tokutoku and then we'll drag it all the way to the exit. If I need more kills, I'll work the exit. Because this way, I am pulling and fighting something while moving around. Okay, I'm gonna hold. And that, that there is, is definitely time efficient to do that instead of walking all the way to the exit and then pulling something. We pull a rather easy enemy and get the damage out before we even get, get back to the exit. Are you kidding me? Okay. Line is sighting me. Uh, Elephant. Staying a little close so I can run back when it dashes in. Hmm. I'm pretty sure the cat went to my right. Almost certain. Yep, I did. Still need a kill. I'm gonna pull the cat. We're gonna kinda cheat towards the exit, but we're gonna wait for White Blast to go off. Okay, then we're gonna cheat a little bit towards the exit. So I can get there sooner rather than later, but there should be enough time to pull here. Holding. Waiting for White Blaster, getting a potion back up. If I need one more kill, then we'll go to the room that is to the south of me right now. Hopefully I don't. Ok, 
Okay, we're good. Next floor, just going in straight. No uh, protomanders for that next floor. That took six, uh, five and a half minutes. So about average, based on the previous floors we've been going for. It's going to go slower, but that wasn't bad overall. HP down, not a big deal. Checking chests, switching. Ninja priority because it's it's a proximity enemy, and it could give me a problem moving in. Checking behind me to see if anything's there. That's a negative. <clears throat> okay. Oh, hello. Oh, there happens to be a demi clone here as well. I mean, I'm a, a dread beast. Uh, doing the Serenity to get rid of the HP down. We don't need to deal with that Dread Beast, so we are just gonna go away from it. Cat. I'll pull the cat. Wait, why blast him? I forgot that happened so fast. I was just saying that, but it does happen fast. I'm gonna hold on to that witching for kind of emergency if something bad aggro's. Uh, we have the rehab bear. Hold on, let me pull the elephant. Moving away. Moving along, we're gonna check the room while fire. Never mind, cancel that. Cancel that plan. There's a cat coming, so I cannot move to the next room. So we're gonna fight here. I will pull the cat next. Cat coming in. Gotta stay close because of the Y blaster. There it is. Oh, Tail Swing. Forgot about that. He does it if you go behind. But I was in motion, so that's okay. Kinda not a bad thing to use it to mitigate damage, honestly. Okay, checking the other rooms. I might be one to three more kills out of here. The key is now orange. Checking the chest. Even if I get aggro, it's okay. okay. Got another raising, so I'm gonna pull this back. I will take this with me. We'll, we'll leash it to the next room. Should be okay from traps here. Okay, I cannot go past this unicorn, because he is looking right at me. So I need to wait for movement, but I also do not want to go through that, that donut room uh, with an enemy on me. That is... A little bit too risky, especially if I hit any any type of trap. And it is a donut room, so traps are a lot tougher to handle, as we mentioned before. Okay, the unicorn did move, so I will kind of cheat in this direction. I should kill this before the unicorn moves again, and I can check the chest. Okay. Checking the chest and then clearing up the exit. That's our order. Got the strength back. So I will probably use it right before the pull. Using it now. Gonna take care of the elephant who's on top of the exit. That is a priority. If I need another kill, then we just do the uh, the rehab bear. Instead of the unicorn. Because the bear is in the exit room, so I may as well clear him up. He doesn't- he- I don't think the bear's gonna give me too much of a problem in terms of his position. Okay, it doesn't really matter. I mean, he could, but it's okay. Going to the next floor as is, with the strength still at 2, because we just used one. Hmm. That's a buff. <clears throat> what kind of buff? Hasting the loom, okay. So this is kind of balance it out a little bit. I'm gonna pull the elephant, because if you just saw it, so that elephant was looking right at the exit. There's just a strong possibility he will be uh, around the exit the entire time. So he's just an instant choice <coughs> to make the exit a lot more clear to do with. 
Now, there is a possibility I will steal on this floor. We shall see. If I end up with two enemies, I'm gonna keep a steal as a play for survival. Because it's going to be a little tight in terms of my HP as of right now. If you're looking, my HP is just not getting past a certain point. So if I end up having two enemies on me, we definitely want to uh, respect content and steal. Okay, I have quite a bit of burst up, so I might pull the bear first right now. We do have a ninja coming as well, so I need to watch out for that. But I wanted to get the burst out here. Ninja coming in, I'm pulling it right now. Tactician to mitigate some of that damage. Gonna run back into that open area to see if there happens to be another patrol coming in so I can have a little bit of a heads up. I don't see anything there, I don't see anything there. Okay, so we're good. We'll just keep fighting this thing. I do not want to proceed past this room right now since it is a bit of a higher risk to step on a trap. Um. We will deal with this ninja, and if I hit a landmine with a ninja on me, we're just basically dead, so I would prefer not to do that. Um, so that's why we're respecting this one right now. I think it was a mistake to pull up the automata, but it's alright. So I don't have another pull in the bank right now. Alright, Unicorn. Um, that's facing in a direction that will 100% aggro if I go into that room. Toku Toku. Okay, let's pull the Unicorn. To open up the room to my left. I need to watch my angle here for the knockback. Can I arm slank? Nope, I actually cannot arm slank. So while I have this, I'm gonna see if I can get across the move here. Oh my god, angles. Okay, the Toku just moved, so I'm gonna actually make my make my movement through this room while I'm still fighting this unicorn. I'm okay with that. Toku blocking the chest to my right. So I'm gonna focus on this one, kill this first. We probably pull the Toku Toku next out. Okay. I'm gonna give him a chance. I'm gonna walk past him. He might move before I even get there, but he does not. So I will just aggro him but not check the chest. Otherwise I could combo a mimic into that one. Okay, so now here, I actually want to make my way to the chest because I think I'll be okay in terms of like the traps here. And I'll try to pop that chest, see if it explodes. I gotta be careful here though. No, it's an onion knife instead. I'm gonna pop the onion knife. Animation lock, love it. Okay, we're fine. Okay, onion knife is good to go. I didn't really need him, but you know what? He's gonna help me at least get, get to the other stuff. I can check the other rooms right now. Steel, that is very good. Alright, we're just riding this. We're at 14 minutes right now through the first three. Probably about be uh, about 15 minutes total. This Toku is gonna aggro, so I'll fight it. Because <coughs> we'll just shred it with Onion Knight. Okay, I'm gonna check only the room to the south here. I will not check the other room because that Toku is too close and he's gonna have, have to deal with that. All right, so we're out of here. We're taking the time. I will pass that. On. I'll pass on that final room. So in that instance, it would cost me a kill to get over there, and we've already done an extra kill, so we'll be fine. Even if I, even with Onion Knight, Ziggy, thanks for the 22. I appreciate that. Thank you for the continued support. I hope you're doing well. Happy, uh, happy Sunday. Alright, let's see what this next floor is. It is sprints. That's good for movements. Let's see where we want to go. Cocaine bear. I mean, I'm sorry, rehab bear. Wolf is facing down. That's a flight, so that's a speed up. Cuts the amount of, uh, the amount of enemies we need in half. Two Thunder Beasts. I am pulling a Gulu Gulu right here. Hoping the Thunder Beasts don't give me a problem. Those are enemies I prefer not to fight. They are just very mechanically tricky. 
Not too bad. I mean, if you're kind of really focused in, but... So even though I'd say, hey, pull the patrols, get rid of the patrols, so those are one enemies that I would prefer not to pull, and let them live their lives up in, up in here. Check the chests. Witching. Alright. I will pull the wolf. The reason why I'll pull the wolf... First of all, it's not a dangerous enemy, but second of all, I need to kill time to get these Thunder Beasts to do its thing. So I may as well fight something while I'm waiting for them to walk out of here. If I need to pull a Thunder Beast, I will. But I just, again, I would prefer not to. Gonna pull the Unicorn behind these beasts. Okay, the room splits into two areas, so we'll see which way they go. I'm gonna get knocked back here, so I'm actually gonna arm slank, so I can kind of see where I'm going here. They are splitting their location. Alright. I'll follow this one. Okay, not a dead end. Yo, what up, Zamoka? How you doing, man? Hope your day was good. There's another Thunder Beast and a cat coming in. Alright, so I'm actually gonna go this way to avoid both of those patrols and then try to check the chest. I don't want to wait here. Uh, if the distance seems a little bit long... Okay, I can wait. Uh, if they still had a while to go... What the hell? Oh, well, I guess I'm gonna fight them. If they still had a while to go, I was gonna wait and then check the chest, but they kind of changed their mind, so... Hanging in there, debating just pulling an all-nighter POTD. Well, Darabon knows about all-nighters and POTD, so you have uh, someone to share the experience with. Gonna sneak this chest right now while I have the chance. It is another steal. I'll pick that up later. Um, I think I'll pull the wolf next because he is kind of blocking my way to that room. Pulling the wolf right now? 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 How about now? Okay, cool. You're gonna fight here? I'm not well... Yeah, we can try to proceed here. This might be a little risky. Okay, we're good. Checking the chest, because I do have steel on. That is another flight. We need it right now, in the middle of fighting. And I have an opportunity to pick it up, and we are done with that room. Oh, that is the exit room! Okay, okay, okay. Um... So... I will try to clear up that room because it looks a little tight. Um, in terms of where the enemies are currently parked. We don't want to kill past the exit, that is the whole plan there. So, it looks like I should pull... the back one first. And then we'll work our way in. You gotta do- wait, I'm gonna wait- I'm gonna let Rehab Bear do its thing. Okay. There's a Thunder Beast incoming, and I am late to the party. So now I have to maneuver myself to avoid it, so this will be a lot of fun. It's okay, I can deal with two Rehab Bears. But not a Thunder Beast. If I see a Thunder Beast, I am going to have to... Witching. Respect, respect, respect. Okay, I'm gonna pull him back. Because I do have a safe spot in the donut room. Which is over here, because I already walked here. Okay, we are out, but I still gotta wait. That's okay. Technically speaking, this wasn't really a time loss per se, because I still have to wait for that cat to get out of here. Or whatever that is, a dog. Okay. He was going illegal pathing. The right side, we have thinned down the exit by one kill. Gonna steal here. And then we'll see if we can get through, no problem. I will not check the room to my east because we are already. the exit's already open. This is a floor that's going to kind of push us on time, so we don't really have that much of a luxury, plus we're not really down stuff. We've been keeping this going pretty well. 
So I can skip that room. This is where we're starting to skip some room. But I'm spreading my I'm spreading myself as far as I can through the floor so I can get to as many rooms as possible before that exit opens. That's what's important. Because it would really suck if he's focused on one room, kill everything, open the exit, and then you start navigating. Like that's that's not good. So because it's a flighted floor, it is more paramount to get the chest rather than the kills and to drag something with you. Because you could overkill here very easily. It isn't necessary to kill as much. Strength came in. I can get behind this bird. Uh, I once happily kited these cats around the donut room to the side of the casting spark on the other side. <laughs> yeah, they, they get a little smart. <laughs> He's smart for their own good. Um, I will pull the hippo right now. I will also re-strength right now and keep the strength at 3. This will kind of mitigate the gloom debuff, as well as keep my damage rolling and keep me from using other things that I would prefer not to use. I need a line of sight for this bird, and I have one, I planned it out. We are doing it here and swinging around in front of me, and my current angle with my camera. So I need to line of sight Winds of Winter. You can stun this, but I do not have a stun. So. We can also just kill it in time, but you know, that's not really expected. Okay. You got the silver chests, and what are you, pray tell? That's what you are. Oh. And by the way, this is why this is extremely important, okay? There is no enemies in this room. I just killed something. I did not travel through this room with something on me. So this seems annoying, but I am not in threat of dying. So it's just whatever. It's a time waster, but I'm not dying. And that's why all those factors are important. Nothing coming at me. No enemies in the room. I killed it. And then we proceeded through the room. I think that's what kills a lot of people right here is that they're moving through the room, they have an enemy on them, or the aggro while they're doing it, and then boom, they hit a they hit a trap at the same time, and then it causes a, a snowball effect. That's what you have you have to keep the the risk as low as possible. It's still a risk, but you're lowering the possibility of something bad happening. Are we step on learning traps in the circle room? Yeah. Um I mean, Loin Traps are high, Landmines are high. I, I'm actually a little surprised it was a, a Transformation Trap. I, I don't see those, see those very often in, in these higher floors, but we got a little lucky there. But um, yeah, these Donut Rooms are very spicy, and I haven't really moved through them at all with an enemy on me. I respected them, killed them, and then moved later. Avoiding the Thunder Beast. I prefer not to fight it. We do need a line of sight for this bird. I need to be careful about that one. I cannot use the room I was using earlier, so I guess we'll go over here. So I can hang around the corner. Let me go more this way. Here, over here, over here. Oh, we have this one, this one, this one. Over here, over here. I'm late. Oh boy! Ah! Okay, we're good. I think it's fine. A little indecisiveness, but we're okay. What's that Thunder Beast? So I, I have NA ping, I will avoid that every single time. Alright, Thunder Beast it is. Alright, so you're gonna watch for him, he's gonna crouch down. That's when you know he's gonna do his donut crap. I mean, not his donut crap, his uh, point blank. And uh, there it is, he's down. I'm gonna stay mid range so he doesn't do spark. Going back in. Again, the reason I just don't like this fight is because you have to watch him. There's no casting, there's no telegraph. You have to watch him. This is like this is like the the true anti-chat enemy. You cannot look at chat when you're fighting this thing at all. He's down. Yeah. A new voice for it's like two or three. That's about the amount of autos, but still, like sometimes if you're kiting, it throws it off a little bit too. So I, I just all I care about is just that 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 animation that he does. All right, so we're walking in. This is the key floor, right? What's my thing? Are we over or under thirty minutes here? We are over thirty minutes here. We are six minutes over, so we're looking pretty good on time. Bird. 
Now, this is a bit of a risky floor for me to try to do with no items. So we'll see how we do. I still have the strength on, but I've had issues with no items here on uh, on Machina, so we'll try it. Definitely gonna try to make sure my HP is capped before I do a pull. Respecting it so I can get that line of sight just in case I don't kill it in time. This is the floor with apes, by the way. It is 76. So I will need to, like, kind of like, peek around the corners to make sure we don't run into a freaking uh, freaking ape. We have to be very careful about that. I'm clearing up this room because my steel is limited. Okay, check around the- oh, yeah, oh, this one. I'm gonna pull him right now. Uh, there is not another one I currently see. Man, he was like blending in the background too. And the, the chance of me using the Serenity is still a little bit up there. We'll just see how we do currently. And with the strength it is helping, but I don't have that forever either. That's four kills, I believe. Uh, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna check the- I'm gonna get the reveal here. I'm pretty much just trying to look for the exit right now. Because I really can't pick up much of anything. Okay, I'm watching for the ape just in case there is one. I'm dragging this with me. Found the exit. Found a silver chest. Is this bird going to give me a problem? That is a negative. I'm going to work to the room, but I cannot check that silver chest until I have killed this enemy. I'm too low of an HP to do that check. Is there a bird here? I mean, is there... Uh, oh, it's oh, it's open. Okay, that's even better. Not even going to bother checking the other room. I'm going to go to the exit. Check this first. Oh. Uh, there's a chance that bird will move before I get fully around. Yeah, he did. Alright, so that's a really good floor. We're out of here into 31 minutes. So we've only basically used strength and like a flight and like I think one demi clone. Um, but we're keeping the pulls very quick here. That's what's more important. Nothing special here. Mimic. We have a donut room, so that's a good room. Also gonna check this room real fast to see if I see an ape, so I can see if I have an opening here. Checking, 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 checking. No ape. Okay, we're clear. I'm probably gonna re-up the strength again. Might be the last strength I use for the floor. I will say so far, our time has been aided by the fact we've been keeping our pulls extremely efficient here. We haven't really pulled past the exit as much. We've been kind of getting to the exit sooner rather than later. I'm gonna do with the strength now. A lot of that is kind of adding into the fact we are going pretty swiftly here. Didn't use storms, didn't use dreads. Not yet, anyway. Pulling the ninja- actually, uh, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna pull the ninja first. <clears throat> now, the reason why is because first the ninja's here. Second, my, my interrupt is at 15 seconds, or was at 15 seconds. So if I popped the Mimic, I would get the box because it wasn't ready yet. Oh shit. Well, there's also that. Can't bind you, apparently. I can't wait a ninja? Since when? That's a joke. Alright, at least we have the donut room. It's fine. Not a big deal. 
Donut room save lives, unless there's traps in him. There's yet another ninja coming in. Run around in a circle, this is Machina's specialty. And even though this got a little bit spicy, we're still keeping the kill count moving. We are planning to have roughly about 5 to 7 minutes on the boss with a Demi. It is tempting to try to keep an Onion Knight for that, but... I don't want to, like, skip on a demi clone I could use to get off a floor, just because I want to keep an Onion Knight for the boss, you know? And that is the point proven right there. If I had popped that chest immediately, I would not have my my head graze ready, and I might have to even deal with a ninja. So that delay was very important, because it helped me right now. So you take those safety measures. Again, we were talking about this a little early on stream. You're not hoping for good luck. You're trying to mitigate the bad luck. So that- this is bad luck, but it's not as bad as it could have been. And definitely not as bad as it could have been, because I'm still trying to open up the exit, so it's really not that bad. If this was after the exit opened, that's bad. That's annoying. But it's not at the moment. Now, how's my interrupt? Okay, it doesn't matter, it's a blue chest. I don't even care, because it's only mimics come from gold chests anyway. I'm bypassing all these enemies, except this lion. He's gonna aggro like 10,000%. Alright, uh... Okay, there's a dread beast here. That I didn't see till now. Uh, I am going to bring myself a little bit to this room first, so I can see what's going on over here. I can also see what this room is going to be. Okay, the exit is going to be further that way. Might be a 5 rumor, we'll see. <clears throat> now, uh, we were kind of mentioning this a little bit. Uh, you were mentioning this. We can use the patrols to get a feel on how big the floor is. So that ninja, that ninja is going into that room. If that ninja comes back right away, it's a small room. That means that is a dead end and it turned around. If it keeps going and doesn't come back anytime soon, that means it is a bigger room. It's It forced or something. Um, I did not pay attention to this Dread Beast, so I don't know if it just moved. Uh, so I will wait for movement on the Dread Beast. Uh, I will also chill, because like I said, we might be, uh, we might be out of here very soon. That ninja came right back, so that means we are in a small floor. It's only a 5 room, because it's a dead end. It walked, it walked backwards. And that's important knowledge right there to have. Um, I mean, it helps, you know. I'm gonna get an angle here, so I can avoid the Sasquatch. I'm also going to keep an eye on the Sasquatch. I'm going to focus on him so I can duck behind if I need to. Because I'm a little close to this Dread Beast and I need a little bit of kiting power. Once I see uh, Ripe Banana go out, I am hiding on the wall. Yeah, I saw this ape actually from the previous room. Um, but the ninja was a priority. Okay, Ripe Banana is going out, so we are staying in LOS right here. Okay, we are clear. Um, I checked that chest, right? It was a raisin. Okay. Ape is sight, so we're clear. To, I'm gonna check the chest. Even if it's a mimic, it's fine. I'd rather get the power up than not. Which okay, we're out of here. Into 78. Time is pretty good. 26 minutes. We've done nothing but kill and strength. That's it. That's all we've done. And like, uh, would I say one flight, one demi? Nothing crazy here. Didn't even do landmine plays, which usually we do on tanks. Nothing crazy. Now this floor is a little bit spicy because of the blind, so... I gotta dread out of here. Um... Um... Because we are so on head on time, I will just fight this normally. There was an ape over there, so I see that. So, if we were a little bit less on time, let's say we walked in here with 19 minutes, okay? I would absolutely serenity this. And hang on to my demi-clones. Um, that would be the first thing I would decide to do, because a blind is really going to kill your time. No matter how you look at it, you're going X% percent slower, because you're going to miss she cities on and off. <clears throat> um, now I'm going to pull the bird right now, so I don't have to wait for this. I do want to prioritize that silver chest, because if it's a demi-clone, that speeds me up for the entire floor. I think I saw a ninja. Okay, I did see a ninja. And this is one, one thing that's really good about as your machinist, and really any other jobs can do this. Um, you want to check your rooms while you're trying to do DPS. Even if the DPS slows down a little bit by you checking the rooms, it gives you time to figure out where do you want to go. 
Okay, the exit's here. Okay, there's a gold chest here. Stuff like that can can really save you so much time if you get the right power. You know, you gotta time it right. You don't want to just you know open things willy nilly in the wrong timing and then cause a lot of issues. But gonna potion here. That's a great trap, and that's a good combo. I'm dead. Oh boy! Don't kill me. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> you know that's killed me before too. I love it. I would get so I would get so uh so confident that I would step on a bad trap, hit that blue chest when I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine, it shouldn't be a problem, and it explodes and then causes them to aggro me right away. It's fine. It did cost me the raising, but it's okay. I think cause uh I think she was still too confused about what was going on this way. I raising immediately because um, it was still kind of in range of just getting blown up by an ape, you know. So I'm gonna play it a lot safer. Now that did lose a lot of time because I was nearly I was nearly killing that enemy I was fighting. Or did I kill it? Maybe I did. I don't remember. Actually, I did kill it, right? I did kill it because it was an explosion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay. We did get that kill. Alright, mistakes happen. It's all about how you figure out, pick yourself back up. That bird is blocking me from this chest. Uh, that bird is 100% in the way of that chest, so I'd have to fight it to get it. Um, okay, let's just do normal damage here. Make sure I keep away from that ape. I missed the reassemble drill. Dude, I'm really considering like probably doing the serenity, but we're we're so ahead on time, so it's okay. Okay, steel will help. Right, now let's make sure we remember the ape is there and target it before I move to this room. Okay. Pull it right away. Good. Yeah, nice miss miss. Good good job. Ninjas coming in. I can't see anything. Ninja priority here, because it could cause a problem. I'm gonna proceed into the next room to see what we got going on. What do we got? Two birds, another ninja. Uh, I can't see on that room. These two birds I don't have to deal with because they are, uh, sound. Now, where's that ninja that I saw? Was it coming my way? I guess it was moving away from me? I don't remember. Unless it went to the other room already. Okay, checking this chest. Intuition? Oh, uh, that's where the ninja was. Okay. So I did go in that room. I'm gonna let it pass me first, because I'm already going through this room. He doesn't hear me, he doesn't see me. Okay, checking this room, being a little bit careful in case there is an ape here, which I have not figured out yet. There is an ape on that room. Okay, uh, I will check this other room over here before we proceed, just to make sure it is not the exit. Being careful around the corner because of apes. Check. Okay, nothing here, and it's just a bomb chest, so we're gonna proceed to the next set of rooms.
Okay, there's an ape. There's the okay. There's a ninja. If it goes in my way, I might pull it. We'll see. That sounded really close. Oh, I'm dead. I can see him. <laughs> I can see him. That sounded way closer than I needed to be. All right. Hold on. Thought I checked the room too. That's a that's the first time that's gotten me like that because usually I'm careful with that, but he is completely line of sighted from the from the crystals. I don't want to use a raising, but we'll see. I might use one. I might use one. I don't know. We're still kind of through this room. Can't target him, dude. Uh, that's where it is. <laughs> this is position is just dumb. Alright. There's another ninja there. Be very careful. Uh, the ninja is coming, but where is it going? That's the question. Not coming this way. Okay. Alright, I'll just have to be very careful from here on out. So, if I retain the Onion Knight, I still only need like about 5-6 minutes on the boss. But if we go a little bit under, or if we end up replacing the Onion Knight, I need a little bit more time. But if we get an Onion- if we get a Demi Clone next floor, then that really just kind of cuts through a lot of time anyway, so... It's a good thing I re-raising, by the way. I, I partially debated on doing the raising, but I figured, I right, we're still kind of early through this floor, there's still BS Apes here and, and Ninjas. So we're going to be raising, and uh, that was very much worth it. Okay. Where are you going now? You're going back to where you came from. Okay, we got to be careful in this room. That is the exit. Is there an ape here? Negative. I know there's an ape in the other room, though. So I'm going to pull the bird. I kind of want to just get off this floor right now. I got to be careful because of the ninja. Times two. So I'm going to move my... Ooh, there it is. Turning, turning, turning. If it comes this way, I'm stealing. I'm stealing. It's gonna be a big problem. I'm gonna move through this room and kind of hope that it doesn't. I'm actually gonna safety here as well. This will give me a little bit of, of spacing if that ninja comes in. So I have the full room because I can get through the owl since it is sound. And I don't really have to worry about. Um, this AoE other than the gates. Okay, I'm gonna hold. Relaxing, relax, relax. Now the other, the only problem right now is that other ninja was only moving between this and the other room. So if it comes back, it's it's a witching. If it comes to this side, which shit, I don't even know where it is. I think it really left left us here. This steal happened because because if I were to aggro the ninja, which was a high possibility, not about to deal with the ninja. Two things in here with limited hiding room and something that can assassinate me with low HP. Okay, that's just asking to die. I'm not gonna bother with the room to the east simply due to the fact that the ape is there. It's already a bit of a problem to even get there because of this other bird. And like I said, I kind of want to just get off this floor right now, and our time is also starting to kind of melt away. Like, we'll have to now hit the pedal to the metal because we lost so much time in this specific specific floor. It's missing is insane. Walking. Oh, the other ninja was there. He came back. Okay, get to the boss. One more floor. Alright, make sure we check the apes immediately. Got the strength back. Checking this room first. Apes, 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 apes. There's one pulling you right now. There's a ninja coming. Oh. But we have a donut room. 
I'm gonna wait till I kill this thing to check the room. So question, do I use that strength? No, I hold on to that strength for now. Because I'd rather have it for 81 than for here. We have a handful of ninjas coming in, so I'll probably pull them next. I kind of want to see where this room is going to go lead to me, but I don't think I have the luxury of doing that right now, and I gotta just kill. Currently, we do have an Onion Knight for the boss, so that boss is going to get shredded apart, so we don't need that much time on the boss. Okay, ninja. I'm thinking if an I'm thinking if an ape was in that room in particular that I'm trying to see what's in here with the lion, I probably would have seen an AoE by now. So I'm it's probably safe to say there isn't one, but I'm still gonna be careful. Kind of take as much intel as I can here. Random ninja question about EO, if I know. Can you just hide for rooms that don't have proximity monsters and out of combat abilities? That is right. As long as the enemies are sight or sound. You can hide right through. Now, you cannot avoid traps, so you will still step on a trap that exists. But you can avoid those aggros. That is the exit. I'm gonna check the chest first. There's a Mimic. That's one reason I'm gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna fight in the spawn room. Two ninjas floating around. Looks like I'm probably just gonna have to fight through this normally. I can't even get through with with these ninjas floating back and forth. And that's also applicable to all the deep dungeons, not just the Eureka Orthos. It's all the deep dungeons applies to that. Uh, if you get hit with out of combat AoEs, you will get kicked out. Now in um, well. Yeah, in EO, there are out-of-combat AoEs that don't actually kill you, but that will kick you out of hide, yes. Now, uh, I guess another another specific feature, Verta, that I guess is worth mentioning, but it's, it's a little bit more specific to Heaven on High. When you're concealed, okay, there are enemies that track you. There are enemies in this content that tracks you down, like the birds earlier, I think it was 41% with the Kulu Kulu ones, whatever they're called. They will track you down and then do their AoE. In high, they will still track you down even though they theoretically can't see you and still do it. In heaven on high, when you conceal, they don't do that. So enemies that track you don't see you at all. Um, and for instance, in heaven on high, like the elephants that do their, their AoEs from a distance, the albists that do it as well, if you're concealed, they don't do it, but if you're hidden, they will still do it like they see you, but they don't actually aggro you. Um, of course, you don't have a conceal here, so it's kind of a moot point, but, you know, it's still kind of knowledge. Okay, I need to be careful with this room. I think I already checked it already, because there is an ape there. I know there's ninjas floating around, though. That lion. Okay. Nice trap. God damn it. <laughs> and there, there's yet another proof right there. Uh, we were walking through a very safe spot of that room because there's no enemies there. I was not having something on me. There was nothing coming at me. So hitting that trap in particular, very low risk. Which is nice now because I can get that chest pretty clean. But that was a very low risk trap there to take. That was right on the corner. Brutal. Make sure that there's no other ninja coming at me. No. Potion up just in case I get- Yup, whoop, yep, yep. <laughs> yep, there's one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think that's the most I stepped on in one in one whole run of like the the 12 that I've done and cleared. Go figure. Uh... I know there's at least one more ninja floating around. I do want to check that chest though. I am down a steel. I'm willing to fight a mimic and as again, I'm gonna repeat this even if it sounds like repetitive. Uh, you've said it like 20 times, it's fine. We have enough time for the boss because we are gonna demi clone the boss. I'm watching this room. Okay, I have a little bit of space here. I'm gonna check it first. 
Okay, Owl's in uh, line that's facing the exit. Facing the chest around there. Intuition, worth it. There's another ninja coming in. I want to see if the lion moves. I want to check the chest first before I deal with the ninja. It's assuming it moves. I mean, it may not even move. Um, and it doesn't look like it is. Okay, ninja first, ninja first. It's just right here. Darabon streaming main story, huh? Do you want him to do voiceovers and everything? Steal is down. So time is, is getting a little spicy. We're at 9 minutes. I think I may not want to check the chest if it becomes a mimic. I think I just want to get out of here. So it no longer becomes worth my time. And we do want to get out. So we're not even going to check the chest south because that is definitely a waste of time. We just want to get to the exit right now. We need to execute. Uh, okay, so small problem here is I do not have this floor safety and it's either I fight this thing or I go or I wait for it to move. So we will wait for it to move. We still have enough time for the boss because it is an onion knight. We should be okay on time. Okay, going in. Perfect trap. Love it. I've stepped on way too many traps this set. We made it to the boss, let's go. Alright, now this is a risky one, because this is a boss that still gives me a little bit of anxiety to fight this one. So we gotta play very clean. Gonna definitely full focus here. The time should be not a concern. Usually we are tethered to negative, so I just have to watch what I'm going to get tethered with. I have a negative, so it's going to probably be a push. It is negative, so I'm getting pushed. Clean. First rotation done. I think we started this fight at about 8 minutes, just as a heads up on time. And I do always I do always plant the Demiclone this, no matter what, because the Demiclones are even going to be higher in the next set, imagine that. So there's really no harm in using it on this, and on this, and especially doing this straight up is very time consuming. If I was planning to do this straight up, I would have had to use more stuff to give myself time. So, we are good. Push again. Push again. Little too centered. Good. Okay, we start about eight, so this will be about a four, four and a half minute fight. 
with Onion Knight. No strength, Onion Knight. Good to go. Oh, it's another push. Little messy on this set, but look at the look at the protomanders. They are clean. We lost a raising, so we don't have as much insurance. Down a safety, down a witching, down a seal. But the serenities are back. The flights are full. Got a dread back. Haven't used a single storm. So well, well, we used one. Everything is good. Time was a little tight, but we we managed it with the protomander uh, with the demi clone. And basically this entire set was just pull and kill, pull and kill, pull and kill the entire set. So nothing fancy. We didn't do any fancy strategies. Um, and then we actually had some mistakes, so it costed us a little bit more time. So it got a little bit tighter than, than it should have been. But that's 71. Um, you know, you want your proto manners to look like this as best as you can. Um, nothing overly impressive uh, on, on, on the gameplay. But I think that the takeaways is kill speed. We killed efficiently. We killed as much as we can, as fast as we can, and efficiency. We didn't do too much overkilling. You know, we didn't kill four, five, six enemies after the exit opened. Uh, that adds in so much time. So keep that one in mind. I mean, take the run, see how you do on your runs to see if that helps you improve on time. I would say 81 coming up is definitely a big one for lots of people to get through, but much like Heaven on High, how you do in the 71 set does carry over into how you do into 81 set. So if you did really poorly in 71, your 81 will be even more troublesome than getting into 91 will be really, really tricky. So if you had a solid 71, you can have a mediocre 81 and have a much better 91. Although the goal you want to have is to have a really sick 71, an equally sick 81, and then it cruise control into 91. So that's your goal there. Um, yeah, and oh yeah, you know, that's true too. So we got a little lucky there. Um, I got a couple treasure rooms more in the previous set, but we didn't see any here. I did miss a handful of floors though. So some of them may have had the treasure room, but they weren't in my way. That's the most important part. We did have a lot of traps. I stepped on a lot of traps more than I typically do. Um, had a lot of donut rooms. Had Had one that killed me. Well, I kind of, honestly, I killed myself on that one, to be fair. Um, but we had two dangerous traps, which were owl traps, that we took, but it didn't cause me any harm outside of 30-second time loss, and that's because of our positioning, our movement through the floor, re uh, removing any, any other factors that could make that a big issue. And we just took those traps and just waited it out. So a lot of that comes into play, too. Usually end up using more pawns than I have to. Yeah, I think... I think... Uh, Kugasa, I think what gets people are two things. I think one, it's deliberation. It's thinking about what you want to do. And that usually catches a lot of people, right? You look into a room, you're like, okay, do I pull this thing? Okay, well, there's something behind me. Uh, my time is this thing. Okay, what do I do? You start running back and forth. It's like you're pacing in game, like you are IRL. That's costing time. You do that every floor, you could lose minutes that way, you know? So a lot of my pulls were already decided. I moved, I pull, I moved, I pull. And that's classic Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High tactics. Kind of the big tactics in tank for a warrior, trying to make up the time that the DPS doesn't have. But people are having issues on even jobs like this, right? <clears throat> so that's one thing. And then of course, the other thing, uh, the bigger one that I mentioned is the overkilling. If the exit is open, you want to be at the exit. If you're killing past the exit opening, that is a time loss no matter how you look at it. Even if it's like, oh well, the exit had things in it, so I had to clear up the exit, otherwise I can't get to the exit. Well, what you should have done is get into the exit before then, cleared up the exit before the exit opened, and then get into the exit, you know what I mean? Um, so you always want to keep that in mind that anything past the exit is a time loss. Of course, there are situations where it's worth it, Fighting for fighting for a chest that just got blocked. Like, what if, <clears throat> what if you had a chest that you opened, 
For some reason, there's a respawn. For some reason, there is a patrol that walked right into that room. Okay, might be worth killing that thing to know that you're going to pick this thing up that you really wanted to use. Very niche situations. Um, but those, all that comes into play. And mitigating and lowering those factors will allow you to go a little bit faster, you know? Um, and, and this is, of course, and, and this is what we said at the beginning of the of the of this whole stream is that we're already assuming that you know how to manage the enemies and the bosses. We're not talking about mechanics here, but we're talking about kind of theory crafting in a way, how to manage all that time, what to do with it, and try to moving through and explaining how that happens, right? Because you know, again, common comment that people say, oh well all your runs it seems like you get really lucky with with protomanders. And when I run when I do my runs, I'm really low, I'm out of stock, etc. But, you know, when you do it like 10 times in a row, 15 times in a row, I don't really think you're talking about much luck. I mean, yeah, luck helps, but consistency is huge. And that's what really will kind of set apart you being able to clear on a consistent basis or just having that one really good run that gets you there, which is fair. That can happen. But, you know, you do want to separate whether you're dying to mechanics or you're dying to a lack of power-ups. That's one thing that you need to figure out. And this one, in this deep dungeon in particular, is going to be, you know, heavy on the mechanics. But I think once you solve the mechanics, then you just have to worry about managing the power ups. I think 81 will be a big set to look out for to see how I manage things. Because this is a set that challenges me on time. You want to be conservative, but you can't be too conservative. I think what you'll see me do is be aggressive on flights. I think what I want to do is keep the flights a lot lower, keep the alterations as well as lower. I'd rather eliminate those flights and alterations out first rather than burning more of like the storm and the dread. I'd rather have storms and dreads for 91 plus. You may also see me do keeping my demi clones at two because as I mentioned a little bit earlier that the demi clones are even more frequent 81 plus. Like you think that they're, they're like good enough already, they're even better 81 plus. So sitting two demi clones is a really good play, especially if it's on a bad debuff floor. We'll talk a little bit more on that once we kind of step into that floor. In the meantime, I'll hit the ad break. We've got to do some ad breaks here. Three minutes, I'll be back, stand up and stretch. I'll hit the restroom, I'll, I'll stand up and stretch myself. Play some background music. What's this, 12? Cool. While, while you're waiting, if you haven't already, announcements from this week. We have our new merch store that is available. It is Palace of Dead Heaven on High. Stuff related. The club, welcome to the club. That is what the, the shirts are all about, to join the club with an actual physical item. And then of course we also have the survey if you haven't filled that out. You have, you have uh, opinions on EO, you loved it, you hated it, drop it in there. We're gathering information until 6.4 shows up, and then we'll be spending a lot of that time uh, sifting through that info. So do that while I'm away. Thank you for watching, I'll be back. Alrighty, let us continue into... Here 71 to 80 looks like the hardest set of EO for me on paper at least. So many bad monsters, surprising monkey AoEs, no vision on... It's it's the hardest for me as well, Verta. I would say 81 is probably the toughest with time, but the only reason why it feels tough with time is because it's like a balance. You're trying to keep as much as possible into 91, and that strains you for resources, right? If, if you were to go heavy... And aggressive on stuff in 81 it'll probably make it easier but then what do you have for 91 you want more stuff in 91 so trying to get through and similar to heaven on high trying to get through that 81 set keeping your uses of resources as limited as possible that's the challenge there um but i, I agree 71 is the trickiest in terms of difficulty because it's tight quarters you have the monkeys you have some really crazy combinations. The boss kind of gives you a little bit of anxiety because of the way it is, but I've gotten more used to it. Um, for sure. And also, it is a table setter. If you do if you do a crappy job in 71, that, that snowballs into a bad 81, into a really bad 91, even if you make it there. Um, so getting a clean 71, and mine wasn't even that clean, but we still managed to keep the, pro the proto manners in check, but... Getting a clean 71 could be the reason why you win from here on out, you know? If you, uh, we are mentioning this before the break, if you know your mechanics, if you're comfortable with all the enemies and all the bosses moving forward, you get a clean 71, it's just, it's just a matter of time. You just gotta make sure you keep the efficiency going. And that's what we're gonna try to do here. 
Um, we'll, I'll try my best again to explain as much as I can my, my decision making, so on and so forth. Um, as a preview, what you might be seeing here is you're probably going to see a lot of flight usage, uh, a little bit of alteration usage. I, I am more, I'm, I'm very likely to burn off all of my flights here if it saves me a storm and a, um, and a dread uh, to use, and I will definitely hold on to the dreads. We already have a planned onion night for the boss. And the boss will probably die in about five and a half, six minutes with that, uh, with that, uh, with that onion knight. More than likely, I'll also save a steal for the boss. Again, I'll probably do it only because that's what I think you should do, especially if you're going on your first attempt. Um, you know, as long as you don't get, if you don't get hit on that boss, you'll be fine. But if you get hit once, you're probably going to drop dead, uh, because it, it's so hard. So I'll probably steal just to kind of keep that consistent. Um, and that's most of it. You'll probably also see me keep those demi clones at two because the frequency in which we're going to get them is pretty high. But that leads into making sure that you check the chests and check as many rooms as possible. I think this said you'll also see that I might dump some rooms depending on our position. If I didn't reveal a room that's like six rooms away and I'm already by the exit in this particular floor set, it's going to take me like a year to get over there. So I'll probably skip rooms if uh, it's too far for me to get to with the distance that we have to travel. That's kind of a preview of what you'll see, and you know I'm saying it now, like I'm saying it like I'm already I'm already predicting what's going to happen. But we've done this a handful of times. That is probably what's going to happen, presuming we don't make any critical mistakes that are that I don't account for. So let's step into eighty one. I'll update the title. Let's do this. Also, if I didn't say thank you to that follow, uh, sneaky kitten, thank you for that follow. If you're still here, appreciate it. All right, step into eighty one solo. And gun, thanks for the follow as well. Welcome in. Your plus solo machinists. Time management, let's go. Okay, because I saved the strength, we're definitely gonna open with the strength. Now here, um okay, so the persona has to get pulled because it is blocking me from the chest. Also, I just realized that is also the exit. So it's actually a really good pull because uh it does clear me up to get to the exit. Now I'm going to stay in the spawn room so I can avoid the cows that are going to do their dumb AoEs. Opening strength is what we've been doing the entire time. More than likely I will be opening with a flight once I get a chance or if I have to wait a little bit for things to happen. Our goal here is still to check as many rooms as possible. That is our goal. Our pulls are also going to be pretty precise in terms of why I'm choosing certain things. So an example right now is up here. I have no business with these two personas because they are in the right side of the room and everywhere I need to go is in the left or in forward. So they will not bother me. I don't need to pull them. Um, I will pull this persona because it is potentially blocking me from that chest. Also going to focus target the, the cow because I need to fight backwards or rather I'm rather I'm going to go fighting backwards. And just in case I miss him doing the AoE, we're going to keep him focus target so I can turn away from that. I don't see a patrol, which are usually the course patrols, and this looks like it's a small floor with five rooms only, from the looks of it. Oh boy. Um, I think it is. It looks like it is. So, um... We just want to get to these chests priority first. Walking here. Amongst anything else, the Hecti's are the worst to pull because of their gigantic AoEs. But they are sound, so we can completely avoid them. That's okay. Gonna potion here first, because I have to RP walk through here. I will take this with me to the other side of the, the to the other side of the room that I did not check. Actually, negative, I cannot do that because the cow is looking to my left, so I have to hang here for a little bit. It is doing demon eye, so I'm gonna wait here for a second, turn around, potion up. Okay, now we're gonna see where it turns. It should move. I guess not. Eh, no. Guess not. I'm dying. Okay, it did move. So I'm gonna make my way through this room to the next side. Check if there's a chest. It is, but it's a bronze chest. There is more than this room. Okay, so there's two rooms. Got it. Again, these personas are not blocking a chest, nor are they blocking my way, so I will not pull them. 
Unnecessary pull. We want to pull things that are in our way for something. Okay, so this one in particular, that's a bronze chest, so I'm actually going backwards now. Uh, I will pull... The Persona. Actually, the cow. So the cow is in my way right now. So I'm gonna pull him so I can get to this room. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be watching this Persona. If it moves out of the way, which it just did, I'm going to now proceed past him so I can get to the other safe side, because I need to go here. Now, if I remember correctly, we have only one cow in the exit room, and we have these two personas. The cow is going to be a much easier enemy to dodge, although I didn't see where the exit is, so I'm actually going to spend some time to look at it, and I'll explain what I'm looking to do right now. Okay, the exit is actually on the left side. So, what I will actually do is pull this cow, but I will cheat and fight in the spawn room. The reason why is because I, I'm almost thinking I'm probably going to need more than this, than the one I'm fighting now and that cow over there. But I want to clear the exit. So we're going to clear the exit first and foremost to make sure that there is no issues getting to the exit. And then if I need other pulls, it'll be the persona in the other two rooms that are close by. And that's the kind of kill order. I feel like you gotta steal if you can't kite mimics. Um, yeah, they hit pretty hard. I mean, you should be able to... I mean, even the hallways are, are very big and very long. So you should have some type of room to kite unless you just put yourself in a really precarious position of like, you know, you're in between gazes and all that stuff and patrols are flying all around. Like that's the only time that would happen. Alright, so as predicted we needed another one. So we've already planned our kill count uh, our kill order. The next one will be the other persona if the exit does not open. So I'm gonna chill here. Because sometimes these kills are pretty high, you're probably looking at about a 6 to 8 to 9 average. Uh, I would say 6 to 7, 8 average is what you're looking at. So you kind of want to think of that in the back of your head. Anything before then is a miracle, anything after then is, you know, typical. Okay, another pull. We're ready for it. If I need yet another pull, I will pull... Uh, I will go straight ahead, not not to the left. I will go straight ahead because there's two Persona in front of me and I do not want to pull the Hectides. <clears throat> so again, we're keeping that plan in play. So, you know, I don't cheat. Like, you know, one thing that I think is really bad is if you're like, okay, well, I'm sure it's gonna- I'm sure it's gonna open and you like start leaning toward the exit and then you gotta go back again for another kill, you know? That's gonna be really annoying, but... Gives you a little bit of uh, false sense of hope there. Okay, we need another kill. So I'm going across field to get the personas. Now I will hang in this area, because if I need yet another kill, then at least I have one here. If I go back already, um, I might be causing a bit, bit of a risk there, uh, because I'd have to run back and everything. So good, this floor being challenging is exactly what I would like to have because it, it allows me to have to plan out and figure out what I want to do even more so. So hopefully that'll be helpful to the people watching. I don't like kind of, you know, artificially adjusting my run to, to force out a situation. I do like playing as natural as possible. <clears throat> so you kind of see the run as it's supposed to happen, you know, based on what the game gives you. Do you need another kill? That is a lot. I think that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think it's 8 kills right now. Yeah, I think this is going to be the 8th kill. This is on the higher average. <clears throat> now, if I need yet another kill, I do have two Persona in the other room opposite of the exit. So keeping that in mind, and I'm going to stay here just in case. Okay, it is open. So we are going to plan a flight. And maybe an affluence because I am missing a couple things. Now the raising is down to one, but you do not see raising anymore from this point forward. Last raising I could have seen was 79. That's why it was really unfortunate for me to lose those raisings that late because I'm not making them back up. It's okay, one per set should be fine. Serenity. Alright, next board. Looking for chests and flight. I would predict we might get a no items or an auto heal. Hmm. Or blind, which is fine, I guess. Oh, and gloom. Uh, okay, this combo is not particularly nice. I'll fight through this because it is it is flighted, so we could be out of here in only like a couple kills. 
There is a chest in the exit room, so I will try to lean myself over there. Actually, let's take some time to check this area first. Since I don't see a patrol here and I'm hiding anyway. Okay, that is a bronze chest. I will sneak it over right now. Check this now down. Potioning. Observing the other area to see what we got. I know there's a cow there, that's what, that's, at least that's what I know what we got. Okay, that's a gold chest and a multiple way to go. Alright, so I will chill here, we'll kill this first before we decide what to do. I'll actually go all the way to the exit to get that get chest first. Hey, well, yo, what up, Faggy? How you doing, man? Oh, there's a Persona here. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull the Persona, and then we'll check the chest. Watching the Kono. So, if this was not a flighted floor, this would have been a Serenity. No question. Because this would be a pretty big time waster. And I'm okay going to 2 Serenity this early. Got the Witching back. So I wanted to do that when the Persona was a little bit lower HP, but not completely dead. If it, if it spawned a Mimic, I would have enough time to kill it. Okay. And then deal with the Mimic. I probably would consider it Steel though, to be fair. Okay. Now, priority here is to check chests over kills, unless something gets in my way, which is a patrol. Taking a look at this cow, I'm going to focus target him, because I need to go past him a couple times. But we are checking chests here. There's our Mimic. Watching my, uh... HP here. Okay, we're gonna go for the Silver Chest pop, but I need this at 70. <laughs> Demon Eye's going out. But I need this lower. Oh my god, I've missed everything. I'm gonna wait for him to cast something before I try to do this chest. There it is. Okay, got the Doga. Again, the, the possibilities of being this being a uh, a demi clone is extremely high in this in this particular floor set and next one. So me going to two was no big deal. And me assuming that that was going to be probably a demi clone, not an exploding chest, was also probably going to happen. But still planned it in case it exploded for the free kill. Okay, so now we're dragging this thing because I'm okay traveling through these rooms without really hitting traps. I was late. Okay. I was kiting a little bit too far, not a big deal. Okay, two chests here. I will face my way towards the cow, but I'll keep kiting here as well. So I don't get tripped up. I have the other one focus targeted, so I know if I'm getting close to him. <clears throat> Potion is down. Okay, we are out. I'm gonna purity. I will check the chest though. Potion, great. Keep an eye on this one. I will check the chest. Witching. Alright. It is using it, I can hear it. So aside from the time that we gained, we didn't really get much here. But it's okay. I will do an altar on the next floor to keep that at two. So what the altar is going to do, aside from the obvious, which it changes the room into mimics or corrigans. Every time I use an altar, I'm always assuming mimics. Uh, and they're not bad. Like, mimics are not bad, unless the debuffs are there. It does kind of force me into potentially using something else, like I probably end up using a demi clone to, to, to compensate for those mimics. However, if we get Corrigans, then I will try to fight that room straight up, because it ends up becoming like a flight. If you get like three Corrigans in a room, think about it. If we set the kill average between seven to eight, you get three of them, you already cut them in half, it's like a flight. 
If it's mimics, it kind of makes it where it's like, okay, we can go a little bit harder here, use something a little bit more um, to help me out with time. Um, Sylvan, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Cheers. I think I got abilities here. Yeah, I did. And there's a demi clone here. I'm sorry, a demi, a dread beast. <clears throat> got the affluence back, which I think I will use already. Okay, so that's the exit. Two cows here. Let's just see what else we got first. It's just either going to be a demi clone, which is likely, or it's going to be a serenity, but it's likely a demi clone to help me out. I need to. I want to see if I can find the altered room, which at the moment it doesn't look like I'm going to get to it unless I go across the map. Okay, I'm gonna respect this. I want that chest first. Chest might an give me an answer that I want. Okay. Checking it, and then we'll go crossfield to see what the altered room is before we make a decision here. Fortune, for the answer I was looking for. Gosh, I didn't mean to do that. Alright, I gotta respect the cone. Not the best angle. Alright, so I'm moving this with me to try to get to the opposite end to see what the alt room is. If it's Corrigan's, I think I will Serenity. If it's Mimic's, I will Doga. We have a course, that's... damn it. It's so annoying because I can't get across the room right now. Uh. Alright, we still have time. One kill is gonna be whatever. At least I'm safe here. I'm keeping an eye on this room. Uh, you don't see where my eyes are looking, but I am looking in that room to see where the enemies are facing. More specifically, I'm trying to see where the Dread Beast is going. I want to see his movement so I can see if I can get past him at a certain point. He is moving right now. And he's kind of... he didn't really move in a great spot either, but I probably can get close enough to see what that room is going to be. This course is going straight, so I'm going to go around him. Gotta watch the Conal that could be coming in, that's okay, we got enough spacing here. Are right, gonna move? It is, survey says? I don't know. Here's your answer. Alright. Mimics. It is Mimics? Mimics, okay. I'm going to then Doga. Because we will get the kill count here, and he'll compensate for my damage loss. If it was Corrigan's, I probably would have done this straight for Serenity, which I don't value as much as I do in the other deep dungeons. I, I'm like perfectly okay going down to two Serenity here in Eureka Orthos. If this was Palace or Heaven on High, I would kind of cringe a little bit if I have to go down to two Serenity. Like it's a it's a completely different thought process. Um, because we have so many tools that can get us past big debuffs, that's why Serenity is not as important to me as it is the other ones. Yo, Daike, hello. How you doing? Alright, I gotta... respect this, uh, course. Or he can just get petrified by Doga and I can just vibe over here, it's fine too. Okay. So... I will not fight the Mimics because I could get Pox again. I mean, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it's also a bit of an annoyance to get past this Dread Beast, so I'll probably just fight here and just clear up the exit uh, with what I have in this part of the field. Can you de-aggro with Doga Petrify? 10 seconds. Uh, I've never tried. It's a little tight on time. I would probably say... It I would want to say no, but I've never tried it. Harry, one moment. Would you consider using a storm on that Dread Beast if it were a clone? You know what? I barely value Dread Beasts anymore. Like, they used to be totally something I would go for early on, Harry. Nowadays, I don't even care about them. I, I straight up just don't care about Dread Beasts. They, they don't really help me. A healer might be debatable. Um, and really the only one you care about is the damage one, right? Because you're not really dying to things, so defense and regen is not really gonna be, like, that important for you to go for and to utilize a storm's for. Um, 
if that makes sense. So a lot of times I see it and I just kind of shrug my shoulders at it. I think I would only go for it if I was going for points, not gonna lie. Um, that would be the only situation that I even care, but... Yeah. The clone is the damage one that- oh yeah, no, no, all good. Yeah, um, I used to go with the policy if like, you know, it was early, I would use it. But man, I don't know, like the- the- the... The value you get from a Storms if it's- if it's in a- if it's in a- an auto heal, it's so big. And just getting- and just using a Storm just to get off a floor is so big that I don't think it's worth detouring just to get a Dread Beast. Like that 10%? I don't think makes up the time that you get from just pulling six things and doing a storm. That makes sense. Um, so that's one reason I've gone away from even caring about Dreadbees. Like, to me, they don't even exist right now. Like, they're just there to just, like, one-shot me. Um, now, if I had a free Storms on the floor, I probably will make the effort to kill it. In particular, you know, I'll work my way to fight it. But I'm not gonna go down to two Storms because... it exists. What Daiki, what, what Daiki said, also, that's 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 also the other one you should do, is just, yeah, get one. Forehead. <laughs> um, I do have an Affluence running right now, and that... the That should not block me. <laughs> it shouldn't block me. Okay, we're good. 20, min uh, 20 minutes on the first three. We do have things to speed up, so I'm not really worried about time right now. We got blinded again, though. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a, um, oh, that's, that's just instant serenity. I'm not even gonna question that. Because we are down to two demi-clones right now. So, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna do another affluence into another flights. Because again, I'm gonna go aggressive on the flights here. Alright, let's pull the Gubu. The Gubu is a proximity, so we wanna take care of him. He's also gonna pull me in, because he wants a kiss. But, uh, yeah, we're not gonna give it to him. Are we coming out? Alright, so I'm making my way through this room to see what we got. I know there's a chest here. Ideally, I want to pick up this chest without dealing with the with the with the debi. There's a chance I can get that chest without aggroing the debi, which is now an even higher percentage because it just moved. And we do not want to pull anything from this room right now. We got the flight back, so that's one reason why we're going aggressive on it. I'm gonna go to the next room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do want to try to pull this course first and foremost, because it is a patrol and it is proximity. There are angry cows, so I need to keep my back turned right now. Yeah. Okay, they are staggering their AoE, so it's kind of annoying. Keeping an observation on where they're facing right now. Oh, they just- I can't move. So what I was gonna try to do is if that cow went to its left, I was gonna go to the room in front of me to see if I can navigate there. But now they're both kind of blocking the area, so I can't proceed past this room. So we're just gonna vibe here and just kill this thing. <clears throat> I'm gonna stay around here so I'm not close enough for the, for the demon eye. Pudding just moved. The other cow is doing its thing, so it might move very soon. Okay, I'm gonna make my way through. Other cow doing its thing. There's a Gubu, so I will actually focus the Gubu now. Plan adjust. We'll find this first. Okay, other cow did move, so I'm gonna wait for this pull-in. And then I'm gonna kite this over here. So I can start seeing what's in these rooms. Navigation. One of the tough parts about this set of floors is the fact that rooms are so big. But this is how you kind of help yourself on a machinist. You just navigate while you're fighting. It saves you some time. Okay, it looks like I need to go over here to avoid the course patrol. I hope. And get a little deeper. Just kidding. Oh, he. Oh, he's there. Okay. No chainsaw, no chainsaw, no chainsaw, no chainsaw. <clears throat> I'm in chainsaw now. Okay, I can move through here now. This is like Palace of Dead Strats, by the way. I do this in Palace all the time. We kite and we move, trying to see what's in the floors, etc. That is the exit. I affluence this floor, I'm getting all bronze chests, so it's a good affluence. Typical affluence here. 
So these cows, I don't need to pull them because they are not blocking me from anything at all. So the one I would want to pull is probably the pudding over here on the left, who has a potential chance of giving me a problem. The exit is nice and clear, so I don't really have to pull anything by the exit either. So we're going to pull this one. And I have to stay kind of close because of its Y kernel. Slowly moving in. I know there's at least one patrol that is flowing around, so I need to be careful about that one. And if I see it, it will be my priority to kill. Again, keeping the kills at minimal. Once that exit opens, I want to go to the exit. I do not want to kill any more than that. Otherwise, we're wasting time. Oh boy. Okay, we're good. Turning. Yeah. Moving. If I aggro a cow, it's perfectly fine. I'm going to take the cow with me. Oh, there's a patrol. This one. This aggro was perfectly fine because... I had to fight any- I had to fight something anyway. <laughs> and this would also make the stream a lot easier to deal with. Turning, respecting. Watching this course patrol, who's the only patrol left right now. It is coming this way. So I'm gonna move back. There is no cows here, except I think by the exit room there are one or two. Let me take a look. Okay, there is... one. So I can keep my back turned here while that course is coming in. And it would probably be my next target. If I need more kills. If the exit opens right now, I am leaving. I will not check that other room. It is too far, plus I have to navigate through a patrol and a cow that could be blocking my exit, so it would be too much of a uh, waste of time. If I need another kill, I take the course with me and we travel. Nope, we're out. Alright, so that's early, that's good. We're out of here. We'll check the branch chest though. And that's that room. 35 minutes into 85, which is pretty good, and I have a flight going to the next one, so our time is looking pretty good. And I'll probably use another flight. Oh my god, another ability floor? <laughs> we had blind ability, blind ability. Alright. Good thing it's flighted. We got a dread though, so that actually changes everything. We just go dread. Um, that's the exit. So. Okay, what do we do with the dread? Obviously, dread is um is a is a floor wipe. However, if you want to play very safe, I recommend either a sight or safety here, so you don't step on traps. That is an expected demi clone right there. But question is, is it worth using a fortune? The answer to that is just a no. The reason why that's a no is because it's a flighted floor. I mean, you could use one actually. It really doesn't matter. Um. But also, second to that is the ability down. So if you get Mimics, then it causes a little bit of an issue, because you can't stop the box. Um, and your damage is a lot lower, so... I will choose not to use a Fortune. I think some people may, because I haven't used Fortune like this entire time. Um, okay, I'm getting this chest first. We want to check as many chests as I can before I decide to Dread. So if there are Mimics, then we can just eliminate them um, with a Dread. Otherwise, I get the pox. And since I'm going to make this movement anyway, I'm just going to travel myself over to the opposite end of the map, check whatever is there, and then dread after that. That's our plan, that's our game plan. Or we have the Gugu here, who causes a problem. Change of plan, we're going to dread right now. Okay. Because otherwise I'd have to wait for that thing, cost me time. Probably by the time that happens, I can just, uh, I can just get the, get out of here. And this was a two kill flight. Whew. Uh, only disables auto heal. It disables auto heal, but it also has a DOT on you. So on a no item floor, you're basically screwed because you cannot get rid of it. Uh, you're just gonna slowly die. That's one thing that's bad. Um, so if I have a pox on with a no items, I have to do something. Whether it's Serenity, whether it's Une, which I do have Une now. Um, but that's one reason I would prefer not to have the pox, at least going into the next floor. Alright, we killed kind of everything here, so we'll check the chests now. There's a Shrank, which we'll probably use right away. Uh, I will do another flight, but no affluence here. And will probably keep, keep the flight at 1. Well, game's like, you should have fortuned. <laughs> I love, I, you know, I love when the game is like that. You have this whole discussion about what the hell you're gonna do, and the game's just like, well, you should have done the other thing. Dumbass. But it's okay. I, I play a much safer strategy. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Rotho, checking back in during my break, how are things? Solid. The, 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 the proto manners are just very good right now. And again, here's our time check. 
What time are we looking at at 86 on the 6th floor? We are over 30 minutes, which means we are ahead of pace. But, <clears throat> this floor tends to get a little slow, so... Another Dread Beast, I see it. A Dread Beast stalks the floor. Yeah, I see that. For, for a minute, I thought he had wings. <clears throat> okay, so this is a clean floor. Because my time is pretty good, I think all I'm gonna do is a strength here. And if something is worse on the on the next couple floors, oh, that's a treasure room. And okay, so I'm gonna pull this one. Full respect on this guy. I gotta be careful if a patrol starts walking over here, which there are patrols walking around. And be careful. I keep watching the to prevent Ellie from yelling at you. Yeah, if Ellie's around, I'll actually use fortunes more aggressively. She actually does that to me. That is a that is a true fact. So it's a little bit hard to decipher which ones are patrolled and which ones are not right now. But I know there's, I think, one Spectre that is an actual patrol, while the other one is blocking. So in this specific instance, by the way, um, I will try to work the treasure room. However, my top priority is any patrols that are actually floating around. I probably don't get past this treasure room to even check anything, which is fine. It's not a big deal. It'd be nice, but it's not a big deal. Um, I actually have space to check the left side here. I got a strength back, that's good. Gotta be careful with this one, because I cannot see this telegraph. Okay, keeping him close. I know there was a Spectre somewhere, right? You guys saw a Spectre, didn't you? Or am I dreaming? Maybe I'm dreaming. I thought there was a Spectre floating around here. Alright. We're almost out. I think this is flighted. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay. So let's pull this specter. Be very close attention to his left and right. My left. I don't think that dread beast should be a problem either behind me. So I can avoid it. I can go run backwards and we should be okay. I'm gonna eat my words though. Sure. Ring, ring, ring. Stay, stay, stay. He's too far. My right. Okay, I am leaving because there is nothing I can get here. Wait. Oh, I haven't found the exit yet. Oops. I forgot. I thought the exit was here. Okay. So in that case, we need to find the exit. I don't see none of these issues. I'm gonna go this way. You know, this entire time I thought the exit was where I was with the uh, Dread Beast. So that's on me. Steel. I will re-up the steel. Hopefully before this thing gets into me. I will go this way to avoid it. So now I need to locate the exit. Now why did I pick this direction? Uh, basically what I did was, I looked at the all the directions, okay? In terms of that treasure room. I looked to my right, I didn't see anything glowing. I looked straight, I didn't see anything glowing. So I decided to go here because there was more paths going here. And guess what? I picked the right direction. That was why I picked here. It wasn't random. Aside from the fact that it was the one room I could actually get to, uh, just by luck, it was also the one that didn't seem to have the exit initially. Uh, I will dump Une for Doga here. Okay. Oh, whoops. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Me and my fast targeting. It's okay. I get. I get. I get to. I get to have some fun with Une for a little bit. She gets. She gets to participate. Alright, going to the next floor. I will go as straight up. Does fortune cause bond chests to drop also from enemies? Uh, any chest whatsoever, Soba. 
bronze, gold, and uh, and and silver. Yes. Demi. That would be nice. Checking for patrols here. No. No. Not yet. Okay. I will check this chest priority. If I aggro the wraith, I will go backwards. We actually did not aggro the wraith. Alteration came in. I will probably use that alteration. I have burst. I'm gonna burst the wraith while we're here. I gotta kite anyway. Okay, checking this room now. We're kiting. Even if this screams, I should have enough space. Uh, nothing good here. Oh wait, that's the exit. Never mind, I collide. Literally everything good here. Where is the exit? Can't see the exit. Where is it? Okay, it's on the left side. I see it. I'm gonna pull this Pegasus to clear up this chest. This music takes you back. Hell yeah, dude. Classic. Just don't tell Nintendo. If you tell Nintendo, I'm in real trouble. Okay. We gotta do. We gotta do kind of under the table. As long as they don't know about it, we're good. They get a little. They get a little finicky with their music. Well, that, that's gonna get me into more trouble. It's like I'll just delete the chat later. <laughs> to see that company. That's yeah, true. I don't blame it. They they do a lot of. Like, like, no joke, they, there's a lot of things that seem a little questionable. Especially when it comes to, like, creators. Witching. Um... So, I'm gonna pull this Pegasus, because this one could be a potential issue getting to the exit. While the, uh, Abyss is not gonna be an issue at all. Like, that Abyss is in the corner. He's not gonna cause me any problems whatsoever. Yeah, well, I mean, the leaks are kinda, you know... Kinda rough to see it, but... Uh, anyway, that's a that's a whole different discussion. It's a whole can of worms. I'm moving this way. I gotta be careful with the knockback because I could get knocked back into the room. So I'm gonna respect it and just hold. I think the second knockback is coming in right there. Okay, so now let's go kite. Heal gap close to me. It's whatever. I just got my autom uh, automata out, so I'm probably gonna do a second pull after this directly, and it'll be the sparkler. Okay, Tom and Queen already left me, so that feels bad. Oh, this is it! Okay, so this is all that is here. So I guess we'll just focus this room for now. I think what I'll do is I'll pull the other Sportory in this room. If I need another kill, I'll go with the Pegasus. If I need another kill, I'll go with the Abyss. That's the kill order. If I need more than that, then it's gonna be real sad, but it's kinda whatever. Okay. Uh, actually, Abyss would be probably a better kill. Less complicated. I'm gonna position myself towards the spawn room. If I need another kill again, I will do the Pegasus and then drag him to the exit. So I got three kills in the bank right now. He's orange, so we're gonna hope that's enough. Strength is down. The question is, do I re-up it? I think I do. Because I'm not gonna really need it on the boss, I'd rather have it on the floor. So I'm gonna wait for an AoE to come out, boom, and then we do the strength. Uh, there's animation lock with the pro with the protomanders and with uh, using anything. There's actually a bigger animation lock with demi clones. So if you're planning to use one mid combat, you got to make sure that you're not going to get locked into an AOE. So I made that verbally known. So first of all, I can remember, but second of all, that's that's why I said that. Next pull. No hesitation. And again, I'm gonna drag him or her to the exit here. So we're gonna cheat a little bit to the exit, but we still have another kill there. Thank you for the damage boost, I appreciate it. Alright, we didn't need the other kill, that's a witching. Let's go to the next floor, as is. We will not use anything, we have a, quite a bit of time. We essentially have 10 minutes to get off the next 10 well, actually a little bit more than that, maybe about 15 minutes to get off the next 2 floors, because I will ununite 90. This is a blinded floor, which means this will take some time. Hmm...
Would you rather them removing the animation lock and using items? Treat them like using a pot? I don't know, it adds a layered difficulty. I mean, it's kind of a weird... a weird thing. Like, I've adjusted my strategy to accommodate for the animation lock, essentially, right? I mean, would it be better if it didn't exist? I guess. Uh, but... I don't know. I... okay, here's, here's kind of an over... here's kind of a... oversimplified statement, though. You know? <clears throat> I feel like they've 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 very much kind of dumbed down this game a lot a lot already. I don't need them to dumb this game down more. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't need this thing to be more dumbed down. So if that adds a layer of difficulty, I'll take it. But I don't think it's an I don't think it's it's intentional. To be fair, like, I don't think they put it in there to be like, oh yeah, here's an animation lock, you know what I'm saying? Because they fixed all the- they fixed some of the other animation locks. They fixed the Dragoon, they fixed the Red Mage displacement. So, I mean, it's not like it's impossible, but... I'm not gonna complain if they do fix it, but at the same time, it's not... the reason I lose runs. I died using a de- yeah, I have almost died doing that. Uh, I actually... I was in a- I was getting hit by a Cobra's Regorge, the AoE that it does, in a the 61 set. I was on Gunbreaker. I forgot about it. It did- it was going to one-kill- one-shot me, but I was able to, uh, Super Bowl I just in time. Because I, I just remembered it, and that was my reaction, so it's like, oh. Canceling animation with jump is satisfying, though. Yeah, it's tech. Um, it's fun tech, you know. I mean, not really canceling it, you're kind of- you know, buying yourself a couple steps, essentially, but... It's fun tech to do. <laughs> Alright, that Spectre is my next target. After that, I'm gonna start exploring to see if I can get the chests. The question is, what happens if I get another bad debuff floor? I don't know. Maybe a Demi-Clone, I don't know. My right? Okay, keeping an eye on his next ability. If I'm late on surrounding bursts, I'm dead. It's keeping in, staying in. So the Pegasus on the left is kind of in aggro range if I go to my left. On the right side, we have another Wraith, so that would aggro 100% if I go to the right side. So I think the best pull is actually going to be the Pegasus here. To give me an opening. I don't need that bronze chest, so we're taking the Pegasus here. Um, I will... I don't see any other controls floating around, so I can actually use this to navigate. So this will save us some time again. I can see where we need to go, I can try to find the exit while we're trying to find this Pegasus. Actually, we already found the exit, it's where... Uh, I just was. But, okay, we can check the other rooms, okay. Now, the rooms have been kind of small, to be fair. Like, they actually haven't been that, that big. Um, there is a chest here. So that will be my next priority, because if it's a Mimic, I want to fish out the Mimic. Second priority will probably be the Wraith, because it looks like he's a little close to the exit. Kind of like a 50-50 chance that I can get out of here without having to deal with that Wraith. So we need to get rid of him. Uh, the Eremon are all sights. So current position, I think I can sneak that chest. Even if it doesn't move. I can probably get it at the furthest length, but I might aggro. This is a big if. I might be able to get this clean. But he just moved, so. Alright, Trent came in. Good. So we're gonna deal with the Wraith next, because if the exit opens, that's the one that's the most important. If the exit doesn't open after this one, I'll probably just pull the Aramon, because they're not too bad to deal with. So, again, the theme here is that I'm already deciding what my kills are. Uh, I already have, like, my next next one, two, three kills in order of what I want to do. That saves, that saves thinking, that saves deliberation, you know? Even and, and even now, I can think about, okay, what am I going to use Protomander-wise for the next floor? I've kind of already decided I'll just go straight into it. Uh, if I need to go a little bit faster, I can, but as long as there's no debuff, we should be okay. But I've already made these decisions. Like, I'm not going to kill this now and then start thinking of what my plan is. And people standing around trying to decide, that's where you lose time. Like, you may not think that's that important, but you do it on every floor, it adds up. So a lot of these things, we're already making these decisions and already making these choices and just executing the choices. We do make some quick adjustments, but... 
Man, I had blinding abilities like this entire set, except for one floor, which is the first one, and we had a damage down the other one. Damn. Okay, we still sh we should still be okay, but this kind of wants me to do a strength potentially. Okay, there is oh, I gotta go backwards. There is a chest on that, and that is the exit. So let's examine the exit. What are we looking at for this exit? Where is it? Okay. The Wraith is on the left side, so the Wraith might be a, a priority kill. Because it might get a little close to said exit. The Pegasus, on the other hand, not a priority kill. Because of the angle that he's facing. He could face the exit, but because usually they kind of go back and forth, there's a, there's a good likelihood it doesn't even come close to the exit, or I can get a pattern where it's not around the exit. First and foremost, I want to check both of these chests here. Which is another strength, we're re-upping that right away. Um, and, and in the previous floor I had talked about, well, you can hold on to a strength, you want to hold on to the strength if you see one on the floor, because you want to have it for the boss. Well, because we are playing on a Demi-Clone, that kind of doesn't really matter, because the Demi-Clone will do a lot of the work. So my important thing is to get off this floor. So kind of the plan changes in that, in that specific situation. But we just picked up a second one, so that is also a mood statement, because we're just gonna use it now, and then pick up a fresh one when we go to the boss. Paying attention here to the potential AOV, Ed is out, I'm out of here. There's also another one coming in, so that is my next target as of right now. Good thing I could see from afar. Okay, next target is the Spectre coming in. I'm gonna check this chest real fast because I gotta wait for him to come by. Alrighty. Now, how about our time for the boss, okay? If I were to actually get to the boss, left, my left, <clears throat> with over 10, with 10 minutes or more, we will swap to a Doga instead of an Onion Knight. Because I can use the Onion Knight on, a, on the 91 set, which will definitely save me quite a bit if we use it on a full room. If we're under 10 minutes, I will use an Onion Knight. That is our current plan of action. Now, it really doesn't matter which one I use. I will steal on the boss regardless. I said that earlier. My right. Because that's kind of a play I would suggest newer guys to go for. Because if you just get clipped by one thing, there's a potential it can kill you in one shot. So a, a steal will definitely uh, at least give you a little bit of insurance. Okay, this Wraith is dead center. Which means I can skip it right now and just check the other rooms. We're keeping our kills minimal, like I said, oh there is more specters and there is more rooms. Okay, so let me see what we got here. That one is going to its right, so I can pull this one in the back even if it goes to the same direction. Which it is, but I'm gonna take care of it now. We had to see which one, uh, where they're going, because I did not want to pull one and then have the other one walk towards me, am I right? Hey, hey, Miracles, how you doing? Hey, whichever works. I'm here. It's, I don't know what time it is, 2 a.m. Uh, I'm out of here. Uh, okay, we're good. 2 a.m. for me. Oh, we are out. Uh, I do not travel anymore. We're gonna take the time. I don't really need any Demi Clones either. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't need any Proto Manders. Our Proto Manders are top shaped. Like, okay. We had bad debuffs here the entire run, but we basically just rode strength to the end. We did burn a lot of flights. I think we used three flights. I think we used two alteration, no, one alteration. Which was a mimic room, so it didn't even help us. Barely used anything on this floor to get off here. I didn't kill the high priority target, but it is not gonna give me a problem here. It, ooh, it might. There is a strength, hold on. Wait. Uh, I will kill this. Uh, there is a strength here that I want to refresh up right now. I need to be careful about the screen as well. I have the time for this, so we'll just play this a little bit safer. Elan, thanks for the resub. I appreciate that. Two months means a lot. Two months is a huge resub. I've been saying this, you know, every time I see one. The first time sub is great, but the second, but coming in for the two months means you might be sticking around. You kind of do like the content more past the first one, you know? It means a lot. This is this this much focus for 81. I'm never going for 200. 
Well, I mean, EO only goes to 100, thankfully. Uh, I mean, if you were to kind of put this in perspective of Palace of the Dead, then this would be like 181. I mean, 81 in, in Palace of the Dead is just a, is kind of just, you know, not as important. But uh, you'd be looking at 181 in Palace of the Dead with the same kind of, you know, focus as you say. I buff him. Yeah, you, oh, you really need to focus in. Everything matters. I mean, even here, you can kind of, like, chill out here, but... You don't want to make some critical mistakes that really just sets you back to things you can't even recover in. So we are over 11 minutes, so I will steal here for safety. And I will Doga. Uh, this is, again, to showcase we could- you would- you should rather steal. In my opinion, especially as a newer player through this. If I were to do this on my own one, I'd probably save the steal for the next play. Alright, we're looking for numbers. I'll talk about this fight as we go along, because this is a fun one. We are Donut into Triangle into Line AoE. Okay, getting out of the four lanes here. And we have to get in. You wanna try PUTD? 204 seems a lot though. Hey, you know, we have we were doing a survey asking people what their thoughts were about um you know how do they feel about the Eureka Orthos, how do they feel in comparison to the other deep dungeons. Looking over some of the preliminary data from the survey, I think a larger majority do think Palace is the hardest of the three deep dungeons, but not surprisingly, the reason is because it's 200 floors. Like, that is the only standout reason for a lot of people. Which makes complete sense, you know? It is a marathon of marathons. But let me tell you, as, as someone who's done it a lot, a lot, it's a lot of fun and it's very satisfying. We are going far here. Safe spots over here, We're using geometry for the triangle, see? Safe. Looking for our 1s, 2s, and 3s. See what we got today. We have Triangle into Donut into Line. That 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 Donut's really far too. Okay, moving up. Frost Laser? Man. Like the first like two months of this content, I barely saw Cross Laser and I've seen it more times the last two days than ever. By the way, this is with Steel on. There's a lot of damage with Steel on. Certified Doga Sim. Alright. Baby run. Hey, it's okay, little by little. At least it, 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 it grows it grows over time. Chip away at it. Circling around here. Checking this line AoE here. Good. Checking this line AoE here. Good. I prefer to wait for the new one and then go past it. If you try to risk, be, risk it the other way, it can get very spicy. <clears throat> Looking for the triangles and the eggs. Same position as we were last time, same here. Watching the ge geometry, look at that further one. That's why it's facing out, that's why this is safe. You only have to care about the eggs, you don't have to care about the line anyways. They're the same every single time. Looking for our numbers. Line AoE into Donut the Triangle. Four lines. In. Back. Cross laser. Going uh, directly in line with the dots. Preparing for the tank cluster. This is my favorite fight of Eureka Orthos, by the way. It is a fast fight. There's no- there's really not that much room to breathe, and I like that a lot. I wish the 99 boss was a lot faster. Um, but at least we have this one. I like this fight a lot. Waiting for the line here. Oh. You hate this fight? That's my favorite one, I love this fight. Any job, doesn't matter what job it is, I love it. Looking for the eggs. We are going far. 
All the triangles are facing out. Okay, looking for our numbers. Line AoE, Donut Triangle. First four is going to be the line. Cross laser again? Oh my god. It's like the donut doesn't exist. Alright, there you go, that's the boss. With a, with a pretty ample amount of time... I, 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 I did one dread, which was on, I don't know, what is that, 84? I haven't touched Dread this entire run from the date from from five and a half hours ago until right now except once. We did I think two storms because it was an extra. We burned a lot of flights. We kind of kept the serenities, you know, even even there. I would say we did a lot more demi clones than anything. Really barely used our proto banders aside from the ones they give us. And we were checking chests, we were checking the rooms, everything. And now look at our proto manders, they are set for just a really clean climb upwards. You know, again, the reason why I'm doing this ex this further explanation on things is because people asked about that. They're like, oh, you know, when you do your runs, your proto manders are really good. Seems like you get really lucky. But this is what happens every single run just about when I do my runs. So you guess I guess you can call it lucky, but at some point it's it's not really going to be always lucky. And I mean, again, I hope the explanations kind of made sense as we were going about it, why we were making the decisions. Um, but I think the, the the main theme was just kill speed was really what it came down to. Uh, we didn't get we didn't do fancy plays like big pulls too much. I did like once or twice. Um, but it was just kill speed and movement and keeping the kills minimum. That's what gets you through these floors uh, efficiently, and you don't really rely too much on the proto manders much, you know. So, what is this split keyboard called? This one is a Kinesis Gaming. I'm gonna type it in chat of the what the brand is. Uh, the brand is Kinesis Gaming. I am not sponsored, um, <clears throat> but I really like this keyboard a lot. It it's it gives me flexibility and versatility in terms of distance. Like in a typical keyboard, if I were so you can see my hands right now. If I had like a typical keyboard, my hands would be like this on the keyboard. Uh, look at the amount of space I have to my left side, and it kind of felt like I was almost hugging with my shoulders. And this wasn't because I was in pain or anything. It was more like I I plan on doing this for a while. So it's more of a mitigating ergonomic type of deal. So now my I have my hands like shoulder width, so it feels a lot more comfortable. And and it gives me options. Like maybe I do want to get it close one day, but I could make the adjustments, that's why I have it. And this has been treating me very well. Uh like no complaints. It's just been a very very good keyboard like i got the quieter switches the red i think it's the red i have the cherry um i'm not really particular about my keyboard so i had a razor black widow before uh and that's fine i had no problems with it um so this is this is the keyboard i have now um you like the tiger one you know the tiger one for me is boring as hell <laughs> i mean I, the mount is nice uh daiki but that that fight is actually really boring to me <laughs> um but hey, everyone's gonna have their preference. I, I mean, I think, I think amongst anything, people, uh, people, uh, probably agree the bosses are still better than Heaven on High. How do you play with no mouse? Well, if you hang around here, I'll show you. Actually, yeah, we'll just keep the mouse like in the center, so you can see the mouse, and I won't touch the whole thing. I think I like that demonstration, right? We'll do it for the next set. I'll keep the mouse in the middle, and we'll just play the game. But essentially, uh, you can kind of see the red here. So this is my, uh, I'm gonna type this in chat. This is, uh, these are the keys that are on the right side of the keyboard. Uh, those keys. I use that for a camera. So you can see that's the camera over here. And then the left is just the WASD. And then my entire hotbar is the top with the numbers, 1 to 0. So you see up top here, that's where the numbers are. So I'm basically swapping between there. Um, and that's generally how I do it. So we have full mobility with the, with the movement, the camera. We have full access to our hotbar and shortcuts if I need to, and I don't need to do anything with the mouse at all. Um, at least with this specific content, I will not touch my mouse once I get into the into Deep Dungeon. 
This machine is the best class of souls to do this. So, um, a lot of... All the jobs have cleared very quickly, uh, Agent. Um, Machinist was not world first. Warrior was world first, and I believe Dark Knight was world second, and then I think Paladin was world... It was, it was like, it, was, it cleared on day one. But over the amount of time, like week one, week two, week three, Machinist pulled away with the clears. Like, it was just literally, like, at a, at, at a point in time, there was 500 clears, solo clears, at, so like, week two or three. Half of them was literally machinists. Like 250 of them were all machinists, and the other 250 was split between the 18 other jobs. So why is it good? Honestly, I mean the kiting is good. You're seeing the damage it has. It is full damage. It's like it's being it's capable of doing full damage on top of the fact that you're not taking damage because the kiting is impressive. That's there, but in reality, Eureka Orthos is in such a weird spot because. A lot of the strategies that you do, even with this job, carry over into other jobs. Like, whatever I do here, you can absolutely do the same exact thing on any other job, and you would probably still have very similar success. Little tweaks a little bit, right? Tank's gonna do less damage. You can do a little bit more tricks with tanks to make up for the time. But in reality, your, your planning and, and pro-mander uh, pro usage are all basically going to be the same. Unlike the other two deep dungeons where the, the disparity between the roles are tremendous, right? Your run for a healer in Palace and Heaven on High is going to be so different from your run from a melee, from your run from a tank, from your run for a physical range or a caster. Here it's a lot more similar in terms of what you need to do and what you need to execute. Still with that being said, it just organically, like it wasn't even like, no one was advertising machinists, no one was like, stood on a podium and like today or like you know hey you all should do machinists because it's the best no one said that actually in the early days people thought melee was the best option like day three people were like you know what melee probably is even way better than tank and that was from the community but for some reason people just leaned on machinists maybe because it was popular in palace people were like you know let's just give this a shot maybe people saw those clears and they just went to machinists so it, was, it happened very organically so it's very hard to dispute that it is, in fact, the best job. But I don't think you're going to lose much by taking any other job. And honestly, you're really not. Um, I had a lot of fun with Paladin. We just cleared a Paladin. Had a ton of fun on Ninja. Um, and a lot of the jobs will be, like, your your game plan of, like, what I'm discussing now. How you do your stuff, like I just mentioned. It's all going to be the same. Like, it, it literally is going to be the same game plan. Um, it's just, you just got to play the job and hit its buttons and, and, you know, do all this stuff, so... But yeah, and it's one reason why we're doing this type of guide on Machinist, because it is just the popular job. Um, you know, whether I can dispute it, whether I can argue it, whatever, it just is the popular job, and that's just because of numbers, that's it. Dark Knight has no healing. <clears throat> Pretty impressive as World Second. It's a tank. Um, in this content, Salt Caramels, you don't need healing. Um, things aren't hitting you. Like, it's it's really weird compared to the other the other deep dungeons. Let me push this ad out so we don't get an ad while I'm talking. It's... This, Eureka Orthos is very different from the other deep dungeons. Because the auto attacks are not really hitting you very much. Dark... Here's, here's a good thing. I took Dark Knight and we cleared Dark Knight. In Heaven on High, I played around Dark Knight's uh, The Blackest Night. Like, you actually wanted to plan out, and that helped you with mitigation. You broke TBN so much in, like, 71+. plus. Like, you actually worked around the fact that you were going to break TBN. In this content, I took TBN off my hotbar because it was never going to break at all. And the only things that would break it were going to one-shot you anyway, so there was no point even using the thing. I literally, like, shifted it off my bar. Like, it's such a big difference. Like, you don't need to worry about damage especially on a tank even more so in a tank a, a tank that just does raw damage is probably going to do way better than a tank that has way more heals now you know they could be like comparing like paladin etc but paladin did great paladin's good with with actually mobility because a lot of its abilities are on the run every minute um but yeah it's either you're taking very minimal auto attack damage or you're dying from aoe's there's no in between there so you're not worried about you know just just like dying through things just hitting you hard that's not the problem and that's why a lot of the jobs are all going to feel the same melee is not really worried about auto attacks i'm not worried about auto attacks machinists for sure tank isn't for sure healer isn't um 
they probably they probably don't even need to heal at all. Just toss the regen once in a while, and you're fine to go. So, uh, we could never simply tell the sample size how many jobs we're attempting compared to machinists, though. <clears throat> it's true. I, I think in the early days we saw the numbers. Like now, it's a little bit. It's bad to do the numbers because there's more people that have cleared than the lodestone can show. And in the early days, it was a lot easier. In the early in the release of EO, it was a lot easier because you didn't have 25 people plus clearing. That's why those numbers were accurate. But now it's like you have like literally like thousand plus who've cleared. I think you worry about other classes don't have interrupt. Yeah, the the pox is always the issue. Um, you have to play a game around pox. You know how you how you you know when you have to sit on it. When you have to get rid of it, um, it's a it's a mini game for some of the jobs, but it's still not. It's honestly not that big of a deal. Um, the only time it's a problem is if you're melee and there's no items, then you're forced into using something for it. But even then, you have demi clones. You can use like Une or something uh, to help you out through there. So there's a lot of ways around it in this specific content. A lot more devastating the older beef dungeons, but. Let me take a, one more ad break here. I'm going to step out, uh, stretch out a little bit, and we'll step into the final set. <clears throat> this will probably be a victory lap, but the first and foremost thing that was important is the previous 24s. How we handled that to get up to this point. And we'll still have to be careful. Like Actually, this floor still makes me nervous because there's a lot of things that can potentially kill you even though the protomanders are exceptionally good. And we'll talk about how we're going to plan out what we want to do before we enter, and then we'll see when we're actually in there, if that is what we actually plan to do. So let me hit some background music. Awesome song, I love this. If you guys are chilling during the ad, we have the two announcements that I've been doing all week. We have a merch store, if you guys like Palace and Heaven on High for now. Um, and I mentioned for now, because I might be trying, trying to work something for Yuriko Orthos. But it is uh, merch that is Deep Dungeon related. It is, I like to say, welcome to the club, to people who clear all the time. And that is what that is related to. It's like the club of uh, of Palace of Heaven on High, and those are what the the merch is uh, representing. It does help support the channel. You're also supporting the artist that did the artwork, so definitely check it out. And one last thing is the survey. If you haven't checked the survey, uh, if you have thoughts about EO, you like it, you hate it, fill that out. We are up to 443 responses, so we're gathering that until the 6.4 patch. So there's still some time to, to fill it out and save it and send it to your friends and all that stuff. Alright, three minutes. BRB, thank you for watching. Alright, I'll give it 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 seconds and we'll continue. It's actually my one of my favorite songs in the entire Final Fantasy series, this particular song. It's just a very good song. So yeah, see a 20 minute ad, enjoy the 20 minutes. 20 minute food break. Alright, did I update the title? Alright, I did. BRB, 20 minutes. Um, okay. So that is, uh, let's continue, shall we? Into the finality floor. So let's talk about what we will do. We are, we are basically full with a lot of things. The more dangerous enemies you're going to deal with are later in the floor. Also mentioned in chat, there are going to be a lot of patrols. Um, so that could get a little spicy. So my go-to plan at the moment, and this could... Everyone's gonna do this differently. Um, we'll fight through the first floor. We'll flight the second one. And then from there on, we'll just see what the debuffs are. I'm probably gonna burn off one of my demi clones, maybe. I have, I think, what, one other Onion Knight? Or no, I have a. Yeah, I have two Onion Knights, so I can put. I could burn one out. Um, probably use that somewhere, because we're more than likely going to pick one up. Probably if I get to three, I'll use it more than likely. Uh, we'll save the last three floors for the Dread. So that is 98, 97, 96. So let's let's do the let's do the the thing here, right? So 91 we clear normally. 92 is currently flighted. 93 I'll alter. Get mimics. Probably going to demi clone to eliminate the mimics and uh, whatever else is there. So at least 94. 94 probably aim to do some type of storm play with the witching because I think I have witchings. 95 we can do another storm play and that's it. 96, 97, 98 dread. And that's how we can manage the rest of those. And I like to do the dreads just a full floor, because actually double dipping here uh, is kind of ass because the rooms are so big. Now, what is double dipping? Uh, we call double dipping kind of a terminology in the community. Basically trying to take... Uh, in Palace of Dead, it was a rage. But you take the dread, where you try to use it on, let's say, the second floor. You take the dread, you kill enough kills there on the second floor. You stay in the dread, you get into the exit, 
you get into the third floor, you're still in the dread, and then you try to kill enough uh, enough uh, enemies to actually clear the third floor. So it gets it it is like one dread for two floors. But because of the length of the rooms in this particular content, it's very hard to pull that off. A little bit impractical because by the time you get to a room, you probably lost the buff anyway, no matter how you set it up. So I would prefer to do those as full wipes, like a full floor wipe, maybe with a fortune, but I'm not really going to pick up chests because I don't really need to. Um, but at least just to get to the exit and clear it out. And that's the current plan. And we should have a ton of time, so what it'll come down to here is just execution, making sure we keep the mistakes minimal. Um, I am very messy with my storm play, so we're probably not going to do too big of a play. I'm not very comfortable with that. And honestly, that should be something uh, we should expect newer gamers to try to execute. Like, yes, if you're going scoring, if you're going more crazier strategies, yes. But someone who's a lot more newer, that should not be the expectation to do like a, you know, seven, a seven pull with seven chimeras, randomly doing ran uh, drams and dragon voice in lethargy and seeing twenty thousand AOEs coming at you. Like that shouldn't be the. Uh, oh yeah, just do that and get your title. So we try to do it as simplistic as possible and as painless as possible. And then we'll worry about the boss when we get there. So that's the current plan. Of course, we have to adjust to what we end up picking up, because we could pick up things and it could make it even better. But uh, that's what we'll try to do. So let's go into 91. Let's go into 91. Let's get this finale, so uh, we can all go to sleep. I can go to sleep. Some of you can start your days, I guess. I will open with a strength, but I will not steal. <clears throat> Oh, Hana, hold on to the steel in case things get a little bit bad, but we'll definitely strength. Immediately, I'm gonna take care of the patrols, because the patrols are proximity. So if they're floating around, it makes it a lot harder for me to get uh, get around this, uh, this floor. Good song, by the way. Alright, I'm paying attention to ringing or repelling. Repelling, I'd have to get out, get out of here. Ringing, i stay in. I will also already open with the flights, just to get that going. Uh, I will pull the drone. This drone is just like an ice sprite, so what I want to do is I want to position myself in a way that I go away from it while I'm moving through. I'll pull this back just a little bit further. Ball pit? Yeah, it's a ball pit. <laughs> I like how you guys have called it a ball pit. Alright, so we're gonna fight this here in particular. So then once it dies, I just go away from it. I don't have to worry about, you know, my position and exploding. I think that's really important with these things that that, that will have exploding uh, mechanics. So I think what makes it dangerous is if like you have to wait for it or you run past it. This will just solve a lot of problems there. Alright, so we're going away from it. Is there a Dread Beast here? There's a Dread Beast here. I'm going to walk. Uh, this mining drone is sound. I do want to check this dead end. We got our Demi Clone back, so that's good. I'll probably... you know what? I think I'll just use it right now. Since this is a fresh floor, may as well get the most out of the, the Demi Clone, because more than likely I'm going to see another one. Oh! Oh, that's a problem. Alrighty. Alright, I think we'll be okay. I'm going to arm strength right now. I had full burst there with Chainsaw. No problem, no panic. No good carry. I'm gonna position myself on a wall for the knockback here. Next plan is to try to get to the other rooms. We have to navigate past the Dread Beast. We also want to see if there's any chests there while we have Doga. Kill count, by the way. You're gonna be looking towards uh, 6 to... 6 to 9. It could take up to 12 to get off this floor, so something to bear in mind. I got you. Oh, that's actually a pretty annoying spot. Hoping it would get a little bit further. That is the exit, by the way. Um, so interesting. Okay, if you turn... Where is the exit? Oh, nice! The, de the Dread Beats is right on top of the exit, kind of. Facing it. Okay. Wow, we are out of here fast! Holy moly. I'm gonna pull the next egg. 
Um, the reason why is because it's gonna block me. I need to be very careful with the Dread Beast. It looks like... okay, the ADS one is going away from this room. Don't have to worry about that. This is a tricky room. I might actually pull out the Mining Drone, so I don't have to walk past them to get through. So I'm gonna pull the Mining Drone right now. This will just make my life a lot easier. Now if I just wanted to go, I could just go. With this amount of kills, I don't have to check the other rooms. And I might for... you know... You know, if, if, you're, if your protomanders are low, this is a really good opportunity to just leave. And I don't really need anything, per se. I could check that chest, but we'll see where this, uh, where this, where this Dread Beast goes. Okay, he just moved, so I should have time to at least get to this room, and then we'll watch him where he goes. He should turn around, which he does. I'm gonna go. Walking. Taking the time here. Fast first floor, that's lucky kill count. <clears throat> Two debuffs here. And it's flighted. Okay, no demi-clone and it's and it's blinded. I'm pulling that. Gonna navigate this room to see what we got first. There is nothing here, so we're going the opposite direction. Wanna try to identify if there's patrols and not yet. Okay, let's take a look at this room here. This looks like a treasure room. 100%. Lighted treasure room. Let's see how we're gonna handle this. <laughs> Alright, I need to see if there's any other patrols floating around right here. I don't see one over there. And I don't see one- oh, there is one. There's at least one. Do you just burn storms on no regen floors? I would, yes. Actually, if this was a no regen floor, even if this was a, um, if, even if this was a sighted floor, uh, I'm sorry, a flighted floor, which it is, I would have done it anyway. Um. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna actually sight here. The reason why I'm sighting, I need to see where the exit is. It is to my right. Because I don't know where the exit is, and if I make a wrong decision, we could be overkilling here. I'm gonna wait for this ADS to come in. Yeah, absolutely. If I see the auto heal, it's an easy storm. Um, of course, it is it is uh, benefited by the fact that I am sitting on three of them, <clears throat> but it's okay going down to two, you know. But this entire run, Illidra, I haven't seen an auto heal all day. I've been streaming for five, six hours since forty one plus. We haven't seen a single no uh, no healing. That happens, you know. As much as that's a good play. You can't rely on it, because it, it may never show up, and as of right now, it hasn't even shown up once. So in that case, Storms will be good for like, kind of a semi-big pull. I do have a Witching. So technically, I could use a Storms here. I could do like a... a, a I can run to the middle. Oh, hold on. I could run to the middle. I thought it was gonna die, but I'm blinded. Run to the middle, Fortune, and then ba-boom. But uh, we're not gonna do that. Oh, wait. A little close. Alright, so I'm gonna try to carve a path to the right side. So... What we need to pull is we need to pull this. We might need to pull this. I need to pull that. And arguably that. Because those four are probably gonna be in my way. So two is out of my way. One has to go. So if I wanna m make my way through the right side, those are the ones I wanna prioritize. I do not wanna pull the mining drone. Because the mining drone is sound, so that's a completely insignificant pull. I can get past them, no problem. But we want to be able to have a clearance from aggro, and while walking, to be all to, to be fair too, because we have to get through walking. So now that two marker is um is now in a spot where I'm pretty sure I will aggro. Uh, it is now. I'm actually gonna prioritize the drone here because this number two has shown that there's a there's there's a chance that he'll actually get out of my way. So it's not as high priority as this one right now who is literally in the right side. I'm gonna re-strengthen a bit. I'm also gonna pull this back to get my uh, strategy of moving away from this when this explodes. <clears throat> Probably a good thing for it to not show up in the tutorial. Um, you know... I think so, Darabon, in, in terms of speed and in terms of timing. Um, I think, you know, I think it's it's universally known by majority of people 
who do you make your orthos that if they see an auto heal, you do a storms. Like, I hear random people talking about it, and it seems like it's common knowledge, which impresses me a little bit, but also not so much. Like I guess it I guess it is just a you know a general understanding that you need to do that, but it, it does surprise me how many people kind of just know that now. That's fair. So it's not something I need we need to go over. Steel. I'm gonna re-strength here. Okay, this this other node actually became a higher priority, so we're gonna have to pull this one. And probably three, but three may be I may be able to get away with three. People meme about it non-stop doing POTD runs. I know, yeah. I guess it just impresses me that it is well known to do that, you know. I mean I was thinking about it too, whenever I see an auto heal, I'm like, oh you should do a... Even an even landmine play, you know, the consideration of a landmine play is so you can just dip them low, that's actually a, a thing. Any advantage you can get on an Astro. We're out, but are we out? Out. Okay, so I'm gonna move. If I aggro, it's okay. At least not the ones to my left. If I aggro number three, perfectly fine. Shockingly, I pick up a Demi-Clone. That's no surprise. Okay, now we need to see how the exit looks. <clears throat> the exit looks like it's blocked by that Orthro system. I will give it a chance to move, so I don't have to fight it. In the meantime, I will decide what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an Altar, because we're at three. Um, I probably demi clone the next one, so then 94, 95 is stormed, and then 96, 97, 98 is, is demi clone. We shall see how this one. Okay, he's moving in my direction. I'm going away from it. I'm gonna respect its ability here before I move away, and I'm just gonna move back here. Do I check that chest? Eh. Nah, we're going for the clear, so I won't check the chest. I don't really need anything either, so... Is there a world where you can steal plus witching, pull the trash room? Um, oh yeah. Actually, I was just talking about that. I would totally have done it if this wasn't flighted. Um, because it's flighted, you are more benefited by just not doing that because you're gonna be out of here in a couple kills. Of course, if you can't navigate through the treasure room, that becomes a problem, but you want to try to keep the kills as minimal as possible to, to navigate around it. Um, but if that was like a like a regular floor, I totally would have done it. Yep, yeah. totally would have done it. No demi clone here. Unfortunate. So what am I doing? There's two no demi clones. Okay, we got a lot of patrols coming in. I'm gonna steal. Actually, no, I don't need to steal. Um, let's lethargy this one. This might be a good floor to lethargy. Because I would kind of not really want to Lethargy later. Since you're gonna start dealing with the fitter memes. Now the doggers can still do it, but... A lot less meme than uh, the fitters. Super unfortunate I couldn't use the uh, Demiclone there. I'm gonna sneak behind you, try to get this chest. Got the strength back. Alright, let's flee. ADS coming in. Hope I can beat it. Man! Oh, I can't do anything. <laughs> I gotta wait. Nice animation. <clears throat> I'm gonna take care of the doggo next. Even though there's a lot of patrols. See if I can navigate around to pass this thing. I'm gonna wait for those patrols to get on out in there. I'm gonna try to stay ahead of these patrols.
Is there a Dread Beast? There's a Dread Beast. We have a Storms. So I can do something with the Storms. Um, and which Dread Beast is that one? Regen. I can take it. So now in this case, I will make the effort to do the to do the storms and then to kill it to get it. The thing. Is, oh, and I have a free witching. Oh, and that's mimics. Oh, it spawned in the mimic room. Oh, interesting. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. It's a toad. Okay, that's it. Let's pick up the swims. 13 music, you fight 13 mobs? Hell yeah. It works out, it's appropriate. There's our storms play with the witching. Also, I did a quick check on the uh I did a quick check on the Lamia. If the Lamia was not a toad, I definitely would have steeled. But because it was a toad, I was like, whatever, I'll just go kill it normally. Um <clears throat> if it was a chicken, I would have steeled, because it could it could potentially just drop me dead. Gonna do another altar here. And we'll do an Alright, next two I wanna try to storm. And I will. Thanks, ma'am. Hope you're doing well. Debuffs here. HP down. Ooh, Ah. Hmm. I can just fight through this floor. Yeah, let's just fight through this floor. Never mind, I will not storm. We'll fight through it. Pay attention to these AoEs. Got an ADS coming. Also forgot about the doggo, but it's fine. I will pull that now, priority, because we don't want him doing the AoE while I'm not paying attention. There's a couple others I see on the right side, I just saw the AoE go out. Pulling the ball. Anything behind me? Nope. Alright. So, I'm gonna make my way through this area. Especially with Onion Knight just destroying. I do want to prioritize the dogs though, and we're gonna get them out. All of them. Wait, oh crap. Eh, I forgot what Okay. We might have to run away from this one. Yeah, I might have to run away from you. Okay, watching the AoE from the ADS here. Repelling, we're out. Ringing, we're in. I'm out. There's a patrol back there, I saw it. And it took a while for it to get here, so that probably might be a lot of rooms in that direction. Um, If it was a short room, then it would have gotten to me a lot faster, but it was a long room, so it took me a while to get there. Do Astro. Okay, I'm going in here. I'm not checking the chest until I've cleared all the enemies. <clears throat> this is Onion Knight at its best right now. Retain. All right, so now we need to locate the exit. This chest is... Uh, I can get it. I was gonna say it's lost to me because the, the mother bit was there, but it moved, so... All right, let's see. Where could the exit be, huh? <coughs> Don't be on your night. Eh, it's okay. Hey, thanks for that follow. I appreciate it. I think the exit's here. It is. Yeah, we found the exit. We're just gonna go the exit. I'm not dealing with the other rooms right now. Gonna watch this line AoE. 
Citadel Buster, one of the coolest sound effects. So this was supposed to be a storm, but we held on to it and used the Demi instead. Three Demi clones on this floor, man. That's why. That's why we said be aggressive with the Demi clones. Uh, King, thanks for that follow. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see. This will be us. Oh, we got a serenity. I'm gonna pull this first. Okay, so I have four floors left, so I can do safeties and sights all the way up. I'm gonna do a safety here. <clears throat> There's a patrol incoming. I don't have strength going, so I'm gonna get strength up. I'm gonna get Une up. Two patrols incoming. A oh, one. Fortune. Checking what this next rooms are. One, two. I don't see Doggo or Fitter right now. This is altered, I believe. Uh, there is some some action over there. Oh, I safety right. I safety. <clears throat> okay, two doggos. Uh, I gotta back up. I'm gonna drag them with me. They're not gonna do that much damage. I'm gonna do a four storm play here. Uh, maybe more? We'll see. Ah, we can wait a little bit and we can do five. I'm gonna do witching with this play as well. So I pull you. Switching now. Okay, storms, because I was planning to do the storms. I didn't get this one. Good job. Not out yet. That's okay, that was a safety play. Watching for the giant AoE. Behind. Still not out of here. Uh, let's go with the mother bit. Again, we, we kind of did the, the storms pretty tame. Just pulled a couple immediate witching and then tried to get a couple kills. If I wanted to be a little bit more risky, I could have gotten more. Ignored the Minotaur, brought the Sphinxes in, get a lot more in the Mother Bit, I could have done that. Lethargy as well, could have helped it. But I, I wanted to keep it a little bit more simpler. Simpler. Alright, we still need to get kills. Alright, right, we have Unea. Time is not even a question, although we are actually kind of on normal time. Like I've been I was I was on this time on a lot of other floor sets. We're not going particularly faster, but we're gonna be getting into the dread section where we just dread all the way up, so um it will be a lot faster than Still on out. I needed all these kills just to even have a chance to get out of here, huh? Hello Minotaur, how you doing? I saved you. Let's 
Safe out of the boss. Um. Nah, I'm not gonna dread the boss only because it's probably more beneficial to see more of the boss than less of the boss. Does that make sense? If I was training for time, you could dread on the boss for, the, for a quicker kill, but it probably benefits people more to see more of that boss. That can be a play. Um, why would you do it? Um, because you got the extra. Like maybe if I pick up a dread on 98, I can do it because it's extra, so we can do it there. But I do want to plan out the dreads to be floor wipes into just getting off the floor. You know, if you're going for that victory lap. You want that title? I'd probably do that way. Um, is it more beneficial? I would say it's better to get off the floor than on the boss. Now, the only reason why it would be more beneficial on the boss is if, um, you're very uncomfortable with the boss. Like, you only did, like, one or two reps and you're, like, I'm, you're still kind of shaky on getting him down. Um, or you're straining for time, which is possible, but if you did a really, you did a really good job, Getting up to this point with really good pro uh, proto manders, that probably won't be a concern if that makes sense. I'm gonna steal here. There's no gold chests here. LOL. There's a lot of BS, that's what's here. Uh, I'm gonna go for a normal clear here. There is a fitter. I'm gonna dread right now. So I had the path to the exit. I'm gonna knock him back away from me. Because he's gonna go die slowly. I wanna get to that fitter. Got the fitter up. Making our way to the exit, so what I did want to make sure is that I, I carved a path with the dread towards the exit. And that was where the site was extremely important. Because I needed to see where the exit was. You are not getting this off before I'm killing you. There's a lot of BS here. Yeah, I would definitely consider a dread on the boss as like an emergency reason. Um, now, like for scoring purposes or for challenge runs, that's a completely different animal. Because, you know, if you're gonna get a sub 30, that's really good. But yeah, for like a traditional, just a typical clear, um, I don't think you take that route unless you had a really good reason to. Hey, Caddy, how you doing? Let me pick up the silver because I could refill on a demi. Chaos unfolding! Aw, oh, that's my buddy Chaos. What's up, dude? No go. Woke up a bit ago? Good morning. I'm gonna try to beat the Chimera. Oh, he angled. That might be bad. <laughs> okay, we're good. Uh, yeah, thanks for shouting out Chaos unfolding. How is Sea of Thieves? Welcome in. Chaos uh, is a... I've known Chaos for a long time. He's a good man. And uh, really excited that you dropped your kids... You, you dropped the kids off here, so thank you, man. I hope you're doing well. Was it correct? Nice. <coughs> Alright, so I may not want to sight here. I think I want a safety. Also... I think I'm going to Serenity. Not sure. Yeah, I'll Serenity on it. Let's try to find the exit. I don't need to go that way because the exit is not that way. I need to be careful for fitters. That could cause a lot of problems because they can one shot me. Don't see one right now. By aggro, I'm going to dread immediately. There's a fitter there, I see it. Where is the exit? Oh, there, I found the exit, okay. So I can do it from like here. I want to check this chest first and do it from back here and then go forward. There are mimics there, so I'll probably start with the mimics. I'm gonna witch in here. I'm gonna take these two with me. How did you not aggro? Okay. Okay, Mimic first. Into this Mimic. Into these two. 
and then we go towards the exit. Like, clear up these mimics too, just in case, but we don't really need to do this. This is like, this is like under the category of unnecessary, but, you know. We, be, we did big numbers, lurking, going on 8 hours, need rest. Right, yo, Chaos, have a good one. Appreciate the lurk. Go do your thing. And guys, check out our buddy Chaos Unfolding. Good man, good streamer. Points, yeah, points. Alright, let's watch the fitter. Keep an eye on him. Kind of in the point of- oh god. Okay. <laughs> I was about to enter point of no return, but uh... You know, luckily, he did it a little bit soon enough. <clears throat> okay, we're out, but I'm gonna start clearing up a couple things because I can get the uh, the bronze chest here. That should be good enough. Let's get out of here. I'll check that chest. Yolo. Intuition, love it. Sure, I'll check this one too. Light? LOL. Yeah, you know what? Let's just make our life easier. We're going for the clear, right? We're, we're trying to get the title for, for people going for the title. So use everything you got. Make this make this as comfy as possible. No need to make this complicated. The only mob never fought normally in EO. I saw the amount of uh of, of mechanics it had and said nope. Okay. Uh then let's pull a chimera. Good thing you said something. Give me a chimera. Alright, so this is what we got for the Chimera, okay? It's gonna do a gap closer, which indicates it'll do either Rams or Dragon. It did Dragon, going in. I had to pull that Thitter because he was gonna kill me. It's gonna do a, a, a Breath. All we're gonna do is run behind it because it makes my life a lot easier. And then it's kind of rinse and repeat. He'll probably do the Breath again. Anytime he does a Breath, you go behind. Dragon Voice in. Don't mind the pet fitter, it's okay. Watching his uh, attacks, we're going behind for the dragon breath. It just makes it a lot easier because it's on one side or the other side. He can use scorpion tail if you're behind it, so just gotta be watching that if he does scorpion tail. But uh, he doesn't really do it very often. It's just don't sit in the back too long. Ram's voice and going out. Okay. Getting behind him for dragon breath. There you go. That's like that's a chimera. Not too bad, honestly. Um, you kind of simplify it by just going behind him every single time he does the breath attack. Not too bad. I had tried to go left and right on that thing, and then I couldn't remember which one's which, <laughs> and it was kind of tragic. But then you got to understand that you know just getting behind was just making it so much easier. So that's just how you handle it. Honestly, these- those chimeras, um, Claire, way easier than the chimeras you see in, like, Palace in Heaven on High. Because Palace in Heaven on High, they're literally just doing random stuff whenever they feel like it. Which makes it more entertaining, honestly. But you have to be pretty, you know, paying close attention to it. That one, it's predictable. It'll gap close into Ram a Dragon, and it'll do one of its breaths unless you're directly behind, which you'll do Scorpion Tail. And then it'll just repeat the rotation. Like, it's- it's- it's a set rotation, so... Not as exciting, but yeah, that's that's your uh, that's your chimera. It gets more complicated if you're dealing with multiple of them. That's when it's just like it gets super spicy. But, yeah. I think this coming room is a treasure room. Oh, dude, I was a victim of that trying to do a uh, this BS room. Anyone like a light show? How many fitters are in here? One, two. Three, four, five, five fitters. <laughs> this is BS here. Alright, um, so here's what we'll do. Just for a little bit of fun, we're gonna lethargy. Now, because we have them all in range, this becomes a not not so bad thing. Um uh, please. This doesn't become too bad of a thing if they're in range, because there is a bit of a bug that exists with them. Um it's very complicated to explain it, but essentially if I can see them, then it's not too bad. So, this was what you were talking about. I ha I do have Une, so this makes this a lot easier. But we did the run-in, we have the- we have the- we- we did a fort- uh... We did a witching to them. We did the storms into the AoE. So that's- that's exactly what we, uh, someone in chat just mentioned, trying to do. And that's it being executed right there. The lethargy certainly helped, um, because <laughs> with five fitters, Basically rotating their their um, their AOEs. 
that could have been very tragic if you just timed it wrong. So doing the lethargy slows that all down. I pulled one of them intentionally so I can stop them from casting, get the witching off, and then clean them up. And the damage imp the the imp the damage intake was very really low, especially with Une doing the stone skin, but it's not gonna be a lot of damage. So there's an example for that one. Um if you wanted to see how to do that. Unnecessary, but again. That's what it is. Now we have a dread, which I could use the dread, but I will not use the dread here. Um the per the reason so what can you use a dread for? It does lust, uh, which is bone down. Three minute bone down, um, which will help you kill this boss faster. And all honesty, if you if this is your first time up here, you're trying to get that clear. Look, getting this boss down faster is probably really gonna help you on the nerves. You don't see as many rotations, especially if you only seen this boss like once or twice. For the purpose of this video and this stream, we will not do that so you can see more of the fight. And we'll go through the fight and explain each mechanic as we do it, as I actually usually do because it helps me remember. So first one, we're going to get a um, an element here. And you're going to pay attention to your wherever your debuffs are. Mine is on the bottom right corner, right above the hotbar on the right side. I have ice. It gave me ice. So now it's going to do Innocent Needle, so I'm going to go behind it to bait that. Now here it's going to go to the side. We're going to be looking for opposite element, which is fire. So I'm going to be going to the right side. No, I'm sorry, this side. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to chill here because the AoEs are going to fire out. Good. Yeah, I might time out, Sadie. Yo, what's up, Sadie? Congratulations on Black Mage POTD, by the way. Alright, so it's gonna do Call Blade, which won't do anything. It'll just set up its next move. And then we're going to be looking for a Solid or Empty. Empty is in. Also, I want to cheat to Intercardinal. Because if I say green, I need to get Intercardinal. Intercardinal, get out. <clears throat> there is like a pixel you can stand dead center to survive that. I tried it and died, so... I don't know, you can try it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Innocent Needles, I'm going behind again. There's going to be more of them, but going behind simplifies that mechanic. If you, we're checking our elements. Which one do we have today? We have fire. And now we're also going to see what the boss has fire, so we need to be opposite. So we're going to be standing in ice and take intentional damage. So we can have opposite elements here. Now Solid is out, I'm going to stand Intercardinal and on this spot in particular. This spot in particular protects you against both patterns that can show up. It's like right on this this T over here, Intercardinal. Alright, so now we're going to be dealing with flames on the ground. I will be going into the one that, that explodes. You will see some show up. I'm going into the one that explodes here. And pop, explode. Pop, explode. Pop, explode. Good. Going to the exploding one, we're good, nice and clean. That was a much better one than, than Thursday. I need ice here to be opposite elements. It is on this side. Good. And then it'll rinse and repeat here. Halfway through the fight, I'm going behind him. It is a badass. Looking at my elements, I have, survey says, ice. Boss is going to do flame, so we do not take damage. <clears throat> the safe spot is right next to a needle. Directly here. You'll see a safe spot in any of the sides of the needles. Staying intercardinal here, right about here. Again, this will protect me against two different mechanics, so right there. That is the second pattern. There are two patterns. So that is a nice safe spot for all of that. Now we're going to be dueling, I believe, with the uh, flames again, because we have fire. So we're going to be looking for the last exploding one. So this one will be good to go. It goes boom. Going to hang here. Goes boom. Goes boom here. Good. Going into the opening here. Good. Good. Clean. We are looking for ice here. Ice, 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 ice on this side. Honestly, it's a good thing we are getting Flammies because that is a much more exciting mechanic. 
<laughs> because Glacius, although we should see Glacius at least once. Glacius just stand in one spot and that's it. There's one safe spot, it's not as exciting, but you know, getting behind. <clears throat> Now we're looking for my element again. I am fire. We are looking for its elements. It is frost. So I will not take damage. I will stand next to a needle. We can stand next to this one. It is empty. So I need to get in and then watch intercardinal. We're staying because I don't need to go out. <clears throat> okay, now we got Glacius, which is basically stand on a Y on the ground. So there's Ys all over. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's another. Look, I found so many. You just stand on one of them. Doesn't matter which one you pick, stand on one of them. Right in the center. You'll avoid this mechanic the entire time. Really boring, honestly. But that's why the floors exist, because they give you the markers. We're looking for fire. Fire, fire, fire. We're here. <clears throat> Alrighty. Now we just clean up the boss. We will probably not see another one of those patterns, because it's at 10%, and that is the Excalibur boss. Getting behind. And I, this is one reason I say I like 90 better, because 90 to me is a little bit more exciting. A lot more faster mechanics. And this song also helps. We are fire. Boss is ice. But we're not taking damage. Now, one thing towards the end of this, let me do this mechanic. Out. One thing towards the end of this, there is some sprint uptime, so the moment the boss dies, we want to sprint here. <clears throat> because we will get a second one going into the boss. So if you're low on time, let's say you're sub 5, sub 2, sprint right as you're about to kill the boss. Because the, by the time you get down, you'll actually have the sprint back up. That one I got from Finn. Finn said that one. Sprint up time. Anyway. That is, uh... <clears throat> actually, it should be probably right after you go in. Or maybe it's like right after you kill the boss. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. But, you'll probably have the sprint back up before you get down. But anyway, that's, uh... <laughs> that's another machine is clear. Um... The palms were great again, 91 plus. Not really, uh, wasn't really scared. We still have extra things. I could have a demi clone out if I really wanted to. Uh, wonder if anyone's timed out before. Oh, I am. I think there's been screenshots. I'm almost certain it's happened. This is a long walk. This is the longest walk I think of all the deep dungeons. Um, so you are you are for sure having a chance to get out here. I think it's a minute and a half, two minute walk without like with sprint. So you need that much time. Um, yeah. So you have to get here. You need to, you need to, you need to get here before time runs out. Oh my god. Anyway, that's the clue. <laughs> so, you know, like 91 can probably, like, you guys can probably, like, you know, whatever 91, but you do want to keep an eye on that 7181, which is where it set the entire table. Our 71 was fantastic and we didn't go crazy. Um, our 81 was also fantastic. We also didn't go crazy. Um, I need night face the camera. Thank you, dude. Um, so it's... And, and, and again, one thing I will point out is this is a typical run. Unless I die to just me being silly, like we died to apes earlier. Uh, we died to a bad, a bad, uh, luring trap. Unless I'm dying to something that I caused, this is pretty much the result of all of my EO runs, at least on Machinist and a lot of the jobs that I'm pretty good on. Um, but I hope the takeaway was good. I hope the explanations were good. That's what I hope for. Um, you know, the thought process of what we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing it. Um, and what, what's more important is I hope it translates to your gameplay. That's the whole, that's the whole point. Um, we didn't do crazy stuff. You know, I didn't want to do overly crazy strategies. Um, you know, just a nice simple run. Just... Pull and kill, pull and kill. Decide when you want to when you want to do uh when you want to do a demi. Uh, I'm sorry, when you want to use your stuff. That's all it comes down to. I mean, we did like a, a couple double pulls, um, but nothing like my usual crazy shenanigans that we try to pull. So, hopefully that will help people 
This was, again, something that was requested by a lot of people, so I hope it does help. Um, and if you're still hunting down the clear, like, we're, we're here to help, and that's all it comes down to. Mana Claw, thank you for that follow, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, <clears throat> my throat is starting to go a little bit, but I should be okay for tomorrow. <laughs> um, my throat's getting a little scratchy, but the, the allergies are not helping, too. Anyway, thank you for watching. That will be it for me. We have the socials, the Discord, and all that stuff. I'll be back tomorrow in 12 hours playing some Honkai. You guys want to watch some Honkai? We're doing some simulated universe. That's the content that I've been focusing on there. I've been leaving that for stream only. So we've been doing... Uh, we're actually into World Difficulty 2 now. I haven't touched it. So World Difficulty 2 and World 4 Difficulty 2. So we'll go for those clears on tomorrow. Uh, in terms of Final Fantasy 14. We're going to be back on Tuesday. We're going to set up a Sage run. And definitely inspired by Finn and Sig, we will try to do a Machinist No Palm run. I want to try to do it. At least once. Uh, Sig got to 96 on Machinist without any Protomanders. Except Demi Clones. So I will try to see if I can duplicate the same results. But my, my issue is I tend to die like silly. So I'm going to hope I can pull it off. But... Be a nice contrast from managing the protomanders into not having any at all. So that's what we'll do on uh, Tuesday. So we'll set up a Sage file, we'll set up the Machinist file. I'll probably do the Machinist file on a Thursday, Sage on a Sunday, because I'm a little unsure about how successful the Machinist file will go. But that's what we'll try to do this week. So Honkai Monday, Tuesday setup, Thursday Machinist. Friday, Variety Honkai, but I'll be a lot later on stream because I got a I got a family thing to do So I'll actually go stream a lot later. So I'll probably be here by like 10 o'clock as opposed to like 9. We'll see how that goes Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Uh, and lastly for the announcements We got the merch store and we got the survey. If you haven't checked these out the merch store If you like if you like your palace of the dead and heaven on high you want some uh, channel branded items Definitely check that out. That helps support uh, myself and uh, the artist as well. So you're helping two people. Uh, and the survey, if you have thoughts on Deep Dungeon, you want to share it, it's there. <sighs> Alright. Well, that's it for me. Let's go find someone to say, uh, Oh, thank you for the... I will check. Oh, thanks, John. I appreciate... I will check that after stream. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jonathan Will. I appreciate that. Alrighty, dudes. Let me see if I can find someone in the directory. It's kind of late. I wonder who's up and about. Who can we scare? You know, Darabon is smart. He blocks all raids, so I can't scare him. He's a meanie, though. We all want to drop you guys off there at any time. He's not streaming now. He's here. He's not streaming now, but whenever he's streaming. Um. um <clears throat> there is someone doing Deep Dungeon. Wait, what are they doing? Hold on, let me take a look at this. Uh... Mm, could. Um, man, this this directory is very quiet. <laughs> this directory is very quiet. Um, guess I can go to. Who's that? Oh, Smoko, Hello. Donated after each clear. Aw, thank you. Aw, let's go. Let's go, Jonathan Will. I appreciate that, dude. Let's go! Um... I'll drop you off here. This, this, uh, this creator I've, I visited before. Um... She's nice. She's doing actually some older content. I don't know how far into 14 she is. But she's doing, like, Leviathan... Eden. <laughs> Um, very talented individual. She's, I believe, a singer. Uh, and, uh, we've had it. I've had a good time dropping people off there. So we'll go visit Zordon of Doom. Doing some 14. Good company. You want to continue watching some Twitch. If you guys got my raid stuff, we'll go, uh, drop that off over to her channel. And I will, uh, catch you guys tomorrow, hopefully, or Tuesday, whichever works out. So thank you. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here, thank you for all the support, all the follows, all the subs, everything. Really, really appreciate it, and I hope to catch you on the next stream, so. Perry, Jonathan, everyone else, there, about Ada, uh, all you guys here, thank you so much, let's go raid. See you guys, Good night.